Fair. Can I tell you something? Go ahead. I was gone for 24 hours, but I missed the hell out of you. Yeah? I did. I really did. I thought about you, and the whole time I was in Columbus, what I thought... What made you miss me? You're a safety net, my boy. I thought I had to get dinner with the boys Friday night. Yeah. Obviously, it was an absolute amazing situation to go Explain see with them. you had dinner with? I had dinner with um, McAfee, AJ Hawk, Kirk Herbstreet, his son, this guy named Georgie, who I love. And they referred to him bef to, as Georgie before I could even really? slip in an E on him. Yes. So Georgie was a beautician. This guy named Darren, who's uh, with Wheels Up. They, phenomenal crew. Great guys. They do steakhouses the way you want to do steakhouses. The steaks are merely the star on a Christmas tree. Yeah. But the appies and the sides, that's the lights and that's the ornaments. You know what I'm saying? That's the real meat and potatoes, mm -hmm. what we're doing here. That was a good, uh, good dinner. It was a good dinner. It was great. The boys, obviously, they were very inviting and it was loving. But I thought to myself, as I'm walking 0.2 miles away, I was like, damn, I really wish the boy was here. Yeah, we did talk right before you went in there. I know. I know. You were with Saru, ripping it up. Um, do you mind throwing on that Chevy for me real quick so I can just, are we rolling? Oh, we're absolutely rolling. This we're podcast absolutely. is brought to you by the greatest truck ever created, mm. the Chevy Silverado. That's right, dude. And at the Chevy Silverado, a lot of people are starting to see the contenders who's really going to be who's who in the zoo in the NFL season. One people that are never contenders, uh, never pretenders and always contenders, what were you going to say? The Michigan Wolverines. I, I know you're going NFL there, I but know. if we go college, if, dude. if we're comparing the Chevy Silverado to a team in the, at the collegiate level that's out there right now, the pretenders... Yeah separating themselves as contenders. Yeah. That's the Michigan Wolverine. The Michigan Wolverine is the Chevy Silverado of the Bay 10. You heard it from Will Compton, Nebraska alum, dude. Silverado shows up week in and week out with unstoppable grit and determination. Like the Wolverines. Chevy Silverado is the ultimate tailgate flex with available multi-flex tailgate and power outlet built right into the bed. The first ever ZR2 is the ultimate off-road machine. My boy Willie's got that. It's an outstanding, it's an outstanding vehicle. Drives like a dream, too. You think off-road vehicles are not going to do too well in the cement. Phenomenal yeah, handling. I, 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 if we have wives that listen to this pod, and, yeah. and the hubbies out there listening right now, all yeah. the boys, like yeah. if you have a if wife... We have hubbies who have hubbies, keep listening. Right, right. If you have somebody who can spin that coin on you a little bit, yeah. you ask for the ZR2 Chevy Silverado. Right. I'm telling you, it is my favorite vehicle I've ever had in my life, and I'll probably... I think to myself, I want to keep this forever because I want it to become one of those, like, yeah. what do they call it? Like, An heirloom. Antique, like the uh, antique trucks where people look back, they're like, oh, do you got, Yeah. you know, I'm not really a, like a truck savant yeah. like that, but I want one of them. Cerulean's 35 think, years old. Everyone wants the CR, the ZR2. And everyone, she's like, my dad actually has one, all original parts and still runs like a dream. There's 400,000 yes. miles on yes. it. They see 400,000 miles, he has to take care of it. He goes, actually, he treats it like and it still runs every single day. Yes. It's unbelievable. From tailgates and stadiums, uh, stadium lots, to off-road adventures, Chevy Silverado has you covered. Please head over to Chevy.com to learn more about the Chevy Silverado. Will, that might have been our finest ad we've ever had in our entire life. Yeah. But you really sparked the flame. You really sparked the flame by talking about the Michigan Wolverines. Can we just get a round of applause, Mitch? Out of respect. I think we should. Out of, just out of respect, buddy. It's not... Mitch is our Ohio State guy. He picked him on the NCAA when he was young and rode yeah. with him ever since. Where, yep. He respect hats off to him. He is an Ohio State guy. That was an ass whooping. It it uh, was incredible. It was close in the that it was close in the first half. It was a good game throughout the third in like the third quarter. What have I said all year? Uh, that's where I personally want to give you your flowers, saying that you were correct about mm -hmm. that. Like obviously, when stuff like that happens, and you're saying it's the best second half team of all time, they're doing it against all the you know the schmucks that they're smacking. Yeah. When they did it against Ohio State, I'm sitting back, I'm watching the game because I'm rooting for Blue. Like, yeah. I just want... You I want Blue when they're not playing I corn. I want whoever to win that game. I wanted it to be a dominant performance because we truly need somebody to represent the yeah. Big Ten. And with that said, hats off. The Michigan is that second-half team, dude. It is that second-half team. And we need them in the biggest way to represent us yes. in the college football playoff. Yeah. And you know what I found out, too? And I, I'm going to... We're going to stick on Michigan for a little bit, but I need to give Columbus some flowers. I need to give Ohio State some flowers too because they actually deserve it. It sounds wild, but I'm not here to burn bridges. I'm actually here to build them up because they really support the boys out there in Columbus. Everybody really? in the Bay Yes. Got oh. The boys? Oh, it's the boys? Yes. We're in Ohio State I, Yeah, I will absolutely get into all that with you. But I, I will say, now that the game is over, and I know this might be blasphemous, but Columbus, you need to support the boys in Ann Arbor to represent the Big Ten. They're being disrespected. The SEC... 
is God right now. Let's call it what it is. It's a David and Goliath situation. It's Georgia versus everybody else. I know South Carolina had a phenomenal job, a phenomenal ending to the season that really is going to take you guys maybe to a top tier SEC team in the future. We'll, we'll give JP the mic. Yeah. Like we do definitely need he to. He needs to talk about it. Uh, yeah, we have to show respect, but this is, it was unbelievable. I was driving back Vanessa. I stayed for the first quarter. I had to book you out of there because your boy had to get home to see his kids. As I'm driving, my old man who drove with me, he's like, whatever it was, it was 2017 at the end of half. And I literally thought to myself, good, it's close. Yeah. That means it's over. And then sure you enough, thought that? I truly, in my heart of, I, I've like, when I left Michigan, I actually hated Michigan. Couldn't stand Michigan. I, but I, I, as I got older and I learned, maybe hit the therapy a little bit, talked to, talked to Dr. Schwartz for a little bit. We put away the mom issues and really tackled those college issues for a little bit. And it was really more me than it was them. Right. 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 right, right. So now I'm really, I'm like, I'm really watching Michigan. And I said for the whole year, they're a second half team. And I truly believe like we have a dominant coaching staff, Harbaugh and that what he's doing, especially the online coach, uh, coach Moore, I believe his name is absolute stud. I had O lineman after the game text me and be like, that was for all of you alum. That was for all you guys. And I was That's like, so fucking isn't that awesome. fucking cool? Yeah. And I'm sure they're just saying it because they're probably just Listen, saying it, bro, but it was outstanding Listen, to hear that. If you're a player and you get on the bus after the game and you're shooting off your text, like you got a shitload of text. If they're taking a yeah. moment to write that out, whether or not it's bullshit or not, like that's, that's special. That's intentional. Yeah. They're doing that intentionally. Yes. And I think they have that in mind thinking like, we're fucking, I mean, dude, how long has it been? Two years in a row and then winning at Ohio State? For the first time in, since 2000. That's what I'm saying. It was iconic. It, it, did, did, did they win back to back in 2000 or was that the last time they won at Ohio State? That was State? the last time they won at Ohio State because we beat Ohio State. Isn't it even longer with back to back? Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Before, before last year, Ohio State won seven straight in 15 of 16. So this is like the, the first time Michigan has won back to back in probably close to 20 years. And that doesn't hit you until after the game. Like, you're so focused on the game. Like, I'm sure they're hearing stuff like that. Like, oh, it's going to be dope. Like, let's win, blah, blah, blah. But they're, they're winning for each other. Yeah. But after the game, when everything's sitting in, everything is sinking in, they're like, yo, we legitimately accomplished something. Like, I'm, I think back to the spring tour when we interviewed Blake Corum. God bless him. Like, they beat him without Blake Corum. They beat him. They be, and they beat him in a way that no one thought Michigan even had. In they, the didn't beat him in the air. I my mind was like, hey, they just got to manage the clock and keep their offense off the field. Legit, their defense at halftime was like, we got to keep their offense yeah. off the field. It, They're the really right, doing stuff the out right here. Strategy by Ohio State, like, yeah, let's see if they can beat us in the yeah. air. Like that was the right move. But like again, like talking to Blake Corum, and you could just hear it the way he wanted him, and I'm assuming everybody else shares the same intention. Is like they wanted to change and beat Ohio State. Like, yeah, I don't want to go there. I want to beat them. Mm -hmm. Like, they get to now sit back. Not now. Like, obviously, the, the job is not finished. It's just starting. Right. But you get the, after the game, you sit back and you're like, yo, we really fucking accomplished something that hasn't been done in decades. Decades. Plural. With an S Give at the end of it. Goosebumps. It's incredible, dude. Goosebumps. It I'm is. Happy for the boys. Extremely happy for the boys, but we need everybody who listens to this podcast, whatever Big Ten team you root for, like we're we're all one team now. This well, is, we still have the Purdue and Michigan still have to play in the Big Ten no, championship. No, no. Purdue, I know with Dennis Kelly, he's a big listener to the pod, but even Jordan Purdue, Ruse, also a big I listener to the pod. I, I, I respect the uh, Purdue ball club, but we need, a, we need good representation in the Big Ten. Like we need everybody in the Big Ten, yeah. players, fans alike. We put the sword down. And we have to back Michigan. This is Michigan against everybody. Dude. Purdue needs to throw this Big Ten game. Yes. <laughs> not, per, not, not throw it, but they, their coaches need to be talking with the Michigan coaches. Be like, hey, well, what looks do you want to see? Yeah. What do you want to see? Like, how, how <laughs> Here's, can we here's run our thing? game plan this yeah. week. Who do you want? Like, would they, need to imp they need to be impersonating Georgia. This needs to be a tune-up game to get in the college football playoff. Yeah. And ultimately, they're probably not going to play Georgia because Michigan's going to be number two. Georgia's going to be number one. Yeah, we're looking at right now as the standings are. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Michigan, TCU. No, Michigan. If TCU USC, wins. TCU will be three. Then it'll be USC. three. USC is going to be four. Now there's a there's a world where Ohio State sneaks into these playoffs. Is a you think two play? They're five. I, I saw something. It was uh, like Georgia has a 99 percent chance to go in. Uh, Michigan has a 97, and Ohio State has the third best chance, an 88 percent chance to get into the. Isn't that crazy? I don't. I'm as an Ohio State fan, I don't necessarily agree with that. Wow. Because I don't care. When it, as a Big Ten fan, I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with that. And again, I'm not bullshitting. Purdue, 
draw up scout team cards, whatever Michigan wants you to do this right. weekend in the Big Ten Championship. Yeah. And let's start prepping for who we think we're going to play in the college football playoff. And I think that will be TCU. So let's start getting ready for that high-powered offense. Yeah. We need the TCU looks on defense. We need the TCU looks on offense, Purdue, if you're listening right now, which I'm sure you are. Yeah, boil her up. Help us out. Yeah, we've, Boy, got, to, we've got to secure this. With that said, because I know I just big-time stand Michigan. Um, listen, that's who I'm rooting for. You guys carrying this responsibility, if you guys embarrass the Big Ten again in the college football playoff, that is on you. That is on you, and that is on Dave Portnoy. Wow. As the two Michigan guys out there trying to carry this flag. We are, we as fans, we are carrying the flag. That is on you guys first and foremost. I'm going to need you to. Because you're calling for. It's touching now. I've seen Dave. I've seen Dave say, we will bear this cross. I've seen you. We're we're sitting here. We're all chips. I will bear the cross. I. If we're asking all of Big Ten country to back you guys. Right. We will do that. But if you guys embarrass the Big Ten again, that's on you. Yeah. I'm with you. Right. If Michigan has the same kind of showing they did in the first playoff game, that's a tough fucking deal to deal with. We had to do a lot of reevaluating, looking in the mirror no internally doubt. and figuring out how are we going to take that next step to where we can be competitive for a national championship now. Mm. We're looking at back-to-back Big Ten championships, which is outstanding. But you want to get to the top of the mountain, dude, the Bulldogs are standing right there. And that's who you have to take down. Now, let me remind you of one thing. When we were at Michigan before the Boston Bowl, we spoke to the strength staff. How impressed were you the strength staff? That's just a quick answer. One more answer? Sure. Elite. Elite. Yes. Now, it made me think to myself, I wish I had known Taylor earlier because this is, I would love to go up there and do all the shit that they're talking about assessment wise. It's unbelievable. That they have because they're juicing me up for year 11, year 12. Maybe you're 15. Oh, my God. And, and with that coaching staff, you probably could get that done. Uh, but you, were you not motivated? No, no, no. Like, Will oh, Joe walks away like, oh, we could play for 20 more years with these guys. I want to come back here next week yes. and start training with yes, these motherfuckers. Yes, dude. They are the Michigan strength staff along with the coaching staff. It, I, it is the most professionally done setup. The most, like, the way the they... The most detailed. The most detailed, yes. the way they assess things, the way they do things in the weight room. It's incredible. It is truly, truly incredible. Uh... Coach, I believe it's Herb, right? We don't have a G. Pull, pull, Jack, pull it up real quick. Boy. We got to send him a bottle of our whiskey too. Because mm, he's, um, yeah. he's a big whiskey fan. He's got that big uh, man cave garage type setup, the man shed. What men do not? Is That's that the right true. word? And if you haven't been able to men get to some of that whistle pig busting whiskey, it is incredible. It truly is a delight in your mouth. Ben Herbert, dude. This guy, first off, has top five most intense eyes you've ever seen in your life. A handshake that'll make God go, whoa. He is one of those he dudes. He made me take off my red jacket. He, yeah, he goes, you need to take that off. I did tell him to tell you that. But I, so this is a long-winded way of, because I, that was supposed to be a short answer, but we, we did a long answer, both of us. <laughs> this is a long way of saying, like, I brought up Georgia to them. I to, I said, hey, that shit was embarrassing last time. And he, he legit, he laid down his sword. He put his ego aside. He goes, yeah, we got bullied. We got dummied. But we know now. We're aware now. And we've been preparing for that. Mm. They are ready. I, and again, I've never been so high on the University of Michigan in my entire life as I am right now. I, yeah, I mean, back-to-back college football playoff. Like, I'm sure no, I'm not even Michigan saying, I'm not even saying that. I'm, on Michigan as they've yeah, ever but been. if they would have won like they did last year against Ohio State, still a dominant performance, ran really well. But they took it to the air. They had guys putting burners on and taking it 60 yards for touchdowns. They were showing a different kind of dynamic in their offense that makes you go, this is a fucking complete team. They have the special teams. Their defense does nothing flashy. They're going to be in their gaps. They're going to edge wall swarm. Their guys are not going to fuck up. They're not going to dive off the dime board and tackles. They're going to do it right. And their offense showed us yesterday, which is Sunday, by the way, when we're filming this, Showed us Sunday. What's up? Yeah, today is Sunday. Yeah, they Sunday showed night. us that they can legit win any way they need to. And that's all I needed to see. I am 100% willing to bear this cross that the University of Michigan is going to win the national championship. <laughs> they are going needed, to win to the that. national championship. I truly, and I, this is not. To look ahead, like we yeah. will look ahead. Uh, Michigan, focus on your shit right now. now. When I was, we will look ahead and get excited. Taylor is claiming national title. Listen, I'm with it. I'm ready to sell out again, once again. And I I truly, I want every Big Ten fan, if you're on a Big Ten team, I want everybody to 
we need to be in this together. Right. We need to be in this together. The minute it's over and it's one, it's like, okay, the target is on Michigan's back because mm. we got to take them down, especially next year, September 30th, 2023, at Nebraska. We're For the you down. second annual but Bustin' Bowl. We need that fucking trophy, the Lombardi of college football, in the Big Ten. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. And you might be thinking to yourself, I fucking hate Michigan. I would never root for Michigan. I like X, Y, and Z team. These are my teams. If Michigan wins the national championship, your team automatically got better by association. The Big Ten is now the best Power Five conference there is. And we can fucking ride that train all the way until next season. Yeah. Then you got to round it back up and see what happens next time. Yeah. But you have a full off season to say, oh, I'm a Purdue fan. Or, oh, you guys are in the Big Ten? That's the best That's the best conference in college football. Yeah. That is something. Now, I had Hang a, on. How many points did Michigan put up on Ohio State? 42. 45, excuse me. I know me. who didn't give up 45 points against Ohio State? Nebraska. Mm. You know who also didn't just give up 45 points? Just think about that. You know who Nebraska also didn't give up 45 points to? Who? Michigan. Yeah. Wait. That's what, what you I meant to say. say. That's yeah. what I meant to say. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bitch. So dude. if Ohio State and Nebraska played right say? now, and Nebraska's hot right now, they're everyone in the in the, in the whole country is lucky. To quote, they're not playing right now. To butcher a quote from Moneyball, if you don't win the last game, you don't mean shit. Mm. We won our last game. I know we're going into the offseason. Head hell high. We had a statement win. More tread on the tires. No, no bowl game, even though they already played a bowl played game a bowl this year. Game. You played a bowl game this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we went so they don't have to go train for a January 1 bowl game. More tread on the tires. More meat in the bone for next year when Nebraska gets real. Because Matt Rule's in the building, which I don't want to go to just yet. I, right, I do right, want right. to give I, Columbus the flowers. I, I want to continue to say that we have taken control of the border between Nebraska and Iowa, and we now control the cattle industry. Yeah. It's back and 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 I will like hats off to George Kittle with that meme he hit me back with and ratioed me. Yeah, that was that phenomenal. Was, that was phenomenal. Very good by him. But again, what Iowa hated us these last seven years that all we could talk about was the past. Now don't start talking about the past. You want to talk about the past? Talk about the five natties that we got in the empty trophy case that you guys have. We can talk about the past all you want. Yeah, you got the last seven out of eight. That's fine. We won last. You're only as good as your last game. You're only as good as your last game. Now again. You want to talk about the best? That's fine. Just include the five natties in our full trophy case compared mm. to you have nothing in your trophy case. And Iowa, and Iowa, if you're going to sit there and compare yourself to Nebraska who defeated you, comparison is the thief of joy. Don't take away. Don't take away your offseason. You just get back in the weight room and you keep working because guess what? When Michigan wins this national championship, you guys just got better too. You're welcome. This is literally a therapy session on the bus for the Big Ten. We are coming to take over the entire college football landscape as a as a conference. This is not just Michigan. This is a conference. This is a conference and a movement going into the college football right. playoff. And again, I respect Purdue. I wish they were undefeated too so we could we could talk about how this was going to be some sort of a game. It still could be a game. It could we be. It better not be. Yeah, we don't need it to be a game. We don't need it to be a game. We don't we want gotta, it to be. Nobody wants to be. Not even, not even Purdue fans want it to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they want to win. They're a little, you know, obviously the blind loyalty right now. I'm sure all the Purdue fans are like these fucking clowns dude mm. thinking that i'm gonna root against purdue this weekend i trust me i do understand that my, my heart goes out to you guys i wish i could share that same sentiment but there's zoom out a little bit there's a bigger play at hand here and that's again getting the lombardi back to uh back in the big 10 back in the big 10 Should we talk about matt rule to nebraska i would like to i'd be right before we do that i would like to give columbus flowers game time we interrupt this podcast to bring you another Ad read. Game time created by fans for fans. Game time is ticketing is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. They are guaranteed lowest prices. If you haven't given Game Tab Game Time a shot yet, Bloss uh, zoomed in on the words, so it threw me off a little bit. <laughs> oh, so all right. If you haven't given Game Time a shot yet, don't know what you're waiting for, you guys are going to love this app. They've got great deals on concerts and NFL tickets. We've had a ton of Barstool fans using it, hitting us up on socials about the great deals they are getting. So easy to use, amazing deals. It's fat, it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the US. You are going to love it. Download the Game Time app, go to account, go to the account tab to create a login. And redeem code BUSSIN, that's B-U-S-S-I-N, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time, last-minute tickets, low prices, guaranteed. Solid. Thanks, buddy. And back to this episode. You already did. No, I didn't. Kind of said they were fired. Yeah.
I said yeah. they're a fire. You said I need to give Columbus flowers, and then you continued to talk about how great they were. And, and I, I literally said, I, said well, I brought up Matt Rule as I want to talk about Columbus. We don't got to. No, I'm saying in the I'm, very beginning before we talked about the game. I you, want to talk about my experience at Columbus. That's what I, I want. How the people were so nice. Okay. The people, the people were incredible. You can, you can double people, it down. The we'll, people we'll were the clip. This would be a great. This would be a great time this week to like him saying it and be like, I, you did talk about. It. He's like, no, I don't think I did. And then we run him saying that him doing it. Yeah, that'd be phenomenal. People in Columbus are amazing. They were great. They were hospitable, and I thought it was going to be an absolute shit show. Matt Rule. No, hang on. <laughs> if there's more weeds to dive into on the entire trip and experience with Columbus, what exactly is standing out to you to where you're like, I've got to give this bouquet of flowers I just, in my right head, in this moment? When, my head, when I was driving away from Columbus, the, when I was driving into Columbus, I thought it was going to be... Honestly, I thought it was going to be a shithole. I thought the fans were going to be mean. I thought it was going to be like just an awful experience being in there. Was anybody mean to you? Like, can we get some guys were like, Hey, fuck you today. But then they would end up with a a tighten up or, Hey, I messed with the boys or something like that. There was always insult because Michigan Ohio state are playing. And then it was finish it with a, with a compliment that literally people fuck with busting with the boys in Columbus, Ohio, which I thought in a million years that would not happen. Well, because they're for the boys, but they're just for their boys Yeah, and their colors. They're for the boys. They understand the movement. They understand the movement. They're about it. Yes. Now the game going to the game would be a move. Going to the game would be yes, hundred percent. Like he, yeah, he said like, well, it'll be in Michigan next year. We figure it out anyway. Yeah. Side note, hey, fall tour is going to be back next year. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about Matt Rule being the head coach of the University of Nebraska? How does that make you feel when those words come come out of my mouth? Excited. And again, I did my little video. I did my video and I talked about why. And there wasn't a whole lot of, like I've talked to, like I've talked with guys, not to name drop, but to also name drop, Christian McCaffrey, Amir oh. Abdullah, Matt Ioannidis, all had really good things to say about Coach Rule. Amir had a full two minute long voice message to the Husker group chat that we have talking about when he played for Coach Rule last year in Carolina. Um, but I'm fired up. But I'm personally fired up because I know I talked about it, it's been the first time in a long time the chancellor, the president, and the AD have like continuity because usually like with Bo, you had Tom Osborne, he was the AD. The AD and the chancellor didn't necessarily not like they didn't see eye to eye, but the chancellor, that chancellor at the time was the one who ultimately pushed out Tom Osborne, eventually Coach Bo, because they brought in a different he brought in his AD that he wanted. That AD pushes out Coach Bo, brings in the coach he wanted. While that coach, Coach Riley's in there, that AD gets pushed out. A new AD comes in. Like Trev Alberts came in a couple years ago while Coach Frost was the uh while Coach Frost was the head coach. Not that he didn't want Coach Frost to win, but again, like you have everybody that's sitting in the room and we just hired the president, uh, Mr. Ted Carter. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal resume. Look him up, Google him. He's a stud. They just hired him last year. So everybody is now the number one priority. Not the number one. I'm saying this because I'm biased of the football program. But everybody knows the priority that it is to bring Nebraska football back to where it has been in the past. And I'm not sitting here talking about 90s and natties and everything else. But just being competitive and not being the fucking doormat of a conference. And I feel like it takes a higher and scanning through and thumbing through being like, we got to find a coach who can coach ball build culture, and I feel like we found that in Coach Rule because you look at his history. We were talking about it on the phone. Mm-hmm. His history with Baylor, I want to say his first year, they start off 1-11. and 11. Next year, they were about 500. Then the year after that, they're 11-1. and one. You go back to Temple, they start off kind of the same situation, won a game or two or three the first year. After that, you know, they're about a 500 team, and then after that, they're 10-4, and 11-4, 11-3, whatever it is. But that right there shows you, and then, you know, not to – you know, not to quote Amir, but obviously I'm talking about the stuff that Amir said. Amir is like, this dude is, he's a, he's going to build culture. He's going to build discipline. The guys who aren't, who don't buy in, like from his experience on Carolina, he kind of weeds those guys out because Good. he's so big on culture and buying into the traditions and everything else. So I'm fired up because again, I feel like Trev Alberts, Ted Carter, the chancellor, I'm drawing a blank to his name, but again, they're sitting there I trust them. I trust their leadership. We got to sit in the the box with the president. We got to meet the president. Obviously, we already knew uh, Trev, but it was like you can tell like they they know what I feel like they know what they're doing, and I trust them. And if that's who they feel like the guy is, that's my fucking guy, dude. And I'm fired up about it. I really am. I feel like you know again, there's gonna be a there's gonna be an article and a news. There's going to be something media related probably every day until Nebraska kicks off because that's just how Nebraska football is. The expectation is going to be extremely high, probably too high at first. But 
Yeah. I love how we're starting off with hiring Coach Rule. And if you look at his resume with, like you're saying, Baylor and Temple, Temple, how it started, it just progressively got better. We're not expecting, I'm not sitting here expecting Nebraska to all of a sudden flip it around and go 12-0 and next year, but they're going to get better and better and better each year. I fully expect three, four years from now, as long as they stay true to Matt Rule and they let him have the reins and do what he's going to do, based on his, his experience and what he's done, I expect Nebraska to be back in a big way in half a decade. And you know, like, that's what he's going to get to do because he signed an eight-year deal, which is massive, by the massive. way. It's like, oh, I mean, is that Does the- he have to give his other bags back for this bag? I don't know. It seems like it's like oh, eight years. It's like, is that the right thing to do? Like, give a coach eight years worth? But again, talking about it, too, like, if you're a head coach, everybody talks about how non-desirable or undesirable the job is because how hard it is to recruit, the expectation level, yada, yada, yada. Again, he's coming in with a group that picked him together, uh, pushing the wagon the same way, and he's not going to have to be a coach. It's like, who am I going to have to please while I'm here? Like, mm -hmm. oh, shit, they brought in a new AD. They brought in a new chancellor, a new president. Like, whose ass am I going to have to kiss? He knows he's their guy, yeah. and he's going to get to work. You said half a decade. We're going to be back, no question, in two years. I love that, and I yeah. hope you're right. I, I know you're not meaning anything malicious by No, it. no, no, I wasn't meaning anything. It me up. I'm like, man, if it takes half a decade, like— yeah, we're talking five years. Will. I don't think almost forty. Yeah, like I think next year we're we're. I want to temper my expectations. I do think we're winning eight games. I think you guys are above five hundred. Okay, that's that's fair. We're going bowling. Is it? Is bowling six, six, games. six games? That's five hundred. Without pulling up the schedule, we won't do that whole thing. That's that is in due time. That is in due time. Yeah. With the hey, all that but, man, hey, we got to get Coach Rule on board with the bus and bowl. He, gotta, and listen, if you're if you're Coach Rule and you're thinking, okay, knowing what I have done in the past, how long it takes, how do I get people excited about the now? How do I fast track? How do I fast track the excitement for now? Well, if you do pull if you do pull up the record, uh, the what the schedule from next year, Minnesota first game. That's going to tell you a lot. Conference games out of the gate. That's a tough team yes. now. That's a W, but that's a tough team. That's going to be an important you, Is it game. two out of the yeah, I thought it was Minnesota, a couple of whatevers, and then Michigan. I think it's two conference games out of the gate. I, I guess we're doing this now. Yeah, you got to pull it up just for clarity. No, I will, not give, I I will not give the result of the game, but we're starting off 4-0. I'm looking at the schedule right now. I'm looking at the schedule right now. We're starting off 4-0 with the bus and bowl on September 30th. I'm fired up about it, boys. That's going to be huge. But yeah, yeah, Minnesota, Minnesota, Colorado, Boulder. Those, hey, those boys are too high to play ball. They, they ain't got it going there. Northern, Northern Illinois, they're the MAC, right? They're a pretty good team in the MAC. That's a dub. Louisiana Tech. They're not going to be able to come into Nebraska country and be able to handle that kind of business. I fully <laughs> hey, expect, a lot of time I expect to, Nebraska to be 4-0 going to the fucking bus and bull. Yeah. And if Matt, if you want to get people excited about this season, you being here, so, you're rule. right, until he gives coach us the rule. coach rule. If you want to get people excited about the season and things going on, you in Minnesota, people are starting to talk. Yeah. All right. Colorado comes in. Pac-12 team but still a Power 5 conference. You win that one. Now there's murmurs going on. You sign this piece of paper in the spring when we come in for the Bus and Bowl, people are literally going to be saying, holy shit, we could win that this year. And if he wins the Bus and Bowl, if he wins the Bus and Bowl in his Nebraska's first year, back. Nebraska will be back. Yeah. Well, if he wins the defending national championship <laughs> team, he if he beats the defending team. national champion team, I mean, literally last year we were three points off, and some people say the refs stole that game. Some people, some people do. We won't talk about that though. Yeah. You guys whooped our ass this year. It is what it is. It is what it is. JP, dude. yes. I wish Jack was here. I know. Me too. You know why yeah. he's not here though? Because he doesn't want the smoke. He doesn't want the smoke. He doesn't want the smoke. But hey, brother, congratulations, South Carolina. Like. They really pissed me off when they lost to Mizzou. You know that. You saw the emotion when that happened. I was really on their wagon before that, the bandwagon with them before that, trying to be like, hey, you got a good ball club. Why are you feeling that way? I'll let you explain yourself. But the way you guys have finished the year, I saw the article you commented on it too that was, that, that was posted on Barstool. Is South Carolina the best team in the country that nobody knew about late in the year? If this is March Madness, we're the hottest team and we're going to make a run. But it's not March Madness. 
Is this my turn to speak on South Carolina? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So how you this is your this is your platform, bro. How you felt after after the Missouri game is how we felt for the last seven years. Mm. Seven years ago, it was dark. We were coming off eleven and two win seasons. Then we go seven and six. Spurrier built everything. He gave us a name. Third week into the twenty fifteen season, Spurrier leaves us. Dark. We go three and whatever, three and nine. We are like, all right, who are we hiring? There's rumors. We're going to hire Rich Rod. We're going to hire whoever. We get embarrassed. None of those coaches come. We hire Muschamp. We're like, oh, man. We've seen Muschamp's resume. He comes in, takes us to a bowl game year one. Lightness creeping in. Year two, nine wins. Oh, my God. We're, mind. we're coming back. Year three, darkness. We just slowly decline, decline, decline. We have dogs. We have Debo. We have Hayden. We have Javen Kinlaw. We have J.C. Horn, but no wins. Hmm. We leave. We lose. We're winning three games again. We're like, man, where are we going to go from here? In 2015, while we were in the darkness, there was a young man by the name of Shane Beamer waiting for this moment. He was in South Carolina with Spurrier in the light. And now he was at Oklahoma prepping, prepping for the moment of this season. Hey, this season? Come on. The beginning of the year, they're like, oh, no, Shane Beamer, maybe he wasn't the guy. He heard it. He addressed hearing these rumors. Midway through, we get a big win over A&M. Beamer's our guy. South Carolina, we're coming back. Then Missouri happens. Oh, no. Hey, back against the wall. We were being written off. What's the record at this point? We're... Let's see, Missouri, we need to check. But this is like classic South Carolina. We beat AM for the first time in program history. Yeah, I was mad at JP. I'm like, why are you not excited? Like, I was like, hey, how do you feel about this Missouri game? He's like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, bro, like, how are you not excited? Like, they seem like they're a good fucking team. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you not excited? And then they did, they lost to Mizzou. I was like, yo, you guys fucking suck. You could, even, you could, you could feel it in South Carolina during the Tennessee game. I think there was like four minutes left in the game. They're up like 28 points. And they, Tennessee scored a touchdown. You could feel the same and go, oh no. They're going to come back. It's going to happen again. But dude, we lose to Missouri. It's like, oh God. Barely score any points. Then we go to Florida in the swamp. Don't score an offensive touchdown. Our punter had the same amount of passing yards as Spencer Rattler until like the fourth quarter of the game. Scored like 19 combined points. Tennessee, just when it's like, Everybody on college game day picked Tennessee. What happened? Well, yeah, they're the five team in the country. On a, hung a 60-burger on them. Shane Beamer didn't care. They wrote him off. He didn't write back. The next week, <laughs> what'd they do? Everybody picks Clemson. Shane Beamer, he picked the Gamecocks. He picked Spencer Rattler. He picked all of the boys. And, hey, going into next year, we should be favored to finish top two or three in the SEC. And the Gamecocks are back. What do you wow. feel like that depends on, like, Rattler staying? Yeah, we definitely need Rattler to stay. And I think he, they have just have given a confidence to the team that, like, we haven't had. Like, guys saying they're going to drop their nuts on, on dudes, that was, like, Spurrier's teams. DJ Swearinger, Swagoo. Swagoo. Yeah, Swagoo. Yeah, Swagoo. And now we're saying we're going to drop our nuts, and, like, that's a good sign. Yeah. The goons are coming back. Yeah. Need the goons. Need, need the goons. Need goons on need your team. Need the goons. So you— you think Rattler has the opportunity to leave when your punter is the only person to score points in, against Florida? Like, his last two games have been incredible. No, I'm with you. There's just, like, you people know... People are actually saying that, too. Like, media, like... Yeah. People They're, are talking about him potentially, like, leaving. I have no clue. I would if he think leaves, what's he going to be? A mid-round draft pick? About, yeah, like, I don't know what the quarterback draft class looks like this year compared to what it would be next year. Yeah. And, like, he's a good combine guy. Like, he has a strong arm. He's fast, whatever. But, I mean, he, if he stays another year and has... A year similar to these last two weeks, it could be a top round draft choice. Mm -hmm. I like their colors. I like the logo. I like the campus. I love the like, logo. It seems like the game day atmosphere. You guys were there and could talk about it, but yeah, I mean, it just seems like a place where it's cool when they're doing well. It, yeah, I think SEC dominates the Bay Ten when it goes to college atmospheres. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Yeah, it is. But <clears throat> there's a, there's just things they got to change a little bit. Like when you roll Sandstorm out, I heard that fucking song eight times in that game. And the lights flashing, people. That hey, seems dope. Hey, like it was, it was pretty insane. And it's not like at the moment it was like 
South Carolina is a middle tier at best SEC school. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing that kind of atmosphere at the end of the year. It's tough to think that there's a place in the Big Ten that's going to be like, has that atmosphere. Michigan, amazingly big stadium. You can fit it more than anybody else. It's quiet. They got to figure out a way to, they got to take out those stands and put in aluminum stands like Washington does and Seattle does. Like get the echo going in there. Close up, make those suites, close those things up. Even if it's just metal, just close the thing up and funnel that shit down. You get 115,000 people going in there. Finally, it's going to get loud, but you got to figure out ways to start making sure that loudness goes onto the field because <laughs> South Carolina ripped. They were good. They were getting after it, dude. It was cool. It was a very cool yeah. situation. One thing that we do have to hit on, <clears throat> the Black Friday sale actually yeah. murdered. Like the fact that we had, yeah. matter of fact, we do need to still DM that dude. Yeah, who, I've been messaging with him. Okay, cool. The dude that said he spent 800 something. Who had the yeah. double receipt. Yeah. And tried to get it. Yeah, tried to get that four spot. I mean, I think we got enough for five of them. I saw the other dude be like, hey, you can just have the four spots all <laughs> yeah, good. I, know, I, know, I saw that. But the fact that we had, we have like, I mean, there's like $10,000 spent between like four or five people. And the top three, top three people, the top three people spent over $11,000. That's right. nuts, man. That's incredible. That's crazy. The tier ones are, the tier ones are them. We've moved, like, we've moved thousands of units. And yeah. that is nuts, bro. Thank you to everybody who shopped. And like, yeah, the, the sale's over, but we have a shitload of inventory still left with all the new items. Like, we had 23 new items. Like, this was a massive drop. I know we were all, like, kind of nervous on, you know, our people. But we almost have too much. Like, I think our shit's the best shit. Yeah. But there's so many things to pick one from. You can't just sit there and dial in on, like, what our ballpark is. Like, we have the lightning tees. You want Like, I want to sit there and have a post about the diamond hats. Those are, so, are like, the best sellers. You still got the old pocket tees the, 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 uh, with the logo, the bow tie logo. Yeah, that one back there. Mm -hmm. They're killing it. The girl dad stuff, the lightning tees, the just the collab with, with Legends. The and collab Seager. with Seeger that has a few units. Yeah. You're just like... It's so tough to keep up with to where you're like, man, it would be nice if we could just focus on a couple things, but there's so much shit. But as always, the fucking tier ones and the people that are for the boys showed out. They really did, dude. It was incredible to see that happen. And I was I was ex extremely nervous with 23 new units coming yeah. in right before Black Friday. But it seems like there's a lot of people redoing their entire closet because those things are moving like crazy. We can't thank you guys enough for what you guys have done for us to keep this thing going. When you guys do that, we're paying salaries here. We're paying for doing more spring football tour stuff, doing more fall tour stuff, giving you guys more content. And it's our way of saying thank you. We're going to do something special. We say it every time. I mean, we, we, we're always going to be doing giveaways and shit yeah. like that. But on the whole redoing the closet, like when I loaded up the Chevy to drive down to Atlanta, I just took the box of like all of our new stuff from our shoot. I was like, yo, I'm just going to wear all this shit. 100%. On repeat. She looks Get hard. A couple bottoms like, yeah, I, do we, do we have any pants? You own, you own two pairs really of pants. Have, yeah, I know. I And they're black, too. Yeah. yeah. I've worn these pants three days in a row. Yeah. It's all good. Like, we, should, we should get, like, sweats or something. But yeah, all well, I well, was a couple bottoms, and I was like, I'm ready to just throw it in the truck and roll. Yeah. It, it legit is it is a incredible thing with Black Friday, dude. They, they really showed out in a heavy way, and that was uh, that's unbelievable, dude. We can't thank you guys enough. Um, you brought up a little point right there that I do want to knock on. Year 10... A lot of people are wondering what's going on with year 10. Yeah. And I don't know how much you can or cannot say right now, but if you can give the people a nugget so they can feel a little better or a little worse, or at least they have some sort of clarity on their feelings, that way they can go to bed tonight thinking, okay, no matter what, Will Comps is going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, like I see everybody asking what's going on. I, I would hope everybody understands when I'm not saying a whole lot that they just know because usually I'm a guy who puts everything out yeah. there. Yeah. I talk about everything. I take everybody on the story, all that stuff. All that stuff is still happening. Um, as far as like remembering stuff, I will be sharing it like in due time. But like right now, essentially I drove down Tuesday morning at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Got a physical, took like 10 seconds. Hey, have you gotten injured since you were last year? No. You go up, there's, there's contract stuff getting sorted out that I can't talk about right now, but I will be able to in the future. Everybody listening to this right now, it's Tuesday. We're sitting here Sunday night because we're going to New York to mm -hmm. do the telethon. We're going, um, I, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow with any of the contract stuff that's going yeah. on. That could get, the stuff could get figured out by the time you listen to this. But if you're listening to this and nothing's happened yet, like, you know, in due time, there'll be a time and a place for all that. But just know, year 10 is alive and well. Mm. And let's just, 
I, I was telling you, because we had a uh, we had a good conversation on my drive down. It was like early. You were up doing your thing early in the morning. Yeah. And you're like, bro, how do you feel about everything? Like, isn't this wild? And it was just insane that everything has kind of just like came full circle and it's all happened and the opportunities happen. And I'm like, as far as I'm concerned, year 10's happened. Like I got the call to go out there and sign. Whether or not we get something to figure out, everybody's optimistic. We all feel like there's going to be a solution. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's insane that this has came all the way around and year 10 has been manifested by by us talking about it all year long. That's it's incredible. And there is a part of every NFL athlete that's like, I just want to go out on my own terms. I don't want people to say I'm done. I want to be able to say I'm done. Mm -hmm. Not saying year 10 is the end of Will Compton. I'm saying if Will Compton chose for year 10 to be the end of Will Compton, he's making the choice, not somebody's making the choice for them. Yeah. And to that, sir. I appreciate it. That's it's incredible. Like the same handshake. You did the exact same thing. What was it, the Raiders, when they offered me? When I ended up playing for the Titans, was it 2020? It was, it was going into 2019, because 2018... 2019, I, I went to the Raiders. Yeah, but 2018, I remember sitting... We were in my driveway talking, and we're talking about football. How much We're doing the classic conversation. How much longer do you want to play? Oh, I don't know, I want to play like seven more years. How, many, how long do you want to play? And you were, I don't know how much you want me to go into this. You know the conversation, right? Yeah, I don't mind. That was yeah, like three you years were, ago. Yeah, you were like, I think I want to be done. I think I'm I think I'm over it. I don't know if I want to do this anymore, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And then we had that conversation. Because, like, I love bussing. Yeah. Like, Yo, I love everything I'm yeah, doing. We could, yes, exactly. But there was, like, also that point where you could see it affect you, and it would affect me if I had to walk away by someone making me walk away. They're like, it'd be nice to go out my own terms. Mm -hmm. And every single year since then, you've been able to do that. And that's awesome. Yeah, it's just funny. You think about like each year there's been a conversation. Like remember it was the COVID year and we were playing spike ball. Yeah. And the Raiders had offered that minimum deal. And you're like, hey, you can say no. Right, you can say yeah, no and be done. It. You got it, you got an offer. You can Every say no. Every time you've got you an offer to play with the boys. conversation, I've literally said to you, congrats. <laughs> yeah, you can I say know, no now. I know. You know what I'm saying? And then August, but when I FaceTime you. his fucking luck, dude, yeah, over and over again. And then, uh, then later uh, in August that year, I FaceTime you, and I'm like, bro, guess what? And you're like, you're fucking lying. I'm like, Vrabel Dude, me. that was the most, I remember, I was pulling into Oku Sushi to pick up something during camp, and you call him, and you're like, hey. You want to be teammates? And I was like, no. You're like, you're lying, way. bro. Dude, We're that so was high. the most insane shit when I heard that. That was crazy. And I had to go be a little bitch with my right knee and get my ACL torn. We could have hung out the whole year. I know. I know. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we were, we started off like 7 0, remember? We started uh, off 5 0. The ass beating on Buffalo was brought to you by Zoom. Yeah. Because we didn't practice that whole yeah, week. Yeah, we didn't practice for like, what, nine days straight? Yeah. Because we had to play on a Tuesday. They, like, they pushed the game, they delayed the game, then they We were supposed to play the Steelers. We were supposed to have a bye week. No, no, we were supposed to play the Steelers. So we're planning for the Steelers, and then they like, because we had more and more COVID. Yeah. They were like, this is your guys' bye week. So we like kind of practiced, right. kind of didn't practice. That sucked. Yeah. That, they're like, they took away our bye week. Yeah. They moved the Steelers to when our bye week was going to be. And they're like, you guys are playing the Bills in four days or whatever it was. So I, I don't know that, that exact time. And literally, I'm at my house in my dining room on a Zoom call going over what the Bills do. Yeah. And I, we literally were getting ready for practice from me to JP. That's how the closest player was. Masks on, triple masks, fucking helmet, hazmat suits, walking into practice going, we're going to get our fucking asses kicked this week because the Bills are still practicing. They were still practicing and doing their whole thing. Yeah. And all we did was prove that you do not have to practice in the NFL. We were so fired up. We are like, yo, we don't have to ever practice again. Yeah. We, just we won like 42, whatever. It was 42. Like I don't think they scored two touchdowns, did they? Yeah. It was like 42 13. I want to say Josh Allen had like two picks. It was awesome. It was we were going feeling. crazy because before that game, we're like, it's either going to be a close game or we're going to get our asses beat. Because we would do these Zoom meetings and you're like, man, let's get the Zoom meeting over with because you would like, they'd be like, well, hopefully you guys go out and like do something outside. Yeah. Because they couldn't, they couldn't make us do anything. So you're kind of having all these off days. And Bro. Frank's pissed off because he's, he's staying at home and uh, Jen, he's like joking on Jen. He's like, I think she burnt a fucking pizza. Yeah. You hear the fire alarm going off. Like, it was having a team meeting, week. alarms going off and shit, yeah. and Vrabel's just getting madder and madder about all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that he has to be home, and he's like, yeah. I'm our place, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. We're going to show up, and we're going to beat some ass, dude. Do you remember when also, like, all of a sudden, we got in a massive amount of trouble for practicing? Like, the guys were practicing on some sort of weird, like, high school field? Yeah, each position group was going to, like, different parks around different the city. Different parks around the city. Like, the old line was in, like, a grass field at yeah. Lipscomb. Well, yeah, we were at some nearby park, and it was just us five linebackers, and we were doing our individual and just going over tips tips that we had learned, just learned yeah. on the Zoom call. 
Like, hey, try to go over these formations or try to go over these plays. And there's five of us. We're trying to like line up. Cones. No plan. No plan. No plan. That's how me, Ben Jones, and Roger Saffold were like, all right, I guess we'll lead this thing. And then we're like, what do you guys want to do? Like, we stretch. We're like, all right, zone right. All right, zone left. Couple pass sets, boys. Like, we didn't really like, what the fuck are we going to do? No. And then somebody like take a photo or like talk about yeah, it. And then you ended up getting in trouble. We ended up getting in trouble again because they're like, they shouldn't be holding yeah. practices with each other or something. They're defeating the purpose of being separated. And then they come to find out that every, and then they started watching our uh, security cameras. And they're like, we'll see if these guys are really wearing their masks or not. So then buttholes are super tight when you get back at the building. You're walking around with the, the tip of your nose showing out. You're getting a couple of lashes. Yeah, dude. Ray was you're getting verbally dick. assaulted. Rightfully so. Yeah, right. Because buttholes we'd were tight. In, say we get coffee. We'd walk in, we'd have our masks on because you're used to just talking. Yeah. And you're like, okay, as long as I'm drinking or holding a drink, you can have your mask down. So everybody, right. we I would Classic be. Classic right wing uh, guy yeah, on a, on a yeah, I'd flight. Be, I'd be right there holding my cup and the, my mask would be down a little One bit. One pretzel in his hand, just and to kind of just hold up to his we mouth. Started investigate, investigate it, bro. Right. It was fucking tubs, everything. You're showering. Hey, put your fucking mask on. You're right. And they're like, all right, all right. Yeah, Dude, yeah. I remember Paul Kaharski and Buck Rising like texting me and being like, you guys are about to get the hammer dropped on Paul you. Paul wanted the hammer. Paul, Paul wanted, wanted the hammer. Down. Paul wants chaos. Dude, yeah. he's, he's the Joker in a non cool way. Like, he wanted all that shit to go down. Then, before they started to penalize us, they start looking at everybody else and they're like, oh, we can't do shit about the Titans because everybody, like, people were way everybody worse than us. Everybody else started to, domino effects started yeah, happening. Yeah, it was wild. We just happened to be the first patient zero. Yeah, we had to get the example made out of us. Yeah. It sucked, but. That was like, fucking a nice little rundown memory lane, dude. I know, bro. That was a cool deal. I know. Um, speaking of the Titans, dude, what a fucking bullshit call. It's Sunday night. The game was played five, six hours ago. That is crazy. Yeah. It, that they're it, it, going to call strong on that. That is one of those plays. Yes, it's against the rules. So all these Bengal fans that are watching this, I know you're watching. When you're watching, it's like, oh, it's, it's been it's been a rule forever. Bengals fans, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they all they're like, hey, that's a rule. Dude, that is a rule that you that happens and they say, Hey, don't do that again. They give a warning to the coaching staff. I know, bro. It's just when you just see them fucking refs rip the flag up and throw it so high in the air. Yeah. And change the game at the toward the end. It's just so stupid. Like I, to me, the long snapper sold it a little bit. So all strong did, did was job. going through the inside shoulder, the inside right. V of the he guard. He wasn't on his head. He, yeah, he wasn't on his head. Yeah, he was going through the inside V. A couple of them were right. and they hitting old boy, and the they, long snapper, and he just fucking Academy Award winner. They're bringing up Tier Tart too. Listen, it's a V technique. That is a legal play. Even if it's not a legal play, this ref. Should have gone Look over that. and Look say you can't do that. Hard. Like, why throw the flag that hard, dude? Come on, bro. Tier, tier, That's tier. a flop tech, dude. And uh, hey, listen, Brayman might be mad at us talking about this right now, but hey, we're the ones that are fighting the fight for you right now. Yeah. We're doing what you can't, bud. That is fucking ridiculous. That that all that the game was over. They literally just took a knee after that. I uh, yeah, I know that kind of ruined the game. Because you wait, a minute fifty left in the clock, a minute forty three. It's hard for two tart. timeouts. It's hard for Tart because Tart is getting a little more head up. Like Strong wasn't. I thought Strong was completely fine by what he was doing. I just felt like Tart did go a little more center. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like look at Strong. He's going through the inside V. You look at Tart. Tart goes right to him. I think the long snapper flops. It is what it is. Like you never want to leave it into the hands Buddy. of the refs. You're gonna say all the yeah, right things. Yeah, all like, the right things. At the end of the day, it's never one play. It's never one drive. It's never this. It's never that. But it just sucked that. A football game like that, the rematch of the Bengals and the Titans, everything that happened last year, yeah. both teams are hot, both teams are playing well, that that's how it ended. That's what sucks about that. That's just crazy, and dude. I hated that I loved the O-lineman on his way out. Did you see that video? Yeah, he's saying, fuck the Titans, no, fuck Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, what exactly was he saying? But it kind of fired me up. It was like a little WWE promo. I was like, God, yeah. I hate that he's doing it to Tennessee fans, yes. but I love what this guy. doing I agree doing with right everything now. you just said. I agree with that. It, it's... If you're a Bengals fan watching that, that shit's cool. It juices you up He's a little He's going to put that in his Rolodex of look what I did. Get fucked. Bad body baller, dude. Karras. <laughs> Shove it up yours, Tennessee. Point to somebody. Fuck you. Like, that is iconic. I, I, I hate that I love Does that because it's a Nissan. Yeah. Good for him. I know. If he didn't start, yeah. Oh, I man. That, I like, if I'm out there, I'm adding that to my bag. <laughs> Buddy, that's, that's an iconic That's an iconic move by him. Hey, fuck you. Yes, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that the equipment manager? <laughs> oh, dude, oh. that shit was bullshit. You have a minute 50 left at the clock. The way Tannehill's throwing the ball, too, on a bum ankle. 
They could have won that game. I know. They were you playing well. If, if, if and this part of about Traylon Burks, too. What a you, game he had. The effort plays, the big-time catches. Yes. He eyed catching the ball. Like, I thought was, he, he balled out. He's coming along because he did that in the last game, too. That fumble recovery for the touchdown. That fumble recovery for the touchdown, dude. Yeah. And not to, not to be weird, but decent-looking cat. Beautiful eyes. Great eyes. Yes. No, I'm with you, dude. Man. Yeah. You see I him see show up. You see him when he got drafted. He had the cowboy boots on, the shirt tucked in and everything. Like, oh, he, he's way, way different than AJ. I find, yeah, I find <laughs> myself. Because everyone compares him to AJ, right? You have, like, you have to if you're a fan. You're like, we traded this guy, then we drafted yeah. this guy. Like, that's just going to happen. I find myself clicking on his press conference videos, not even to listen to what he's saying, but. He slays he's with them cat. eyes he's now. He's a cat. Good Look, for him. him on the bus. He can, he he will absolutely come on the bus. Did you? Yeah, we need to get him on here. Done. We interrupt this episode to bring you Georgia Boot, the greatest boots on the planet. Super good looking, super comfortable. So comfortable, you never want to take these boys off. These boots hold up in any condition without sacrificing comfort or style. It's the wintertime. Obviously, they're going to hold up in the wintertime. But even those summer months when you're grilling on the back porch, you're walking around the house and your wife doesn't make you take your shoes off. These, this, these boots are the best ones out there. Think of a comfort technology of an athletic shoe packed into a great looking boot. Whether you're working on your feet all day, these boots don't sacrifice comfort or style. Head over to georgiaboot.com and use code BUSSIN. That's B-U-S-S-I-N for 20% off. Again, that's georgiaboot.com. Use code BUSSIN, 20% off. It is hunting season, boys and girls. Ask your wife, ask anybody out there to use the code BUSSIN for 20% off Georgia Boots, the best looking boots on the planet. Back to the episode. Hmm. Did you see... uh, the D lineman cuss out Russell Wilson. Oh my! Say something God. to Russell Wilson. I don't really know what the exchange was, but just seeing the reaction, it's yeah. like, oh, these boys are fed They're up. They're over him. Yeah. They are so yeah. over Russell Wilson. I think someone tweeted that this is going to go down as the worst trade in NFL history. Potentially, I mean, Potentially. I mean, look they, at look at what, all up. that money going like and all draft of picks. that happening. Yeah, isn't something going to switch up? Like go in. Uh, He's probably saying, hey, jog off the field. I bet he was saying run off the field. No, he's probably just saying, believe in me. <laughs> he was, that's probably what the fuck he was saying. Shut the fuck up. Bro. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Buddy, that is, I yeah, mean, I and watch you. Russell kind of quiver at the end too. Yeah, all, right, all right. Okay, I got you, man. I got you, man. That's what he said right there. I got you, man. Well, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? I don't know what Russ said, but if that dude comes back at you, you're kind of like, oh, shit, I'm a little embarrassed right now. Everybody's kind of just seeing like, all right, brother, I got you. Take it easy. I mean, I feel like, and this is not a shot at Russell Wilson, but you have to be delusional right now in your life. That's a shot. I feel like that's a shot. <laughs> what do you mean? It's not a shot, dude. It's just a reality situation. Like, he's not playing well. And it's not like I'm coming at him saying, I, I'd be a better quarterback. <laughs> but like, that's, that's a, That was just funny right there. <laughs> I'm not trying to take a shot at Russell Wilson here, but I think you're pretty delusional. No, he needs to be delusional in his but life. You have to be delusional. Oh, you're saying he has to be delusional to get it back? He has to be delusional to like be able to work through what's going on. Yeah. All the heat yeah. that's on Russell Wilson right now, yeah. all the shit that guys have told us, guys have texted us, yeah. uh, someone that I know on the team I've had a personal conversation with that I've told you things about like he's got to be delusional and that he's got to literally look in the mirror and tell himself whatever he's got to tell himself to get through the situation get through it and then unpack the trauma later yeah because right now you're in the thick of it let's get to the off season let's unpack it you're gonna be on the Broncos next year no one's picking up that contract he's not no one's gonna trade for him you know what I'm saying like he's got to just put on a fake smile. You know that meme or the gif of the guy crying with the, the smiling mask? That's got to be him for the next what, uh, seven weeks of the season. Or you just sleep well knowing you've secured the fattest of the bags. And, yeah, and not guess. to mention Wisconsin hired Luke Fickle. Like, you, that's got to be exciting. Like, you know, in the middle of this dumpster fire of a year. Like, oh, Wisconsin, the Badgers, my second school picked up Coach Fickle. Yeah, I guess so. I can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Dana Beers has got to be mad about that. The He's got to be. I saw your tweet too. The Cincinnati Bearcats logo on his leg. With Skyline Chili. And I, you know, no, like him, like, yeah, you're root for Cincinnati. I know it's more than just football. Like, you got basketball. It's a basketball school too. But, like, knowing you got Coach Fickle there, he called him Big Dick Fick. It's, uh, wow. That's got to be shitty, especially. That's the worst hell than Russell's South thinking right now. Rattling off two in a row there at the end, too. What an idiot. He had it coming for him, though. He had it fucking coming for him. Yeah. The way he's, the way he swung, dude, just not. I thought he was going Michigan State the whole time. I thought it was going to be Michigan State or South Carolina. I, yeah, those are good. Those, those are, are, those those are, are two good two. options. Because you got both football and basketball. And he even had a tweet that was like, I thought I had my pick after Michigan State. But South Carolina, 
you guys showed blah, 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 blah. Like, it was... Is South Carolina good at basketball? Okay, I was ta- I was thinking uh, Michigan State and Cincinnati. I thought, like, I thought Cincinnati had a shot just because they're in a shit conference with ball. They're going to be solid with Luke Fickle there, but they're good at basketball. Right. So I thought he was going to go... Everything's on the up and up. Yeah, everything's on the up and up. Club Carolina. hockey team's yeah. doing well. You guys are going to be all right, dude. Yeah, what an idiot Dana B is. Yeah, that's tough. I hope we get to see him tomorrow. Jets? Yeah, was it? Was his name Mike Mason? Was his name Mike White? Lightning Mike White. White. Lightning Mike White. Yeah, dude. dude. That's dude. If you're gotta watch out for the horny quarterbacks, they're gonna fuck you. They, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm they're saying? Gonna fuck they're, you. Gonna fuck you. they're gonna fuck you. They're gonna fuck. That's you. a that's tough fair. deal, dude. And I was hearing all those things in the offices. I'm like, oh, this kid's not that scared BYU kid with all the guys doing the signs. He got like a little nervous at the draft thing. Yeah, this guy's a fucking. Stud. He's taking down moms. Yeah. Not just moms. Moms are friends he knows. And now this. Yeah, I mean, it's that's a tough look, and especially like I know there's like a, a little bit of a laundry list with him. I feel like it's not massive, but after that press conference he had last week when he took zero accountability when he had an opportunity to be like, hey, we put up three points. I got to bail the defense out a little bit more when he just said no. No, I don't feel like I could have. What, what was yeah. the question? I was like, do you feel like uh, you let the defense down? He's like, no, no, not at all. Yeah, he's, exactly. exactly. Kind of like, yeah. you know, touches. You just see the body language. You're like, bro, you're the quarterback, dude. What's that dude, Booger? He had this whole long thing about how he... He could be like an entitled... He, yeah, he's like entitled. A, he uh, came from money, blah, blah, blah. It's like, listen, that's that's a, that, that was a terrible take. There you go, JP. That was, that, that, that Booger, was a bad take. Up. Like, he needed to do a better job with that, but that benching was probably going to come regardless. I, and and the, the rest of that clip, like, Booger ends up talking about it. He's just trying to, he, he's just, I felt like he was trying to paint the picture on. Because, again, you can justify and give background and context and story to literally anybody's mm-hmm. decisions they've ever made in yes. life. You go back far enough. Oh, that's why they did that. Let's empathize and justify it. It's like, no, not in, not in the, not in the league, not in the performance based business where you have to be, you have to do certain things the right way, mm-hmm. or you are gonna get fucking get snipped, dude. Twenty quarterbacks. Yeah, you can't just be making decisions like old boy from Oregon, just yapping that dude in the mouth after the but game. But what's with Oregon guys? Like Garrett Blunt? Yeah, they, he did that thing at Boise State, like what, yeah. like 10, 12 years ago. That was probably longer than that, wasn't player. it? You know what I mean? At least there's like yeah. some, at least there's some back and forth probably going on in the game. He, he, hey, Blood fucking bitched his ass too. This dude, Slept, buddy, the his or- eyes, the Oregon dude too. He threw a shot. Like, he threw a shot, but it, you know it wasn't like. Yeah, yeah, fucking, sucker punch yeah it was a sucker, sucker punch. punch. That dude was looking right in Blunt's eyes when he fucking did that thing. Gotta know, and people are like, yeah, peep fans should be storming the field X, Y, and Z after the game. It doesn't fucking matter, bro. When you're in that locker room and you're wearing that uniform and you're on a team and playing for a university like Oregon, really any university, like the fans and the the well, the fans and the people of the world are waiting for you to make a fucking mistake like that. Right. It doesn't matter. And I'm not going to say losers, but say that fan, like say he said some loser ass shit, like that troll, that is what they want to happen. They want you to fuck up and do that. There's only You're not doing nothing except hurting yourself. That's just the way it's going to be for you. It doesn't matter what was said. You're just, you're hurting yourself in the long run. Hey, there's one thing that fan could have said. That is would make it justified for sure, for sure. Other but than again, that, in the direct, like you're letting all the emotion take over the 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 zoomed out version. It ain't worth hitting some fucking troll ass loser fan. Yeah, over that, it's not. Like I get that that is a bad fucking. Like you could say something that marks somebody off. Like no, you got to draw a line somewhere. I understand that. I'm just saying in the in the massive picture. Say this guy. I, I don't know where he is. Draft board league. He's a senior transfer from Miami stuff. I know that about him. I don't know the entire picture of like what his career and all that can shape up to be. But again, you let a loser motherfucker trigger you in that moment. I like I, I do I do understand that. I it's not like I'm trying to be like that doesn't fucking matter. I'm just saying, like, in his best interest long term, after that bigger picture, don't let a fucking loser drag you down to their depths like that, dude. I'm with you. I, I literally had that same exact situation go down with me. Really? What what situation? When uh, that assault case I had going out of uh, my senior year, we lost to Ohio State. And these 29-year-old kids were uh, trying to beat up my brother, who was 19 at the time. I walked into a bar. My girlfriend at the time was like, hey, your brother's about to get in a fight. I looked out, and there was four guys, Ohio State, and they're pushing my brother. I moved one kid to the side, and... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there was Bing. no... It was just one bing. It, and he... This kid hit the ground so hard he spun in a circle, and I was like, "Holy shit! I think I killed him." And I went and like and oh, fuck. and that, 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 I'm sure when that happened, you're like, 
Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. I thought I was like, I should, I, why the fuck did I do that? But in your moment, I'm just thinking, hey, I got to protect my brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy, it's not like he's like, it's different. It's a different situation for a couple of reasons. One, you just lost a game. I get it. That sucks. It's against a rival. It's a civil war. But it's not like you were, if he transferred from Miami, it's, it's one year. Like you don't have loyalty to, to Oregon. Mm-hmm. Your loyalty is really not like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, in, just, that, in that you, moment, you he's should, thinking, he should have done that. Yeah, it, it, he in should the have done he's that. Thinking about, yeah, like you said something to me, and this is this is a no, not this is a non-negotiable for me personally. Type yeah, thing. which again, you can make a story and say enough to justify any action that you make. I didn't even think about that too, like the, yeah, the stuff, and then getting questioned in the combine. I'm sitting here saying a speech. You're just thinking, oh. No, because when you're saying, no, when you're, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, when I'm you're saying like, that, I'm talking to you after I'm literally, I'm, I'm trying to, I feel like in that moment, trying to grab you back. What are you fucking doing, bro? Right. We're in, we're public. We're in public right now. Yeah. Just like that dude is. What are you doing? Yeah. Don't, you know, you just, I'm with, no, I'm with you. I'm also 31 years old now saying, hey, absolutely, I, absolutely. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can sit back making that mistake when I was younger, looking at this kid going, bro, you can't do that stuff. If you have a future in the league, you just hurt yourself. You just took money away from yourself. That's a bad fucking deal. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't do that. But I was, when I was speaking, it was speaking from the point of view of, I've been him before. And I know what it's like to have you get your emotions, like your emotions get the best of you. You piece some kid up and it's like I fucking then clarity hits 10 seconds later right. you walk in the locker room you're like oh f- I'm such a fucking idiot no question and you see the coach grab him it's just like ah oh, god oh, no. damn it dude what are we doing what are we doing right Legit. now get older yourself he should have just fought a football player he should have if he got in a fight with another like uh, Oregon State kid it's like nice yeah do Rivalries. it like, do it like uh, Michigan State yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, like Michigan State, Michigan, just yeah. fucking take a hundred of you and jump somebody. Then. Holy shit! Oh, that's jokes, man. Jokes, jokes, that's jokes. just jokes. It's just jokes. Should we do? Uh, but seriously, those guys should be arrested. <laughs> should we do? Uh, <laughs> shout out, no free shout out. Ooh, dude, yes. And we're gonna do tier talk rivalry games and player. I know we're running on an hour right now. It's like we got to get it fast. Do we tell the people we're not gonna have a tier talk today, or do we do a quick? Tier talk, because the tier talk is rivalry games in, in college football. I guess we could do, yeah, we could do that. Yes. We can make we can make it all quicker. The shout out, no free shout out. Yeah. Tier talk. Let's go around real quick with shout out, no free shout out. Blossy, you got it, baby. Got mine. <laughs> My Don't, shout take out mine. This- Don't take mine. <laughs> My shout out this week uh, is going to go to a game that just concluded. It's the number one defense in the NFL right now. Four second half shutouts. One complete shutout. And that is to D'Amico Ryan's and the San Francisco 49ers. Here we go. Yep, there it is. There it is. There it is. That's off to the Niners. Like they're balling. But they're balling. You never sleep balling. on the Niners. Don't ever sleep on the Niners. Mitchie? Uh, Go mine ahead. goes to something we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's that holiday season now. And typically near like in the end of the semester, this goes back to high school. Uh, it's those pizza parties you have in, in that your one class. You know you're going into that class, like, oh, we're not doing a thing. Thing. Oh, that's doing really good. School work today. It's like where we're just gonna chill, eat pizza, maybe throw on a TV, throw on a movie. Yeah, and just have a. That's a good one. I thought the way you were saying it's gonna be that time of year. My shout outs to pizza parties. I'm thinking, hang on, let's talk about. <laughs> I thought he was like, go, I thought he was talking about going home and having a pizza party with his friends. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> but that, he, hey, you rounded it out school. well. I was like, okay, yeah. Yep. Exactly. And we're back. Uh, Master, yeah. you normally have like a half day or something. Like, hey, we're just gonna have a pizza. Party. Yeah. yeah, hell bro. yeah, dude. That's a hitter day. That's a hitter day. JP, only cheese and sausage. You like that? My meat. shout out, no free shout out goes to. Oh, it's Tell them, kid. The South Carolina Gamecocks for being back. And shout out to our punter who saved the game for us. Mm. Also, this is still South Carolina because they brought it to me twice, storming the field. Bro, you stormed the field three times this year. You know who needs to watch out? Who? Ronan and Caleb. Damn. Will? My shout out, no free shout out, is it's getting to be that time of year where it's cold out. I'm somebody who leaves my water bottles in the car all the time. And now that it's getting cold out, you know you're going to have a fresh cold water every day, a water bottle sitting there, maybe a few to pick from, a litter to pick from. That's and that so water electric. turns cold in the wintertime. And, you know, your girl, anybody who's like, yo, why do you carry all these water bottles? Now is the time of the year where you're like, this is the fucking reason yeah. I carry these water bottles, boys. So my shout out goes to those water, that, those water bottles that turn cold overnight. Mm. That's outstanding. You, that is outstanding. Uh, my shout out, no free shout out. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Goes to the future national champions in college football. I Listen, dude. Just, everybody two times, shout two out times in a row, Columbus, teams, Ohio, uh, with a donkey stopping like that. 
22 point differential in the score. I got to give it to the boys in blue, especially that offensive line that has, is literally going to win the more award two years in a row. That is my shout out. Shout out of the year. Of the year. <laughs> Maybe it's the year. You guys end up winning the natty. Like that's the shout out of the year. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do, we're going to do tier talk. We're doing rivalry college football, correct? Yes. Okay. Willie, you got him. Go ahead, bub. <clears throat> so my tier three is going to be, I'm choosing it. Uh, uh, game two that it's not like I always watch it, but I'm always like, oh shit, it's that week. Like it's going to be cool to see how this plays out. My tier three rivalry game is going to be Oklahoma and Texas mm. red river rivalry. I am a fan of that game and it's early in the year. So it's kind of cool. Like the sun is, is, is bright. You just know, like these two teams are about to clash. It's going down Texas, uh, Oklahoma. That's my tier three, my tier two hats off to the game, Michigan, Ohio state. That is historic. That is probably the most traditional. That's probably the greatest rivalry game when you take into account the history of college football. But we're talking current college football rivalries. My tier one, and yes, we're, what you got? My oh, tier one, and that goes to, oh, I, it's not that. Damn, I forgot about that. that I should have said, I knew he was going to forget but start over. No, my tier one. Fuck. Start over. Just cut all this and start over. In my tier one. Oh, wow. This is not going to surprise anybody. Nebraska, Iowa. One and seven in the last eight years. Yeah, that's tough. But we have, like I said earlier, we have controlled the border between Iowa and Nebraska. We, Casey's gas station is ours. We own the cattle industry, and uh, we own the uh, Heroes Trophy currently. That's my that's my that's my list. Are we doing one words? Yes, we're absolutely doing one words. Predictable. Shut the fuck up, Loss. Hey, sorry, sorry, time. sorry. I wanted to throw in a few words. Disappointing. Missed. <laughs> Bad. <clears throat> okay, my tier, my tier three. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of great rivalries out there. I think my tier three is going to go to a game that in recent years have has been amazing. Like last second wins. Um, a lot of times is who's going to play in the SEC championship. That is going to be Alabama versus Auburn. That is the Iron Bowl. That is my tier three. You don't even watch that game. My <laughs> tier. <laughs> this is my time. My tier two is going to be the newest. Yet, the strongest rivalry game possibly in college football in the next couple of years, and that is two elite historic teams go at it September 30th next year, Nebraska, Michigan, Bustin' Bowl. That is going to be, in the near future, probably a Tier 1 rivalry game coming up. And my Tier 1 goes to the greatest rivalry, not just in college sports, but all of sports in general, the game. Ohio State and Michigan. Woody Hayes, back in the day, went for two when they were up by multiple touchdowns at the end of the game. And when they asked him, why'd you go for two? He said, because I couldn't go for three. That's the kind of game we're talking about. That's a nice quote. That is elite. You are hurt by yours, huh? Solid. No, I love my list. Oh, sorry, boss. Go ahead, say it again. Solid. Thank you. Good. Respectable. Were you holding that thing in? I felt it right when I got done. I was like, oh, I'm saving this for my one word. <laughs> and I pushed a couple times just to make sure, like, it's going to come out. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh. you knew he was about to push. Like, you got, one, you got one moment to figure that out. It didn't take too long either. Really. You're so lame. You're right when you ended, I was already, like, with the push. And I was like, all right, just push it down there and execute. Push it down there and execute. Don't get your stage fright, Will. You guys didn't say Army Navy. I don't watch that game. Like, I listen, hey, as much as I would love to, I respect the truth. That's, that's not a good game. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. 
<laughs> Uniforms are always cool with hell, though. That thing was like, <laughs> fucking grab the mic. Bring it in here. Whoa, take it easy, boys. <laughs> oh my god. The only reason I didn't you choose the bus. made me mad. <laughs> The only reason I didn't choose the bus and ball is just because we've only played one game. Like it's not, it hasn't built that way. And we got our ass kicked. So, but you did you think to choose it? You literally said you forgot. No, when you brought that up, I did forget about it. Okay, but I was still pretty gung ho on wanting to. Uh, I thought the Red River wi rivalry game is a fucking great pull. And I was like, I can't take that. From I was, I, like all I was thinking about is like, man, what big rivalry games do I actually like watch or try and keep up with? I think it's lame. It's in the middle of the season though. I don't like that. I like, I like the last game of the year to be everyone's rivalry game. That's such an elite week of college football. I will say in this this past weekend was a good one, bro. Like really a good, good one. Great rivalry week. Great rivalry week. It's off to everybody. Listen, this week you're going to listen to a crazy podcast. Jared Allen comes on. Not all, don't know what to expect. We know he's an elite football player. He likes to keep to himself quite a bit, but we talk about everything under the sun. That man talks about, we go conspiracy Brother. theories. We talk about religion. It truly is. It, it was one of the more fun podcasts we've ever I was, done. I was literally going to ask like, how much fun yeah. did we have on that pod? Like, like there's some stuff where I'm sure we're sitting there thinking like, all right, are we going to go down this rabbit hole? Right. Like, do we have a guest that where it's all going to flow smoothly? And dude, it was like, it was like sitting in the basement playing some video games, just mm. talking shop with the boys. It's, it was one of my favorite episodes we've done in like a long time. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a great time. There was a couple times when the religion stuff hit. I was like, are we, are we doing too much here? Is this, is this too you give much? A big apology to the, it was the Mormons, the, right? the Mormon community. But just know that all the stuff that was said, uh, <laughs> we, we, we enjoyed ourselves having fun with you guys, but we didn't mean nothing by it, especially the Mormon religion. And I think Scientology was, we dipped our toe in Scientology yeah, as well. A lot so, of conspiracies. It was yeah, fucking awesome. There was a lot going on. Also, I fucked up a conspiracy theory with the TV show, but I still think that that fucking conspiracy theory is real. The I do need to figure out. Is if an that is real. Moment for both. Now, before you get into that episode, uh, this episode, you're going to have to listen to an ad read, but don't worry. It's an outstanding one, and it happens to be Duke Cannon. The Duke Cannon Holiday Collection features scent that men actually like and packaged in keepsake boxes to be cherished for weeks. Bring great smelling holiday cheer to any stocking, white elephant exchange, or gift giving occasion made in the USA by humans, not elves. Unlike the cranberry spice candy, you'll actually appreciate the scent after December 25th. A portion of these proceeds, by the way, they benefit veterans and active duty military. Shout out everyone that's active duty and has uh, served our country. Shout out Blas Hernandez. Blossy boy in the back. Blossy boy in the back. Check out the holiday collection. You can purchase everything in Duke Cannon's holiday collection at ducana.com and at target stores everywhere and wait hold on these are some of the big ass bricks of soap okay for the, the okay. in the sense okay so some of the big ass bricks pick, of soap just pick a few. i'm just gonna pick but a few. i have to read this part real quick some of the big ass bricks <laughs> big ass brick of soap <laughs> holiday names and scents are illegal pine cut soap that's a frying uh, that's a fresh pine scent Rudolph's I got you. I got much deserved nightcap soap, cinnamon, and antique wood set. Ooh, that sounds nice. Oops. All brandy homemade eggnog soap, toasted nutmeg, and a must scent. Frothy the beer man soap, warm sandalwood scent. Sandalwood does go a long way, dude. Sandalwood, sandalwood is, a, is, my favorite is a scent, scent I didn't know I liked until someone's like, you, you kind of smell like sandalwood. I was like, really? I, I do? And I looked and it was a sandalwood scent. I really enjoyed that. Check out Duke Cannon at any Target or on DukeCannon.com and use code BUSSIN. That's B-U-S-S-I-N for 15% off your first order. Duke Cannon. It's not for clowns. And Jared Allen episode. Ooh. Crappy the driver. <laughs> it's bad. The highway system. It's, it's more, I feel like it's more the highway system getting than the crappy anything, drivers. The highway system no, does make drivers people bad, bad, worse drivers. Everywhere. Getting yeah. anything done out here, like, like I'm coming, you know, Arizona, it's like the labor market is stacked out there. Like, you can do whatever you want, you want whenever you want. Boom, like, you got 13 people knocking at your door to right. get something done. In the West, I don't know, we just kind of, we hustle a little more, I think. Um, I got here, I was like, you know, no one would return an email for like three weeks. That is like, a fucking deal. That is that is a bit of a weird ghost thing. Texting? What is yeah. the ghost texting? Is that just a Nashville thing? I don't know. Like you'll be in the middle. I'll be in the middle of texting somebody, and then it's just like, oh, I guess they're they're done. Yeah, that sounds like Taylor Lewan to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, 
Hey, brother. Textbook me, dude. Are you sure? I'll be in the middle of a deep conversation. You'll send me a text this long, and I'll put my phone down. And it'll be three days later. I'll be like, oh shit. Yeah, but I mean, or or like you text somebody, and then they don't respond for like three days, and you're like, well, huh, okay. I'm really getting exposed over yeah, here. Okay, wow. Um, so no, it was then. I honestly though, I didn't realize how much it rained. So we got here, and the year we got here, I think it was what was it 2017. It rained more in, in Nashville than it did in Seattle. And I was like, this is the When were you place. here? What, what time? What time of the year? We came in September, right? So we went we through that winter. There was like that eight, 2018 was miserable, like just rainy gray. So we, we were going to move back, but then we just couldn't find the right school again to put our kids in. So we stayed and now we're building a house here. Dude, and, when you get in the yeah. winter months, bro, uh, here it is always gloomy, raining, snowing. Uh, go. It's got some good months, yeah. but it's like. Oh, my kids are at that age. I can't just go anywhere. It's not a lot. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. like. Have you ever thought about homeschooling? Yes, so the, dude, the pandemic was amazing, right? Mm. I, I say that not amazing, we, obviously. Yeah, trust me. Uh, I know when it took it more seriously because my wife and I were in a situation where I was like, I don't have to be a part of it. Yeah. We both don't work. Uh, they offer virtual school, schooling for our kids. And I was like, so we're just not going to be a part of it. So, right, we just got in the RV and we peaced out. Yeah. I uh, took them kids all like the uh, national park, stayed in Tahoe and stuff like that. Um, and I say that because like I felt bad for people that were considered um, – yeah, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they had to work. What was the word? Gosh, they, um, Working remote? No, 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 no. I like, no, yeah, essential. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, like my, my buddy's in construction, Boston. right? So he got he got deemed essential. And so it was like, he's working. You know right. what I mean? And um, and so like people like that are like people that, you know, you got kids that need to go to school for, for meals, right? I'm mm -hmm. just like... Like they, if I don't have to be a part of the problem, I'm not gonna be a part of the problem. Like right. so I'm just gonna, we're gonna sit back and chill. Uh, but yeah, that's, I we we had thought it was great, right? It was tough for us coming back because now the kids are in all the sports and we're running like crazy. Right. But to have my young kids with me and we, like I said, you guys want to go to the beach for three weeks? Let's roll. Just out <laughs> of there. Get up. Gone. That you life of retirement, to, dude. Yeah, you want to go? Done to, the hard work and now you can just sit back and yeah, relax. That's what I told us. I'm built for COVID because it gave me a, it gave me an excuse to say no to everything. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you said know? no to us a few times. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. Ooh, on the bus. That's that's good. Good. Oh, like, with people, yeah, no mask. Like, oh, oh, we can do Zoom. We're just like, well, if he lives in Nashville, we want him on the bus. Yeah. She's like, oh no, he's not doing it. And literally, in my head, I'm thinking, he doesn't seem like a guy who wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, he seems like somebody would probably come around. To yeah, people. he doesn't seem like a guy that washes yeah, his hands yeah. a lot. Like, oh, you know, you know he's what I'm saying? Seem like, you know, he's probably not wearing a mask. Yeah, actually, I mean, actually, actually, you see his truck. Yeah, that's like the OG Mac hat. Yeah, 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 he pulled yeah, up in there. I'm Jared actually, Allen is here in that Duramax. I'm actually one of the like I, I got so much help for. It. Like, I was a Republican that wore a mask, right? Yeah. Because dude, I don't like. First of all, I'm not a big human being fan, anyways. Like people, like I'm like a non-social social guy. Like I can do it. Yeah, right. fun. But if I have my druthers, I'd rather just hang at home or like like go hunting by myself or people like, oh, you went golfing day? How come we don't golf? I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to golf with you. Yeah, golf yeah, golf's yeah. not for me so, either. No, I, I, dude, I rocked the mask and uh, I did all that and it was great because then people don't talk to you either. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a huge deal. Um, so I, I rocked the mask forever. I was like, man, my kids haven't been sick for like, a year and a half. This is amazing. Yeah, because when they start going to school, it's hell. It's hell, right? Everybody's that sick. first year of hell. You're, it's like, what are we doing here? Yeah, stomach. I mean, not even COVID. We're talking about flu, stomach virus, yeah. like RSV. Name. I don't want that. And crap. it just goes on the line of the family. Yeah, gets the kid, just, gets uh, the mom, gets you. You're kind of out there playing dodgeball. Uh, like, a game you're gonna lose. Yep. Every single time. So yeah, we uh, we just again we were like, you know what? Nope, not happening. And then you know we had actually unfortunately we had a couple people get it really bad in the beginning, and I was like. That looks terrible. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm also, I'm also under the believer, right? And uh, I had a, had a uh, old neighbor, business partner of mine, telling me one time, he said, the pioneers were the ones that took all the arrows. Mm -hmm. It was the second and third wave of settlers that found all the gold, right? And he was like, the lesson is, don't be first. Right. In the business world. He goes, find a niche. Don't, everything's been thought of, right? Just do what other people do better. <laughs> That's the philosophy. Sounds business, about right. right. I was like, that's legit. And I think, so, I I think like, like uh, even with the COVID thing, when you're sitting there, red or blue, regardless, I yeah. think when we were sitting there back 2020 in March, everyone was a little nervous. Hell when yeah. that shit started coming. You were nervous. Dude, I, was, I, was, I, was I was sitting in California like, oh my God. I is this gonna get us? We were supposed to go. We had a, uh, we, I, was, I got inducted into the Big Sky Hall of Fame, right? And it was in Boise. So, um, but this was 2020 and it was so Washington had the big outbreak right mm. my, in the in the uh, conference was going to be in Boise my mom and stepdad are, are in Boise and then we were going to go see some people in Arizona Arizona had like one case so we're like okay we're not worried anybody yeah. in Nashville right, right. Yeah. And I'm like here in Washington so I go on I'm like there's like three people from Washington coming to this thing and I was mm. like 
Oh hell, nope, we're good. <laughs> no shit. I'm like, no, I don't want this to hear oh, about people, people dying. Dude, well, they ended up canceling the event, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It spilled over in Idaho. But that was the thing. Yeah, it was nerve wracking. I was like, and you know, I'd Jerry, buddy, Jerry was saying no to everything. Oh, I buddy, yeah, yeah, everything. Every, there were times where we got a little far out, and Peggy was still saying the same thing, and I'm like, I think we're all in the clear here. Like we've yeah. hit level three. Oh, I, I, you know, three, three a few I, times. I took, I took as far. I took full advantage of saying no. It's like, ooh. Yeah, and she's like, will we have to book him? I'm like, we want him. He, I literally, in my brain, I'm thinking, he lives in Nashville. Or we're not wasting our energy doing him on Zoom when he lives here. One day, oh, we got to have him on. the legend yeah. on the bus. Yeah. Yeah but, yeah, but even my buddies were like, you know, even when we started traveling again and doing all that stuff, everybody's was like, I, we, we were able to, like, play it off for so long. Like, he was like, I, I came home from somewhere, and he was like, wait, you want to plan again? I was like, oh, bro, I've been traveling for, like, the last, you know, six months. I just... <laughs> Just, just out there. Just out there. <laughs> that is crazy, dude. No, we, we were able, to, I guess, that we, we were able to maximize it. And that was my thing with people. I'm just like, I didn't really care what people, because when it got political, I'm like, I told people, I was like, unless you're a medical doctor, I don't care what your opinion is. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, I just have compassion for people, right? And so, you know what? If, if someone tells me, hey, if you're going to be in a crowd, put on a mask and you might protect somebody, dude, I'll do it. Yeah. I, I don't really care. You know what I mean? I'm not, yeah. same reason I, putting my seatbelt on. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, people got crazy about it. And I think we showed, honestly, when I said, I said it showed how mentally weak the United States was, right? Like we didn't even have the mental capacity to like just band together. Just choose. I don't even care what size you choose from. Just band together. Right. Just be like all of a sudden, like, I hate you. Yeah, like, things got bro, crazy no, quick. Since we were five. What yeah. do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, didn't yeah. even tell people you just coughed in the car before yeah. you walked inside. You're like, I don't, oh, I don't, dude, I don't when you're oh. When it was mid-pandemic and you were at the grocery store or something, and you're and you thinking, go, and you're just, uh, every, you're dead. So you're so fucking dead. You do that, it's over. Dead. I swear to God. I swear to God, I don't have it. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm good. good. But then you would know. You could be I got I got it twice. I got banged the first time. Okay, so I just got it for the first time, like, a month ago, I came mm. back from Canada. Got a month in, ago, got in Canada. Oh, for real? My wife was pissed because because uh, we were you know we're trying to stay healthy before we had to go to Minnesota and uh, had little sniffles and I was like I'm just gonna test just to make sure because I always test when I come home just in case and uh, sure enough I was like dang I made it two and a half years without catching COVID and then. You literally got through the whole thing. You finished the race. Finished the race. Done. And you got caught by a straight done. bullet. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking wild. The falling bullet caught me in the neck. Dude, that Five is crazy. So how'd yeah. you feel? Did, was it a bad no, deal? Mine was super, super, super. We were really solid. Yeah, my daughter had it. My dad, she got a daughter. Got it. My wife, my other daughter didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, and she had like a fever for half a day. I had a stuff. You know, the worst part was like day eight, I got a sinus infection. That was, I tested positive for like 14 days, um, which is actually another great thing because then it was like, all of a sudden, I started binge watching like Blacklist and all these random Netflix things. I'm like, yeah. man, I forgot how it was awesome it was to sit at home and just the watch simplicity TV. Simplicity you love. Oh yeah, uh, and then it all of a sudden people, shows, were, people were calling me again, like, hey, can, you can you do here, do this, or hey, we got something. I'm like, ah, I got COVID. And then all of a sudden, it's like, phone stop ringing. Yeah, this, this is great. I'm like, this and then we phenomenal. came knocking again. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I'm like, nope, I don't have COVID. <laughs> well, yeah. Peggy starts like, you, you know how it is going back and forth with Peggy at times, but yeah. Peggy, she's just always dialed in. She's like, hey, he's hunting for a couple weeks here. He's gonna be back. I am next week. Yep, I'm actually heading out. Like, like, he's gonna, gonna be out week, like yeah. on the 14th or something. And, like, if you want him, it have to be this week. Right. So, have to be this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. She's just like, you know, it's getting like. Do we do we have them on or do we pass? Because we've been playing the limbo dance for we have been. We have two all, years, two yeah. years. No disrespect. I apologize for that. But yeah, we just um I guess I got you know back to back to normal now. But uh yeah, it was it was definitely well then, you know, and then I get I get it, I end up catching it in a curling club and then you know, I thought for sure someone's gonna have the flu or something from Minnesota being around like eighty thousand people all weekend. Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You thought for a second you'd be able to get out of it today. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I was like, all right, we're here. We're good. It's, you know, yeah. right time. Man, I can still pick yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. And but, a lot of excuses. Right. I'm like, all right, I'm all right. Well, I, you know, part of it was I just wanted to make sure your guys' success level was up to par. You know it what I mean? like yeah. we've officially hit the bar for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, they're good. You know, yeah, good yeah. enough. I mean, they're we're in like this yeah, weird yeah. warehouse <laughs> on a bus. Like, anything could happen. Like, yeah. cool, let's roll. We all tested positive for COVID today. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a little wrinkle it's we're right. throwing and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you want to start with? You want to start at the beginning? I, 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 I do want to say we all just got canceled, just so you know. Yeah, no, 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 no. I do want to saw how quiet me and Will got. We our political views are whoever. If you're talking right now, you're Republican. So are we? No, but that's that's kind of like honestly, I, I tell people all the time, like you know what, the world needs more independence, right? Like, earn my vote again. That's what mm -hmm. I want someone to earn my vote. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I, that's politics. I try to. I, my whole philosophy is that just don't be a bad person, right? Yeah, be a good, be a good human being, and we can get along. 
To me, it's just like when you see that look in people's eyes when they get big and you just know they're very like uh, opinionated about something or passionate. I'm not even going to say opinionated like it's wrong either, but passionate. I'm more like, all right, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm you're not usually going to smile and nod with those yeah, individuals. Like, I'm just like, all right, good this is going to be a good, a good people, pace. right? So I have a philosophy. If you don't, if you're not like intelligence wise or on this topic, what societal, the minimum of what societal norms are, right? Mm -hmm. Like if someone would talk to you, like I would talk to you guys, like, okay, these guys would be considered intelligent people by societal norms, oh, right? Yeah. Like not, not, not a bunch of turds, right? Or if you've read two, two, at least two books on the subject, I'll listen to all your point of views. Yeah. If not, like if I, I'm like, I'm like eh, it'd be like a homeless person trying to talk to you about your finances. We're just not even going to entertain that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get because that. Because we're not on the same level. Like the levels just aren't even there and you're not going to understand what I'm saying and I don't really care what you say because you don't have any you know, proof behind what you're saying. Right. The problem of, with information yeah. is you can, if whatever your opinion is, you can find literature to support your opinion. Nowadays, and that right. is, Absolutely. and because it's, it's just the internet. You have all this flooding <laughs> yeah. information. If you're like, I feel like the world is flat. You feel like the world is flat. You can find all the information you need to know that the world is flat. Yeah. I, I, I tell those people start driving. Start, right. start driving. Hey, to me, it's just a fun conversation and to have. Shoot like, me a text, shoot me a text when you get to the end. Yeah. Yeah. You go through a, a the world is flat go, situation. A world is flat? Uh, I don't think so. You had like something. with somebody else? No, you said something to me the other day. I think we were like on Instagram and you like DM me something like, hey, is the world actually flat? I, I don't oh, know if it was. I DM'd you like somebody doing like a conspiracy thing of, yeah. of basically. Yeah, the, you're the, saying the, they got some points. I'm like, Will, I can't do this I, I with just, you. I love like. I just love any kind of conversation. Like, if somebody's a flat earther and they want to sit here and talk about it, I love doing it as long 100%. as, like, we're not sitting here yelling at each other because I just, I enjoy when people are just fluid in their thinking. Yes. They empathize with the other person. They yes. see it. We're all being good points back. All right, I think it we're not going to figure it out. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing with, like, what happened with COVID is, I think you used to have, what you used to, and, and probably social media, right? You used to have the ability, like, Walter Cronkite would come on and spout some crap off, and then you'd go have a couple beers with your, you know, whether you're a liberal, whether conservative, in the minute, whatever. Yeah. You'd tell me your viewpoints, I'd tell you your points. We're obviously friends because we have some characteristics we, we enjoy about each other. So, yeah, you know, cool. Then you go about your business, right? But like you said, all of a sudden, it was the ability to agree to disagree went away. Yeah. And it was got, like ultimatums. People got contentious. It you was on my side yeah. or you're dead to me. People were like, 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 like stopping becoming friends. And you only have like they a, were like, a, we're, exactly. we, our morals don't add up. Yeah, no doubt. We can't be friends anymore. No doubt. And then when you're on the internet too, like yeah. it's not, you can't just be fluid because it's not like we're all sitting here talking. So it's just harder to, yeah, harder no, to I, have I, a conversation. And that's, and that's the kind of thing I took. I was just like, you know, and I mean, I'd have conservative buddies because, like, I'd be wearing, I'd call them, like, oh, what's up, Biden lover? What's up? You know, like, literally, like, it's like you're no longer, like, you can't be or call yourself a conservative because you wore a mask. And I was like, wow, and you're a Christian, and I'm a Christian, and you sound like a complete a hole right yeah. now. So I'm like, want to go down that road? Um, so, no, it, dude, I think that's so funny because I, I actually enjoy, like you said, the conversations with people who think differently than yeah, me. Yeah. Because, A, I might learn something, right? B, it might just be absolutely freaking hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I want someone to try to convince me the earth is flat. Like, I look forward to that because I'm just like, this is going to... A good conspiracy you, theory goes a long way. Yeah, yeah it really does. Game of Thrones? No, see, I couldn't get oh, into that's it. That's when you got a binge, I was, brother. I was There's too many storylines. Couldn't get into it. Me and my wife tried twice to sit down and watch it. Couldn't get And you know the other one? Everybody's going to hate me for it because freaking... Uh, what is it? With Jason Bateman. Um, Ozarks. Ozarks. Brother, Ooh, what the tried, fuck? Tried twice. Started that thing twice. I even got to like episode 12 or 6 or something like that. I don't even know what it was. into it? And I'm like, it's the, same, it's the same dang story every day. He's trying to launder some money for a drug dealer and he's trying to buy a bill. I'm like, this is ridiculous. How many people are going to try to kill him? Like, this is dumb. I, I couldn't do I've it. I've never I seen the show, it. so this is Will's battle to fight, but I couldn't do it, it. sounds like you're in... Dude, those are right right awesome. But what, I, I never got it. Every, every, everything was the same. I'm like, okay, he just bought another crappy business. His family hates him. You use laundry money for a drug dealer. Yeah, okay. but the storyline continues to build. Like, obviously, you stop. But what, what, what's the show that you love? Uh, good, dude, so know what I got? Sons of Anarchy? Uh, that's what I was going to say. Side note, I know we're talking did, about the Hell's Angels stuff. I like, did, a great one to binge is like Sons, Sons of Anarchy, Anarchy bro. Dumb. I had a hard time getting into it, dude. But that's oh, kind of the same thing all I the time. They're, time. they're trying to get out of certain situations. Yeah, but see, I Jack's appreciate just trying to take it from violence and guns. To like, yeah. hey, let's do a cleaner, sketchy see, I business. I appreciated the individual character building in those, right? Versus, like... In Ozarks, his character doesn't change. Mm -hmm. You know, the wife character doesn't really change. Oh, that you're, you're wrong. That's well, why you stopped. Maybe they watched long enough. Maybe they watched long enough. Even Game of 
sounds like he, there's a bunch of characters and they're building yeah, through the whole time. My guy, like, dude, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I can't get into that. Same reason I didn't like, I hated Never in Story as a kid. Mm. Right? I'm like, the big flying dog, A, it scared the crap out of me when I was little. Right. And it still kind of does. Um, but I'm like, just, I'm not. What, about, what the, about Star Wars for you? Nope. You take out the dragons. Uh, Game, of Thrones, dragons. Game of Thrones is like hey, based on a true watch story. TV together. No. Hey, you you take out the dragons. Game of Thrones is basically based on a true story. Huh? <laughs> no. I, this what is, what this story? What's the story? Oh, man, way back in the day, dude. Oh, oh. And that's not a true story. <laughs> based on that's applied. Based on true events. Like way back in the day, happened. You think dragons are real? Power. You think dragons are real? No, no. Oh, I would love. See, that's the thing. Oh, so, I don't so think I would love to say so dragons are real. I right. train your dragon, dude. I don't want to watch that. I'm gonna sit here and, and say I think dragons eh. probably were real. Don't know. Don't know. So, but uh, so you know, with uh, we build houses for handicapped veterans, right? For wounded veterans, and one of the guys we built a house from, he was a first uh, sergeant, first class, and he was like absolutely 100 percent believes in dragons. I love with, that without a doubt. And he said, "This is why." He said, "When he was in Afghanistan, right?" These people don't even have a word for TV. He said, when you get up into like the, the um, up into the, uh, the Candlelight Valley, he's like, you're talking about literally people that have lived in caves. They have no outside interaction, right? Except from their tribe and their, their individual. Yeah. He said, they don't know what a TV is. They don't, they don't have words for this, but they have words for dragons. So he said, somewhere along the line, someone's I believe <laughs> that. telling me. That's all I needed to hear. Convinced. That is all that I needed to hear. Yeah, I'm in. That's what he said. He told me, I was like, that's actually strong. That, see, that's why I like having conversations. Yeah. Gotta be like dragons, bro. Like fire breathing dragons. Yeah. No, maybe maybe it was a, some sort of flying pterodactyl. Giant lizard. Prehistoric. Prehistoric. You never know. But right. he uh, absolutely. And I, when he told me, that, I was like, well, that makes sense. I mean, if if they have a five thousand year old word for dragon, who am I to say that they're wrong? Exactly. I don't have a five thousand year old word for anything. Nothing. Nothing. But the, th the thing that I sent you is like a conspiracy. As it continues to zoom out, like we're basically all within the wall, and like. All these, all these spots with snow and everything else that we don't actually ever go travel you, to and see. Where are you guys at on conspiracy that's, theories? That's beyond the wall. It's like Skyrim. Yeah. Like you can get to the edge, but that's it. Yeah. So where are you like guys? We're, we're all inside something. Are so you a conspiracy I, uh, theorist? Yeah, I just, I, I love all I of it. I think it's fun to, to talk to about. It. Yeah. I think yeah. it's fun to talk about. I, I just like, I don't have a big belief system in much, in many things. I kind of just like let them, let them, let everything fall where it may. Like, I kind of just let everybody else tell me their opinions. I just kind of consume what I want. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, would make sense. I, uh, if I yeah, can yeah. pick a couple things up, yeah. I'm with that, yeah. dude. I will go I with that. I an original thought. I'm like, ooh, I hear that. It's cool. I'm going to yeah. sell that to someone and make but me But if you think about it, hard. does anybody actually have an original no. thought? No. No, no, no one does. There's you no original thought. Your business partner, there's no original idea out there. The blueprints are out there. You just find ways to kind of regurgitate it and maybe do it a little bit better. Even when you're a child, you're taught certain things, things you picked up from your father, your mother, that, those types of things, your friends. So, although I gotta say, Flat Earth was pretty original. That came out of nowhere. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have those people. But to me, it's the door opens when I see somebody's like, "Oh, you're a, you're an idiot." Or once I see like, "Oh, they're not trying to hear that at all." This is where I need to figure out how do I poke them to yeah, start being like, "I, love I think you're the, just being like, I think you're kind of stupid." Yeah, I love <laughs> I love stoking the flame for sure. Like, yeah. wow. like oh. The, and then, yeah. This guy over here says that if you're a flat earther, you're dumb. Yeah. You, guys hey, but you think I'm dumb? You guys should well, do that. Yeah. Why? <laughs> have you ever been to Anarcho, you dumb piece of shit? Yeah. No, you haven't. Oh, you haven't going seen into flat earth videos and then just start fucking spamming their yeah. inbox. YouTube like, hey, is I'm a hell of a place. You, yeah. YouTube is an incredible like, I'm place. I'm telling you, I think oh. you need to rethink this. And then they just think you're fucking crazy. The lizard people might be my favorite. Like, that's, See, that's, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> but but well, more I might agree with you. Barbershop, dude. I only went down. So like, the lizard people, again, I'm probably getting the, this wrong, so I apologize to all the lizard people who I am uh, probably greatly offending. <laughs> yeah. And now I will no longer be allowed in the lizard people culture. Um, <laughs> but basically that we're all effing lizards or something. They got sent down from a mothership and... Shape You're talking about Scientology. Yeah. You're talking about Scientology. Basically Scientology and yeah. lizard people are pretty much the same from what right. I understand, right? That sounds about right yeah. to me. Um, but yeah, we're talking about the barbershop, and like, but they literally... Think they're going to get transformed into some freaking lizard and bro, that's amazing. Shape Wouldn't that be so cool? I guess like getting abducted by a UFO. And it's always in the Northwest, by the way. That yeah. being abducted by a UFO sounds like a deal you don't want to go through. But if you threw down a ladder or something, I'd poke Let's around talk for a about bit. This COVID pissed people off so much. I heard this from a comedian, actually based out of here in Nashville, mm. Nate Bargazzi. Yes, you heard that line, but he was dead I don't serious. Think so, but he so, is a national. Yeah, yeah, he's a national guy. It was him. COVID was so divisive that the government came out and said there's UFOs and everybody's like yeah cool 
Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, nothing. That did kind of go I by. Actually, really, that's, that's a, a real, real thing. Yeah, there was a couple of headlines that came thing. out. I'm like, hang on, why? Are, oh, Richie, there's UFOs. Yeah. Tom DeLonge was right the whole time. Yeah, he was. That's the uh, lead singer for Blink 182. <laughs> but he, he really <laughs> broke up with the band to go chase aliens. He's got he got documentaries. Yeah, and this shit finally comes out. That one of the biggest questions: Are we alone on, in this world? We don't know. We're there's, not. There's, 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 go, hey, COVID's a little on We should tell some people. Hey, by the way, there's aliens. Everyone's like. See, I want more. Are you wearing a mask or not when you're telling us about the aliens? I want more proof, though. Like, I want to see an actual alien, not just like a floating light. Those uh, those, uh, Air Force pilots, the the 60 minute thing is fucking insane, dude. And you listen to a few of those guys who've like worked at Area 51 that's been on like, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah. And you get some nice stories. My grandfather, so my grandfather was uh, 23 years in the Marine Corps. He's passed now, uh, First Force Recon, Top Secret Clearance, all sorts of stuff, right? Space and blood. So I remember my brother when he were little. I had to do like an interview somebody, interview hero, and he interviewed my grandpa. And he asked mm-hmm. him about aliens. And my grandpa's answer always stuck with me. He said, "He didn't, didn't say no, didn't say yes. He just said the government has stuff that the people don't need to know about because it would ensure pure panic." And no like, shit. I'm like, dude, that's better than saying yes. That's my point. I'm better like, better than yes. saying yes. And I've hung on that word since I since I was like six. And I remember I the last time I had breakfast with him before it passed, I was like, grandpa. Like you need to just like write a book, like just r- record it, right? Mm-hmm. Record everything you know, give it to me, right? I'm not doing anything with. It. I just want to know, like, I just want to have a family, right? He's like, all this top secret clearance, everything you know, ever learned from top secret, you take it to the grave with him. He was that hardcore. He's like, nope, take no it to the grave shit. with me. Like, do a great not job, even cool. They do a great I job, bro. No, that's, no, that's super fucking cool. He did that, <laughs> yeah. but I, I'm just curiosity. I know. That. I tell and you sure, what, the dude. government does a great job brainwashing. <laughs> Throw that out there. Just out of nowhere. Oh, 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 Take that. Huh? Grenade. I'll tell you what they do. They like, great job they got him to take it all the way to his and grave. We, he wouldn't even tell his grandma, bro. He, 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 he was dying. They were putting him down and they go, mission accomplished, boys. Yeah, that was the yeah, one we had to yeah, worry yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just sitting there at the funeral and this motherfucker didn't tell me nothing, dude. Didn't tell <laughs> nothing. me nothing. What about ghosts? But he was probably tapped the whole time. Are ghosts real to you? Yes and no. So. We're almost 30 minutes into a, a podcast. With no football. Right now, no football. Right now, we're in it. This is oh, we're in it we're right now. We're after practice and we're regurgitating. We will talk about football eventually. We will talk about football eventually. And make sure you mark it down, <laughs> boss, when we start talking about football so we can tell people in the intro. So we, uh, like, yes and no. So as, as a Christian, I believe when I die, I go in front of my maker, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but... I've experienced some some creepy stuff. I know people that have experienced some stuff, right? So I I don't think it's past the realm of possibility that you can be visited. Um, I you know I believe, dude. I believe there's angels and demons on Earth, right? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think things can can happen. Do I think ghosts can harm me? No. Yeah. What about um, demons? Have you seen Paranormal Activity? Yeah, no, I, I don't do this. That's the other thing. Like, I don't like, I don't like like spiritural horror movies. And oh, you're like missing that. out, buddy. Those are the scariest uh, because ones. Because you don't want to believe in those. You don't want to believe in those. You don't. So, don't. I don't think demons scare me because, as as a Christian, as, as someone that you know has confessed my faith in Christ, I I'm untouchable from that. Um, the Ouija board, then. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to push that either. Like, I, I also know my limits. Know What's your limits. to find out. No, we talked about know your limitations. Yeah, they're they're like, oh, know your boundaries. Yeah. I ain't touching know no, I ain't touching the Ouija board. reason I ain't going drinking with some male's angels. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm going to say something stupid. Hey, what? They're not as bad as they seem. They're not as bad as they seem. No, I'm saying like, I'm either going to want to join them. Yeah. Or I'm going to, or I'm going to say something stupid. No, you're dead. You know what I mean? I get it. I'm with you. Know your limitations. So yeah, ghosts, I think, um, so, so yeah. With that said, I think they're really think you can you can have some things, but I don't think on that that whole like, man. I gotta be honest, I don't know. But paranormal activity, I think that's a bunch of crap. I think but you need stage. to watch it on Netflix. So stage, right? I don't know, brother. Like, I don't know. Buy yourself. It's like Bigfoot, right? It's like Bigfoot. Totally different on, situation. That's on, a totally on. different situation. Did you hear the knock again? Yeah. We'll never get a picture of it, Listen, but we heard a knock. Okay, okay, there are photos. All would be so <laughs> mad that you right now. Photos. There's video evidence of Bigfoot. Let's not let's, well, let's not get hung up on the ghost. Let's let's stay on the same yeah, ghost thing. Yeah. Stay on the ghost thing. Bigfoot's there also a Northwest a, conspiracy. Northwest has a lot of nice yeah, conspiracies. Big, okay. Bigfoot might as well be a ghost. No, uh, he's been. He's been I'm, I'm out on that. <laughs> you know, have you heard of the movie The Conjuring? Annabelle. Yes. Okay. Oh, those those great horror movies. Those two yes. people who like found all that stuff and had their little museum downstairs in their basement. Yes. They had this philosophy that it takes 28 days to like really experience and either affect, take away demon or whatever. Yeah. 28 days you have to be uh, isolated in an area. So Netflix has done this thing. It's like these paranormal activity people, they go into these haunted areas with no information okay. about anything that's happened. And they spend 28 days. I think it's three teams. 
all three of these teams find out what happened in there, who did it, and all, all this crazy shit that they had no pre-registered information to. They had no pre-registration. Listen, I understand until how I TV see, works. I get what I you're see, saying. Till I see someone, <laughs> buddy, like, some guy's in there, and he's there. sitting there, and all of a sudden a ghost jacks him in the face and is choking him out. We got a buddy going. The power of Christ compels you, and a fucking jar moves off a thing. Yeah, flies. Right. Actually, we had that in college. We Exorcism's had. Exorcism's a true story. Hundred percent. Exorcism's a real thing. I, I agree. I, I agree with that. Hundred percent. I agree. With, I think you don't believe in pur- Do you believe in purgatory? <laughs> wait, 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 uh, my fucking point no, out. I believe you either go to heaven. Or you? Either you're in, either in heaven or hell. So you don't think there's a big fucking waiting list to see God? You think when you die, you're just gonna be in front of Him? Yep. But there's a lot of people that die every single day. Yeah, but you can't. But the Bible even says you can't even comprehend. Your your mind cannot. I don't even disagree comprehend. with. I don't disagree I, with that listen, statement at all. So yeah. Listen, I feel like I figured, I figured it out a little bit a few Holy. weeks ago when, when I was banged up a little bit. Oh yeah, I was up in the my, sky. My I was, boy was in a car accident. Yeah, I had a little edible, and I was telling my wife, I was like, I think I think I figured out what heaven is. <laughs> Stick with me, boys. I'm here. I'm listening. This is what I got. I want you to break down the Mormon religion because I think I have a couple ideas. Oh. Too. I, oh, no, no, no. I will. Literally, Mormon religion. I think. I think we oh, got we, something there. Right, you know. You know how. You know how when you dream, like you're just you're just in a dream, and then suddenly you wake up. Obviously, when you're dead, you never wake up. What if the entire time, like you're in a dream, everybody always like, oh, when you go to heaven, you're gonna see this person, you're gonna see about, you're gonna see all these different people, right? No, no. Hold on. Hold on. No one knows. Hold on. But, you're in your own dream. Like you're in your own heaven. You're seeing everybody that you've, like your grandpa that you've experienced. You're seeing him in his best ways that you know him to be. Like all of your people that you're seeing, like you're just in a constant dream that's yours forever. Like my dream in heaven is going to be different than your guys's because we're all going to be seeing each other differently. Okay, so hey, let's take a second. I mean, that's just us being zapped by being dream. Well, that's yeah. us dreaming. Like, right. we're just dreaming. We're in a just, dream. You're, basically, you just say, you're, you know, when you, you die, your soul becomes your, sub, your subconscious. Yeah. And you're just... I, I, because you never, like, we wake up. You never, you never wake up and get up. Like, I'm seeing my mom. I'm seeing my grandpa. I'm seeing my kids, my friends. I'm seeing them in the ways of the memories that I remember them. And then, obviously, it's dreamland. Like, we're all doing the, the best stuff yeah. of all time. What about scary dreams? That's hell? Maybe, maybe you're living Whoa. in hell. Maybe that's the way it is. Well, see, that's, that, maybe you have so many bad things that you just have in your brain that you're just you're experiencing. Like that's just your way of that's your eternity. It's basically, uh, what, what, an ashwagandha trip or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ayahuasca, <laughs> ayahuasca, ayahuasca, ayahuasca. Which we need to do that too. Which, by the way, who? But if I have, I don't want to go to hell to find myself. Like, how lost are you? I'm, the only yeah, way then. to it is through it, boss. <laughs> the only way to it is through it. I, I think you need to you need to face the no, demons. It's, it's like you probably got a couple skeletons in the closet that are just itching no, to come I'm out right now. Out. Like, yeah, when you get arrested, you know, when you're in the NFL, they all come out. You nah. know what I mean? Uh, you get arrested in the league? Uh, a couple times, yeah. Would you get Dewey's? Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, we'll unpack that you. later. It'll Let's get stick you. on the heaven and hell thing. Because yes. I really think that's, that's all, that's the Mormon all religion kind of has it like a foolproof plan to get to heaven. Well, hang on. What did you think of what my... I thought your thing well, was I, good. I, 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 you know, so the only thing that is unexplained in that, right? I actually okay, yeah, yeah, pretty good. So I believe in the rapture that one day Jesus is going to come back and then we will inhabit the earth again in, in eternity, right? But God, then what do we do? God created the earth. Uh, we'll have a different body, right? That says you'll get your heavenly body. And one day... Life will basically be eternal, no sin, no sorrow, that stuff. People that are in hell is living with the absence of God. Right? Okay, but real quick, just off that one statement, yeah. how boring would that be? Well, you know, I mean, but you got to remember everything, in my opinion, everything fun that's been created and awesome is from Christ. So it might be like just endless. I mean, you might but have ears that run perfectly straight, just endless loops. Here's endless. where my dream makes sense, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you're, you're, what if you had a reigning horse that had a hundred foot slide? What? Yeah, you're getting hey plus ones. Plus, 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 plus one. Let's go. Hey, here's where my here's where my dream makes sense with that one though. It's like you're relieved of all the, of any pain. Like you're just 100%. you're just in peace and happiness you're because you're in dream. Yeah, you're yeah. just in subconscious. Maybe world. Yeah, it's not taking ketamine and, and just being in that state at all times. In a brain you don't you don't use. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> What'd okay. you say? Oh, it's like, a t- it's like yeah. taking ketamine and just yeah. being there all the time. I just, I, I, I love the subtleties. That's how I like it. Just throw some subtle crap in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about heaven, we're talking about ketamine, right? You got, you got, you got, boys, I think I figured heaven out. You got out. some guy, right? You got Will comes and figures out heaven. You got some guy right now music. listening on cat tranquilizers like, I'm in heaven. <laughs> And until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, then he's got to wake up. And then he's in hell. He's like, whoa, yeah, then, my And then the, 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 it all kind of wears off and them scaries What's come your Mormon stuff? thing? In Mormon levels? I want to talk about the Mormon. I want to talk about what I think heaven is. Okay. Real quick. Is this it's, the it's Mormon very, or the no? No, this, this is, is you. This is the Mormon. I will tell. This is me. Okay. Taylor Lawan explains heaven. heaven. If heaven yeah. is truly real, which I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying for the arguments out there. I think when you die, you go to whatever land that is. It's paradise. 
And every single person you know is also there with you because time is no longer a concept. So like, let's say I die. The minute I die, you're there with me. You might've died 40 years later, but I get to be with you right now because there's no longer a feed of time. That's, you know what I'm that's saying? Interesting, actually. Like my grandfather dies, he's going to see me the minute he opens his eyes and goes through the gates. I think that is exactly is that what fantastic? I'm saying. That is. That's actually. Thank you. That's actually. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, I think no, no, no. I, I was playing off a of Will thing. I wasn't. No, yeah, no, no, I think no, that's I'm very much. Own, but I think like what you just said. I think we're. I think we're figuring this shit I out. Think. Because again, like, like this is a whole new step for Buster. Like we we could we could be dreaming tonight, like our own dreams, and we're in them. Like we're just yeah, you're sleeping. You're in my but, dream but every were, night. Yeah, but me and you are hanging out in my dream currently, even though you're sleeping. Yes, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 no, hundred percent. I really I, inception. Oh, you're talking inception. about assimilation, dude. Dude, well, think about it. all these. Well, creepy, I don't all think that's creeps living in the metaverse. I don't know about reality, but what yeah. if this, what if the metaverse is reality? Oh my! Like Ready Player One, right? Yeah, or like yeah. Inception, because it's hard for me to believe that my conscious has been doing all of this stuff for life, and then all of a sudden it's just black, and there's no, there's no like standing up or. But it's just black. the way we're thinking. You won't feel anything. It's just over. That's but, like but, why, why is there a reason to fear death then? No, 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 no. Well, I think you but, fear but death going back, because going no one back, ever really knows. All the way like, like I love life, so I don't want to die. Because going all I love the way life. back to the yeah. dragon's comment, right? Right. You got these people that have a five thousand year old word for dragon. There's not a civilization on earth that has existed that does not believe in an afterlife of some form. Yeah. Is the, I, I, they want I, you can't, think. I can't I can't believe like there's zero part of me that can believe there's just absence. Well, and then it's just zero part. Try to. Try to think of absence. We even tried talking about it before. It's impossible. Yeah. To think about absence, because even when you think about absence, you think about black. Like it's just it's you're in a room it's dark. with every you can't see anything. But then even in your mind, you're like, I'm seeing nothing. So you're still seeing. Yeah. Isn't that craziest shit ever? Oh, yeah, bro. Because if you believe you have a soul, then you believe you don't. You're not just. Right. So. Right, right, right. That's, This is yeah. the shit I love. This have is you, what this I live right, for. This is yeah. what I love. You talk about you like, you know, having dis or, or your conversation with people that view differently. I like having conversations with like, you know, atheists or agnostic people or people that don't believe. Yeah. Right. And then because I like to go back and say. Well, you know, everybody's like, oh, I don't have faith, right? The whole concept of faith throws people for a loop. But the reality is everybody has faith. Just what is your faith in? Right. Some people just have a faith in nothing. Right. Right? So they're just like, well, my yeah, faith is still lies. believing in something. But yes, but you're putting all your eggs in one basket. Like, I'm like, listen, I'm not a gambler. But, right. You know, if I believe over here and I do what's right to think that I'm going to get right, like, if it really is nothing, my bets are hedged. If you have your, all your faith in Allegedly, nothing. Allegedly, though. But if all, your, if all your eggs are in the basket of nothingness, and heaven and hell does exist. Ooh, that's a it's tough that's a dark. Yeah, existence. but there's so many different varieties of your religious choice. Like there's yeah, but all, every there's religion four, has a, forty-seven thousand religions. Let's just say. So every religion has the same premise of a higher power. So I should say the main ones, right? They have like, the core points. The core points, right? You know, you got you know I don't know what the Hindu religion that kind of stuff, but if you take like you know Judaism, Christianity, and Muslim, right? Like mm. the, the premise of it is it's the same God. Our our variances are on how you what how, how we get there. So we as Christians believe in Jesus; he's the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Muslims don't; they believe Jesus was a prophet, and they believe obviously more of the Old Testament of the Quran of it almost works will get you to a certain level. Mm -hmm. Judaism same way. Judaism believes in obviously God as the the whole, but mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily believe Jesus himself is the Messiah. If the Messiah still hasn't come, right? And I and I, again for all the scholars out there don't hate me, but that's the simplistic version. So at the, at the core- Just a few jocks, talking yeah, ball. Yeah, but you, are, it, you are literally dropping some knowledge though right but now. at the core of it, at the core of every religion, there's a higher power, right? Mm -hmm. That you're that you're deemed to have to atone to. Even Scientology, they believe in a freaking mothership and you have to pay- Which is cool. You know, you have to pay the, with the one guy a lot of money and then you're- Yeah, sins, right. Your sins are forgiven because now you're neutral. Um, whatever that is. It's a wild deal, but definitely don't want Scientology not on, on your bad side. Like yeah. you want to keep them- No, because they'll probably murk you. Happy. Yeah, for well, sure. Mercury were just like kind of like chasing you around a little <laughs> yeah, bit, right? Make your, life, your phone call, uh, yeah. phones or something like that. Yeah, now, hold, the CIA. Well, what you're saying is, so you're saying there's there's God, and everybody has, like Judaism, Muslim, and uh, Christianity. The we're all gonna God's we're gonna put this as uh, that guy right here. Exact same, 100. percent We'll all believe. But everyone having, has faith. Just in, in those three religions, you have three different roadmaps. Which one actually leads to the God? Because uh, not all three can, right? Otherwise, we could believe in all three. Correct. Correct. And that's and that's where that's where faith comes in, right? So through through my through the Bible, there's a book called The Case for Christ, right? It's actually written by an atheist. Um, I won't spoil it for anybody who wants to go to it. He's a Chicago... Um, that one's a popular one, too, because yeah, I feel like I've heard it. He was a Chicago investigative journalist, right? And 
his wife was a Christian. He was an atheist. And he goes down this entire investigative journey. And then at the end, he has to take all the evidence that he has. And, and he's like, basically, I'm at a crossroads. You have to make a decision for or against, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with that said, it's, again, it's, you know, yes, through through my study of the Bible, through, through my belief system, what I've taught, right? I obviously, am a Christian, I believe that Christ is Messiah and that's the way we're going. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that, you know, again, I mean, the Muslim is one of the oldest religions. I, I I don't know how God's going to view, like, you know, a devout Muslim, you know, because they have, again, same God, obviously different. We we believe sins are atoned for differently. That's kind of the, right. kind of the deal. So, um, yeah, with that said, that's that's the dice everybody rolls, I guess. Right? And you were basically saying you enjoy having those conversations because ultimately, like, it's like a faith based thing. I do because I think you can find I think you can find supportive uh, you can find supportive information within like it's in the Bible because the Quran, the Old Testament, and the Torah are pretty much the same, right? My man's done his homework. Um, and they do say isn't that like ninety something percent of all yeah, relations so are basically the, new, the same. It's the, new, it's the New Testament for us that's different, right? So, there's yeah. a, so again, I I enjoy. You know, learning roadmaps and, and talk, especially talking with scholars and stuff like that, because I think you put you, that mic up just a little closer yeah, to your face. Sorry, you expand. Uh, you expand. I'm not used to having things in my mouth, like right Whoa, up in my face. Get used to it here, brother. No yeah. pause. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll do. We'll put anything anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, welcome hey, to the bus. That's why we're in a, in a warehouse on a bus. Yeah, hey, I don't, don't don't tell people where this is now. Oh, never, like, you know never. what? This one is the, like the back cave. This is nice. Without air conditioning. The airstream. We uh, got some air conditioning. Air you need us to turn it up. That would be nice. I'm a little sweaty. Can we turn up the AC back there? Or just Why yeah, or just start like breathing. No, no not up there. Yeah. I'm talking about outside there. Yeah, like open you guys windows. Have, so. You guys, yeah, yeah. you guys don't have like just someone like fanning you. Like, I wish, man. We haven't no, made that kind of money just, yet. Just we we're gonna work on that. Back there like this. No, we don't yeah. have any blowers. Yeah, no, <laughs> no blowers in the bus just yet. <laughs> we're still working on the fluffs. Uh, obviously, all super interesting, incredibly interesting ideas, and it is like, how do you figure out? I think. On Joe Rogan's podcast, he had something on there, and it was like, "Love a bro, Jogan talk." Love, it, love it, dude. Uh, yeah, but the, I never yeah. listened to it. I heard. Oh, it I think you'd really enjoy it. Yeah, you, I think you, you'd really you, enjoy this it. Is yeah. I'm, I've where, been where you're at right now, like we're I've having never, a Rogan pod right I've now. I've never listened to a podcast. Oh, really? Ooh. Until after today? Well, I'm gonna have to now. Yeah. I don't really like listening to myself talk because I'm pretty sure I'll say something stupid along the way. Yeah, but that's, that's the okay. Best part. But then I have to relive it. I'm like, ooh. Dude, we say dumb shit all the time. And people remind us all the time that dumb people, shit. And say. that is great when you go on the bird and people are like, you said this. And it's like, well, I've changed my mind now. Yeah. Like, it's that easy. Yeah. You change my mind about anything. But uh, Rogan had some guy kidding. on there and either Rogan said this or this, this gentleman said this is like uh, having us understand the idea of life in the universe is like trying to have a mouse understand a cell phone. 100%. Like you can't, we can't fully, our brains can't fully grasp the idea of what's truly around us. No. Have you ever seen, just like been on Instagram and seen somebody show you like what our solar system is and all the other solar, like it shows like, let's say where you are and then just starts zooming out. I sent you that video. Did you send me that? That's for the, the beyond the wall one. No, I, this is a different, <laughs> <laughs> this is a different one. But I have seen that one. It just, it it just zooms keeps out. going back. Like and then all of a sudden, these things you never like even... You're laying in bed, like, on a room, and they just zoom out. It's insanity. Yeah, it's nuts. And it's like, is that... Because if the space is truly infinite... Well, just look outside when you're on an airplane. And yeah. You're like... You can also see the curve on a clear day. The curve of the earth. Right? Yeah. yeah, but hey, yeah. shit. Oh, it's a flat earth right now. Because it's mirror. There's a mirror. Yeah, there's a mirror. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> fucking reflecting back at you. I don't know, dude. They, like, that's probably the, well, honestly, that's probably the one topic I, I would love to have the conversation with somebody. But at some point, I'm probably just going to be like, probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's which one? Which one? Do you think flat earth is dumber than lizard people? It's up there. It's up there because it's, 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 it's rational people telling you, like, a lizard person, I expect them to be off their rocker. Yeah. Right? I can understand that. You're talking to them for an experience. Yeah. Like, you're like, dude's got his tongue, <laughs> yeah. dude's got his tongue split yeah. and scales tattooed on him. Yeah. He made his life decision. It's not very it. good. <laughs> He's done it. There's like normal people like arguing about flat earth. And then I'm like, you're not so normal anymore. And I'm just like, like you, there's a globe and planets and they have telescopes and they look at them. Like, we're, we're the only yeah. flat planet? We're spinning 800 miles an hour east right now. Some people right say now. the government trying to control the way we're seeing everything. Government conspiracy theorists. Hey. You, maybe your grandpa didn't tell you because he was tapped the whole time. He True. realized, if I tell him, they're going to kill my whole family. Hundred, I guess, right? Imagine if you were the reason why your whole family had to die. <laughs> because he <laughs> talked him right, into right, it. Right, right, right. I'm like, oh, damn it. God, that'd be so tough. That'd, you, that'd be a tough pill to swallow yeah, before I, the trigger was pulled. Like, explain how I took off in Australia and I ended up back in L.A. 
Well, there's a whole conspiracy theory that Australia is not even a real place. Ah, it's like there is a whole conspiracy like theory. Lost. They put you up, they, 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 lost, they go in the air and they fly in circles for hours and hours and hours. And they land you somewhere, Australia, whatever, that is like that. But really, you're not very far at all from where you were. Ah, that is just, that. that is, that is another that conspiracy is. theory. We just, so it's like flight three, what was it? The Indonesian flight 386, yeah. right? There is a flight from like the 50s that took off in New York to Miami. And I'm going to butcher it, but the flight disappeared off the radar. No one could find it. And then like 20 years later in the 70s, this flight lands in Miami and all those people thought they were on a plane for two hours. Yeah, Netflix called Manifest. Yes, bro. Is I it? watched it. That's a show. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. But that's a true story. I've never seen that show. That's a that's show. You that's a it. true you story. It. Prove it. Exactly. Are you Prove serious? Yeah. Prove it. And then when there they landed, a true story about that. They landed, I promise. Google it. Please. And then when they landed, Prove the government was basically Prove trying to like kill them off or control them for experimentation. Okay, I don't know that part. <laughs> I, I just know that this shit happened. Prove it. It's it, Manifest based on a true story. You read it well. You know I'm not that good at reading. While Manifest does reference real life events, artifacts, and people, the show is not based on a true story. It is purely a work of fiction <laughs> coming from the mind of creator Jeff Rake. I, I'm, I'm standing Lord. by it, dude. I'm standing <laughs> by what I thought you said. Exactly that. Right, right, really? Right now, really? I've never seen the show. Right now, what I know. But right now, somebody out there is just like, well, the one said this, right? Right. Gospel. And that's now getting posted. And I guarantee somewhere in the metaverse, there is going to be a freaking. Time travel, like yeah. something like about time travel. Time travel you know, somebody's yeah. at a, somebody's gonna be in a cafeteria lunchroom, like veins sticking out of their neck, trying to prove what you're saying is correct. Yeah, I, I believe I, I stand by them. And going off the whole uh, uh, element of the faith and all this stuff, like the one of the human needs being certainty. Every people find certainty in like making themselves believe those knowing things. Yeah. knowing like things. Are something that we have like to they're do. Certain that that's not gonna happen. Hundred yeah. percent. Here's a, here. Okay, here are ones that are more like on the on the sure. arrow. Jerry might have to be a regular on the show. We might have to create, right. you know, we might have to create three another years, show. Dude, hopefully COVID doesn't happen again. I could mean, be your guys' as AJ Hawk. <laughs> Pop on for an hour. And we're not just, doing it in Zoom, though. You have to fucking drive here. And we're not even talking ball. We're just eight talking. Minutes, eight minutes from a new house. Do you really? Yeah. Good for you. Uh, one. Th okay. What, how do you feel about JFK? Was that an inside job by the government or the mafia? Ooh, so let's go down this road. I'm, That's a fun one, too. When you, when you played in segue, Dallas. This is a perfect segue to the NFL. So okay. You, Lamar Hunt. We're connecting JFK to the NFL. Thank God. Buckle the fuck I know up, people boys. really want to see it. Yes. I know people up, actually boys. want to talk so, ball. So if you read Lamar Hunt Jr.'s book, mm -hmm. he talks about his dad. So his dad was an avid, like, right-wing Republican pretty much, right? Hated JFK. They found a business card. The FBI, they say they, uh, they, say they obviously investigated all this. The guy who drove Lee Harvey Aldwalls, right? That's who shot him. Um, dude, the driver of him was found with Lamar Hunt Jr.'s business card in his office. He, he was he interviewed for a janitorial position at the at the Hunt business. Really, and the theory was like, why would a person for a janitor job be interviewing with the president of the company, the son of the owner of the this company, you know, Lamar Oil, whatever Hunt Industries? I don't even know what their company name is. Yeah, the chief's owner. Yeah, the old one, not the new one, Lamar Hunt. Uh, so Clark Hunt, it's not, Lamar Hunt Jr. was there when I, when I when he drafted me. Same Chiefs that cheated this past uh, Sunday sweet, Night Football game. Sweet, sweet man, I love. But it's, and it's in it's in their own book, so they obviously. But yeah, the 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 guy who drove the shooter of JFK was found with his business card in his pocket, and his dad, Lamar, uh, not his Lamar Hunt Senior, um, uh, Mr. Lamar Hunt, Mr. Hunt. Mr. No, his dad, his, Mr. Hunt. his dad, Mr. Hunt, because Lamar Hunt. Lamar Hunt Junior is not. Lamar Hunt was the owner of the Chiefs. Lamar Hunt Jr. is still alive. Sorry, I corrected myself. That's the son. But um, but yeah, so Lamar Hunt's business card was found in this dude's deal. And it talks about how his dad had like two separate families, right? Like he, they didn't know about it. Like he yeah. had on two separate sides Classic. of Dallas, right? But he was far, obviously Classic. Classic. JFK all that. Series. That's a limited series. Through. But JFK's assassination was investigated through the potential connection of the Hunt family, which is in the, you know, obviously NFL owner. They own the Chiefs. They own the Chiefs. Which cheated last night. Yeah, I didn't watch the game. What happened? I saw, I saw the Times were smoking it's, them. It's and not that, that part's not important. I really want to dive into this JFK thing. Yes. Obviously, you played in Dallas at, at some point in your career. Did you ever go down to where JFK, the, buddy, they had, literally have X's where the Dude, first so shot sick. was, the second shot was, and there's conspiracy theorists all over the place. And then there's the the window. building with the window still cracked the way it was when he was shot. It is a wild deal. Well, Not only that, 
have you heard about the similarities between Lee Harvey Oswald and uh, John Wilkes Booth? That's the guy who shot Abraham Lincoln, right? Yes. Yes. Have you heard? Like, it's like insanely similar situations. And, insanely. And they, so they they did an episode on it too. Like the, the, how fast Gerald Ford, it was Gerald Ford, I believe. What, no, it was the Johnson. I'm sorry. Johnson got, uh, Johnson was the vice president, correct? I Google that. I don't listen. I'm, um, what year? We'll do the internet. Like, what was it 54, 60 something? Like, the like, vice president of JFK. Yeah. Um, anyways, how fast he was, they're like, it was, yeah, Lyndon B. Johnson. Like, he was like, Air Force Two was there, and they're like, that shouldn't have happened because they should never have been in the same spot at the same time. But Air Force Two was there. He was in, immediately like sworn into office, like, before he was even confirmed that he was dead. No way. Yeah, there's all sorts of, of weird. It's so where do you stand? A, where do you stand on JFK? Was it an inside job? Shady as hell. That's all I'm going to say. I don't, I don't think it was random. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I am not a conspiracy theorist by far, like, usually, right? But I do think I'm also not like a big coincidence guy. Yeah. Like there's too much shady crap that you can, you can piece together like with real evidence to say that JFK, likely not a random event. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm buying that stock. Yeah. I mean, just like I mean, there's the, a grassy knoll situation too with the mafia. And I, I just don't understand the point. Like, again, I have to go back and, and and read up on so I you know read up on it. But I don't, I don't necessarily what the benefit would have been though to take him out. But I mean, I don't know. I'm just basically like shit, you know he was probably doing something on the inside we didn't know about yeah. for sure. And I think that's another thing that goes back that kind of circles us power all the way back to the COVID swing. thing or just in general like us the Gen Pop. We sit here and we pretend like we have all the answers. No, we, we know nothing. we have no idea what's going on in the government. We no. have no we have no clue. I mean, we have there's clues. There's and, clues, but we have, we truly have no idea what's truly going there's on. There's clues. There's movies. There's YouTube. But this is what I like. And then people yeah, get I on, understand that people get on whatever side they're on, and then they start yelling really loud. Yeah, and they're like, "Don't like don't follow the herd or some crap like yeah. that." Whatever they're saying, and it's like you're just getting fed. You're getting fed right wing information. This idiot's getting fed left wing information. Right. Right. And then, like, the majority of us are just too busy working trying to make a dollar, you know, to, to care. We're just like, what's, why, why do all the squeaky wheels get the grease? Yeah. But it just, oh, it drives me nuts when people are like, nope, that's it. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. I can't remember when I was talking to something and I asked him, I was like, where did you get that information? Oh, it's right here on like freaking BKXT News. You don't have BKXT. I'm like, yeah. what the f is that? It was like some yeah. micro site. Yeah, it's tough. Any, dude. any site you have to log on with like a backslash, an abbreviated word, right. and it's like dot .net. Like it's not a real yeah. Site. Dot, hey, dot truth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like if you if, it, if the title says this is the truth, it's probably a lie. Yeah, it's got to be a tough deal. <laughs> it's got to be a tough deal for us all to figure that whole thing. Well, yeah, we're all just getting fed crappy information, and the information stream, no one knows it's infinite. Right, what? that's why you gotta have a fluid. That's why you just gotta have a fluid mind, and not take life so seriously. Exactly, hundred exactly. percent. Enjoy the ride, man. Have fun with everybody around you. Get a, get on board, baby. Yeah, yeah for a really, positive vibes podcast. If you, got hit, if you got hit by a bus tomorrow, probably pretty pissed off that you were down at like the school board screaming and like threatening doctors and probably. stuff. You know? yeah. I mean, like, probably. Probably. I mean, like, better ways to waste your last breath. Yeah, for sure. But you know, people are just addicted to problems. I think people are addicted to drama. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's just not yeah, exactly. oh, drama yeah. equals problem. Yeah, yeah, true. And a lot of people like to insert themselves in other people. Yeah, and problems help people like relate to whoever's like in their tribe just so they feel like some sort of significance. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. That's how I feel. Or they right. want to be a fixer. Everybody thinks they're a fixer. Right. Like, oh, they're going to fix everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got the answer for that. You dive into some ball. <laughs> You want, Five minutes. Can I talk about, what, what do you, you want? talk about Mormons real quick? You want to yeah. take the Mormons? I'm interested I in that, you, bro. Me, you intrigued me because I went to okay. school with a bunch of Mormons. Okay. Yeah. So and I, everybody who was listening is probably like, fuck, they got off the, they got off the subject. Okay, so yes. I'll, I'll be quick. So uh, this kid, he went to, I don't know if he, I think. Name he, and names. Yeah, he went to BYU. Yeah, you're, you're he was a rookie last year on the time. Blast, bro. He's the yeah. leader. <laughs> he, he, he's on there. And he was, he, he's a Mormon kid. Like, by the way, if you meet a Mormon person, are they not the nicest people you've ever met in your life? Ever. They're so I incredibly have nice. Mormon friends. They give you up to something vibes. Because if you're going to be that nice, you up to something, That's you know? I, mean. I have a problem. I can't trust anybody that doesn't have vices. Got to have a vice. Got to have a vice. So this, this individual does not have any vices. Yeah. And there's another kid in our room. Yeah, we know. Who's Christian, hardcore, boom. And the most fun thing is you get a five-minute break in meetings and you just watch them go at it. Yeah. You get your popcorn out and you're just enjoying it. And then once it starts to slow down, you kind of pepper something in there. Oh, for to sure. See if it keeps going. Yeah. Now, I, um, I was in Tampa Bay. We were practicing, uh, practicing against the Buccaneers. And I pulled, and I was like, hey, give me the rundown on being a Mormon. And basically, 
I'm going to butcher it. So if you are Mormon out there, I'm so sorry. But basically, there's layers to heaven. Yes. It's like tiramisu. Yep. And obviously, the one, the top notch dog is what you want to be. Yeah. Like you want to be in that one. If it's a space shuttle, stri- that used to I don't be strictly know. for the rich white people. I allegedly. I, no, I, I, oh, okay, so that, just for the white that, guys, but they've changed that along with the, and, and the multiple they, wives. They won't, they won't claim that, but yeah. So if, if you look at the hierarchy calendar, yeah, it's just a bunch of old yeah white dudes. I mean, yeah, but the, everyone yeah, back, everyone back has their in thing. The day, it was like, yeah, if you were a, a person of color, you couldn't get into the highest levels of heaven in Mormon religion. That's a tough deal. That's yeah. a, that's a tough swing for the Mormon religion. But there's a, like you know the Catholics have their priest boy thing going on. I think the Christians were big on that. Uh, wild actually, shot at the Catholics. No, right no, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm saying the Christians actually, have the cool kids actually, club all of gays. There, there was actually more abuse in the Mormon church. Okay, got, I'm yeah. not doing this with you. I'm, 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 I am. This, no, sorry. These conversations. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I overstepped. I'm sorry. Overstepped. I'm so outside my zone right now. I feel like the water's not as deep as what's happening in your head right now. I really don't. I'm really not thinking about him. I'm thinking about who's listening. I Go know like, you are. Tell him, Jared. <laughs> tell him, no, no my, my point is... We're in the South, dude. We're in the is, South. My, I'm doing my best. My point is, when you got certain things, there's... there's Like you said, my whole point is when people seem too perfect up front, right. they're usually hiding some crap. Continue. I don't disagree Sorry, with that continue. statement. Continue. Explain, so, the, okay, explain so, the elevator. So there's, yeah. so there's levels. Obviously, the top one is spaceship just for white people. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, so what happens oh, when you die? Go back to the picture. He just had it pulled up. Go back to the hierarchy picture. Of all the founders. I just saw it up there. Oh, back again. Oh, may keep going. There was it had the big imagery of the I think he's just going back and forth with the two <laughs> the things. Names. He's literally gone bing, 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 bing. Yeah, a lot of pale skin. All it. right, let's look at it. <laughs> look hey, that's a tough deal. <laughs> hey. I didn't make this up. I'm not Mormon. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't hurt Are me. Are those the levels? No, those aren't the levels. <laughs> <laughs> like, are those the people who are officially in? Yeah, right I think those are the people that are officially in. So when you die, if you don't believe, if you're like, if you're like me who's not Mormon, you go into purgatory. It's like a waiting room. Yes. And you can only leave purgatory once you believe there's really no hell. Like Call of Duty. The bottom floor is purgatory. So I asked him, I was like, what, what is the first level? And he's like, it's like earth, but a little bit better. Yeah. And I go, that's perfect because I love earth. I will literally, I might be Mormon now because all you have to do is once you die, you go into, you go into this waiting room. Some reception at the desk is like, hey, they'll see you when you believe. Fill out this paperwork. But the issue is, as soon as I as soon as I die, gunshot, boom, I'm gone. I wake up. I'm in a waiting room. I am now sitting here with a lady going, hey, once you believe, you can leave. What is it, like a DMV waiting just, room? No, I, well, no. Are you I, sure? Do you have your insurance card, sir? <laughs> and you forgot. Yeah, and you forgot all your shit. Fuck. You literally, once you get into purgatory, you've already, they've proven. So there's no, now you believe in what's real. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? So literally, being Mormon is a foolproof plan to getting to heaven. Yeah. Foolproof. What's level you two? You can do all the... I don't know. I didn't go that far. I was really just focused on level one. Okay, so now, I know I can get there. So I've been to a, I've been to a, a Mormon so wedding. Like all there. So I've been to a Mormon wedding. Almost. And I've been to a Mormon, uh, um, like, baptism. And uh, so I went to a Mormon wedding. And you're not allowed to go to the temple, right? So this is, this is fact, too. Oh, buddy, I got Here's something for you. So women, women can't get to the levels of heaven like that their husbands can mm-hmm. unless they get called by their chosen name, um, which I like to assume it's like like an alien name. Like, yeah. People. Do they know what they're... No, so they're that, when you, that's why they get married. You have to be cleansed or whatever, and then you can get into the temple, and only certain people can go into the temple during the marriage ceremony because that's where, I guess, the wife gets her chosen name. Or whatnot, and then that'll bring you that. That's a level that they they so can't you're trying get, to make it to the temple. They can't get to the next level of heaven unless like they get called by their for their husband's chosen name. And again, probably getting canceled for this um, because well, I learned this years ago. But my my favorite argument with Mormons are is I ask people, I go, oh, when was your religion founded? And they're like, oh, usually like you know, 1796 by Joseph Smith or Brigham Young, whatever it yeah. is. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. Mine's just the beginning. I'm sorry, but if you haven't established, and, and I have good friends that are Mormon, I've had this conversation with them. Right. If your religion has an established date. If the starter has a social security number. It's probably not on par with what if you're saying some other religions are. Right? I'm all for it. Yeah, that's pretty far back for me. Because we could start one kind of. Yeah, well, I mean, I a lot mean, of people start them. I mean, I mean, the tax breaks. But no, I just some of the, some of the, some of the smartest <laughs> people I know. Tax breaks are starting. With the we got to do something. The kind of smartest people I know are Mormon. And I just, I, I. I just shake my head sometimes, and because you got the Book of Mormon mm. and the Bible, yeah. So you, I mean, you can't, you can't have. You can't well, Joseph both. Smith found that Book of Mormon. Yes, Joseph Smith. And at was one a point, horse. I'm pretty sure there was. Well, yeah, but listen, and he I, wasn't I, a horse. The lowest 
Oh, low no, back in the day. That's some Arthur Smith type stuff, RP. <laughs> um, there is, so when you're talking about a temple, there's like like things you have to go through in the temple of Mormonism to like get in. There's actually secret handshakes. Yes. I went as far as to learn one of those secret handshakes. So he, if honestly, do you do if, it? If, if that guy I found, forgot it, but I, I did do this. If found out, he wouldn't be allowed in the temple. Oh, that I'm not going to If who found the out? Story. Like if the, if the temple. Those, the chart of the guys on there? Yeah. If they found out? Like, yeah. Like, I, you can't fucking no, go. That's no point. Like, so first of all, too. So um, I didn't find out through him. I found, oh. out, I found out through somebody else. Oh, okay. But yeah. yeah I was super dude, secret. When we, were in, when we were in Tampa, I went up to him and I did the handshake to him. And he he's like big smiley guy. He's like, eh, don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. He was like legitimately like, okay. don't ever do that again. I was like. To the point where I was like, I am so sorry. I obviously found an envelope and I pushed it too well, much. My point to that being that there is proof that it's cultish. Well, hold on. I, I mean, mean it, you're not far off there. That's a, I, I, I like that. I like that. It's like, it's like a fraternity. Like it's like a fraternity. Or you throw up a Q, <laughs> hey, you throw up a Q dog sign if you're not a Q I dog. I did that too. You you was my, my you get get me. Crap kicked out of you. My know. point is, it's a club then because if you're going to fight somebody over a handshake into your club, mm. like, Religion is supposed to be all encompassing, all welcoming. So you can't fight me because I learned your handshake. That's not cool. That means you're hiding some crap. I got a question. I got to get in that temple. I got a question. <laughs> I got to get in that motherfucker. The Mormon stuff, I'm not as like privy to all of this. Are we going to get killed for this conversation? I'm kind of nervous. You kind of taking a step. Literally, you're our grave digger right now. It's, I feel like you just keep taking a step deeper. opinion by Jared Allen on yeah, Mormonism. Jared Allen, no, these are all his opinions. I, 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 listen, separate I, I, myself. Taylor, too. He, he got some hey, stuff going whoa, on. Whoa, dude. Oh, three boys. Whoa, whoa, but whoa. No, it, but again, it's fascinating because I'm like, I just have, we just have a church. Like you, anybody going to our church and do the church. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't think, yeah. What's with the secret temple. Can we put, and again, can we pull the picture back up? Can we pull the picture back up and highlight this. That looks more like a stockbroker's, like a banking system than yeah. it does a, uh, an all encompassing. A lot of bald heads on there. Gee, a, a lot, lot of bald, bald heads. A lot of bald heads. A lot of bald heads. I feel like I can find my CPA right there. Not necessarily. <laughs> is, you know, that not necessarily my bad. pastor. Listen. This has been fun. <laughs> this has been a blast. We got, we got a chance. We got to get. Once Will brought up death, I was like, we really should get the fuck out of here. By the way, on eighth, uh, have you been on eighth, eighth Avenue, the Scientology building? Have you seen the Scientology building? No, I'm learning. On eighth, no. Go in there Monday through Friday. There's free personality tests. Wow. Go check it out sometime. And what free personality tests? Yeah. I mean, why Ron? Does anybody know what on the one on hills with the mink? Is it Minka? Micah? What's that temple all about down there? Come on, Bethel. No, not, not Old Hickory. The one on Old Hickory and uh, on Hillsboro on the corner of Old Hillsboro and Old Hickory. It's or I think it's on that. Or it was like the like you're going to Franklin. Oh, you're going to Leapers Fork. M I C H A. Like yeah, if you're going uh, south on Hillsboro, right? No, 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 no it's past it. Past that, all the way down, right on old on Old Hickory and Hillsboro. There's that like M I C H A Micah Temple or something. I don't know about that. I know Bethel. There's a lot of people up in arms about Bethel. Which is on Old Hickory, yeah, I know right that, before Granny White. Yeah, I lived I lived down the street from there. I've, I've yeah. never gone in that one, but yeah, I've no. Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was just like a Baptist church, isn't it? Well, I, I don't know. I just know that I used to live off Mary Helen and Granny White, which was like right next to Granny White Market, and uh, there would always be these big signs like "Stop Bethel" and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, oh whoa. yeah, they were they were trying to no, they were trying to build out of that. They were yeah. trying to do some light show or something like that. It was yeah, it was, oh, okay. it was nothing about the church. All right, all right, uh, that's a Christian based church. Um, oh, so and, you're going to protect them. No, you, just, you, no, 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 no. I, I, listen, I've never been in there. I know the World Outreach Church. No, yeah, world, out, world, world Outreach, I think, right? Yeah, okay. Um, My man is educated. But uh, no, I will say this to all the, all the more listeners. Like, I have, you're just, just half joking, but um, I got a lot of good friends that are <laughs> But again. Hey, I love uh, how we're all trying to tie up loose ends no, no, here. Listen, I'm, just, I'm next. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll go next. There's listen, a lot of good I people actually, in the I Mormon actually, religion. A lot, a lot of good, good people. people. Love these people. A lot of good I, was say, I, just, I was actually going to say, I wish someone would explain this to me. Yeah. So when I was in college, I went to school with a bunch of missionaries, right? Mm-hmm. And they came, they came back and they can play football till they're 30 because uh, you get, you know, an exemption. You're going to kill your NFL career. Uh, yes, for <laughs> sure. But you would, they weren't allowed to drink Pepsi on their missions trips or go in the water. It was they're sponsored by Coke. Well... Then, yeah, then they went and bought like oh, 50, 50, 50, I think they ended up buying fifty one percent of Pepsi, so then they could drink Pepsi. Product. You're lying. No, hundred percent. It's true. Um, and then I was told by a person. You did you say hundred percent? It's true. Yeah, dude. I, no, the Mormon this church. Is the guy I can fucking. The Mormon hang out church. With, the Mormon church. The Mormon. <laughs> I can't watch TV, but you guys are definitely <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. out. The Mormon church at some point owned like 
a large chunk, I believe it was in Pepsi. Um, again, verify me if I'm wrong. I apologize. But I go ahead and put out what's your uh, social I was, media. I was, I'm 100 percent right. Go ahead and verify me if I'm wrong. I do apologize if <laughs> I am. You know, I, uh, um, but no, I was straight up told this out of the horse's mouth of a return missionary that said they weren't allowed to go in the water, like why they're on their mission trips. I was like, why couldn't you go in the water? They were like, I don't know. They said because in their belief or whatever outside the United States or whatever it was that the devil controlled the water, so they weren't allowed to go into the water. Mm. Interesting. Again, mm. the levels, levels. There's levels. 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 Tiramisu. I get, listen, I like to go them. next. Um, I'm sorry, Mormonism. I just am saying shit that I've heard. I really don't know. Hold on. Here's what you got to ask yourself. I don't know. Is Mormonism a real word? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, Mormonism. It's Mormonism? Okay, I just didn't know if we were just putting it. By the way, the hey, did you notice this? I did. I saw, I saw you the saw the little in the back? The in the back? You didn't say nothing, boss. Yeah. I didn't know I you had a hat on the whole time. Are you going to mullet? I'm going to mullet. situates it. I decided about a week ago. Went to Allen. Shame me now. I see you didn't form. give you a, you didn't let him, you didn't let him give you a fade though. I don't want to fade. You gotta fade that thing up right here a little well, bit. I, I don't want to do that. I'm telling you. What I'm do you telling mean telling you, me? That's, that's the next move. I'll do it next time just to fucking do it. But I don't like it real tight on the sides. I like to have a little bit of something here. Yeah, a little play. You might like yeah. what you see. The wings, you never know. I, saw, you, you, I do you love. Seem like you faded yours on the side before. I've, I've, had, had, I've, had, I've had it tight. I've had a low. Sometimes you just got to let the, the racing stripes in there. Yeah, sometimes you got to let the flow go. Yeah. I get it. Listen, Mormons. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, let's go to Paul. Let's go to Paul, boys. We interrupt this episode to bring you the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is an ultra slim minimalist wallet. And I'm literally, I just found out. Blas, you have the Ridge Wallet. Yeah, I have the Ridge Wallet keychain yeah, for anybody bro, who. Professional quick. <clears throat> for anybody. You know, I got the, uh, I got the keychain. How is the keychain? Because it says the keychain secures anywhere from two to six keys. It organizes your keys. Is that. Are you in love with the Ridge Wallet, brother? Come on now. We yeah, got I'm something definitely product. in love with it. It holds all my keys. I've got, I got my house key. I got my uh, my key to the bus. It organizes them pretty well. It's pretty compact. And it you know, it doesn't make any weird noises. You know, those annoying Does keys. Does it fit well in your pocket? It fits incredible in my pocket. What color did you get? Did you do the carbon fiber or the burnt titanium? What'd you do? I got the black. And I'll show the camera right here. Mm. Black Ridge Wallet. I love that, That's brother. That's outstanding. The Ridge Wallet, The we just talked about the keychain that Bloss has. The Ridge Wallet is, a, is an ultra minimalist wallet. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There are over 30 colors and styles, including the carbon fiber and burnt titanium, and clearly black that Blossy has. Mm -hmm. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. That's real. Get the best offer at ridge.com forward slash bussin and save 40% through December 22nd. Guys, this isn't 10%. This isn't 15%. This isn't 20 We're talking 40% off up until December 22nd. Buy this for your homie out there that know that you know he needs a wallet. He needs something new. Not that fat stack wallet where he's going to throw his lumbar out. You need that minimalist wallet, and it's the Ridge wallet. Ridge.com forward slash bussin. Uh, save 40%. Back to the episode. I have a question. I hope people. I hope people realize this is pure comedy because you can really say whatever. Oh, you brother, want we, have a, we, have a, we have a great. We have a great. Audience. We have an outstanding yeah, yeah, audience. We are Our audiences. You're a comedian. All three of us are comedians. Yeah, want. we're. This is. We're comedy. We're I comics. Got, I got. I got a, com a comedy card in my my wallet. So I'm there good. you go. You're part I did of five the five minutes of stand up. Like well, I'm a comedian. Yeah, I was with him that day. Yeah, I, I count. Yeah. We did a live show. We're comedians. We did a live show at Zany's. Yeah. We're sold out. And we're, we're done. Nice. I like it. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Anyway, let's go to football. Uh, um, at a minute. Oh, sorry. An hour and eight minutes. Um, I have a question. Go, go ahead, Will. How have you been feeling about this this new uh, roughing the passer? All these roughing the passer penalties. Well, yeah, I mean, we're just as long as we're going down the path of being brutally honest and defending everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, it, dude, it's this, it's the stupidest thing on the face of the earth. It really is. Um, like <laughs> again. I just don't understand. Like, they make the most money. They should assume the most risk, in my opinion. The quarterback should assume the most risk. You make the most money. That's a strong start. I'm telling you. The NFL wants to protect it. I get it. But don't, but come out and just be honest about it. Don't say you're protecting it because of player safety, because it's not players' safety. It's mm -hmm. player singular safety. You're protecting quarterbacks. That's all you're doing. Um, and it, it, I think it changes the outcome of games when, from a defensive standpoint, you can't rattle a guy, right? I, I think anything malicious needs to be taken out, right? And that, you want to talk about player safety, take away, you know, intent, you know, inside out or outside in uh, low blocks, right? And take away an intent, like even if a guard's pulling and, and you know, we just the knife knees of guards that were pulling, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
crackbacks. I get all that, right? Take take that the militias out, but you take like the the Jones play. You take the there's so many examples of guys making great plays, and then you're getting punished for it. Or you take you look at um, I've, I've used the tackle on Tom Brady a few weeks ago at the Atlanta game. Come it was on, just dude. the most you insane. Look at, and now they're saying like, I mean, you got pads on, right? So how are you supposed to be running full speed, tackle somebody, be like, oh, let me gently lay you down. Like, right. Sorry, I was never in that control of my body. I'm not that good of an athlete. Um, so I just I just think you you hinder the tactics of the game, right? Flashing in front of a quarterback. And, and you you know it. Like, like, the more you try to, like, we try to be in contact with the quarterback all the time. I'm bumping them on the way back. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to them. I'm telling you, I'm letting them know, like, we're coming. We're going to be around them. Because if I can get you to chicken wing a ball or, you know, think you're going to get your hand hit on a helmet or, you know, if I can... You know, look at the last play um, of the Green Bay uh, Commanders game a few weeks back, right? He steps in there and makes that throw to the side on the out with a D lineman trying to, like, chicken wing him in his chest. What if that D lineman would have ran through his neck, you know? Yeah. Put his helmet right underneath his chin or had his arm up, not worrying about accidentally tapping him on the face mask in 15 yards. Maybe that arm gets pulled back. Maybe that outcome is different. So, I, I don't know. I, I just think, like... You know, malicious hits should go away, but things that happen in the act of play, you know, by by throwing a flag on how somebody puts somebody on the ground, I mean, that's that's ridiculous. So you think falling your entire body weight on a quarterback is fine? Hundred percent. Okay, the rules are uh, pretty ass backwards because if you're in the pocket, you can't go low on the quarterback. As soon as the quarterback breaks the pocket, the smartest move is to go low because if you go high, you can get a roughing the pass. Hundred percent. It's a it's a backwards deal. And even on the one with uh, Brady again, that dude, it, it was the most. He cowboy tackled him and just yeah. rolled him over his body. Yeah. But he was saying he threw him too hard to the ground. And yeah, which, you know what which I'm saying? Is, like that's why it's basically like a rat tackle. He's doing everything right in the situation. It's a but being like, I'm not gonna go on top of him, I'm not gonna be up, up top. He's around his waist and going like this and doesn't even like whiplash him. No, as soon as he knew he was going down, he let him go. Well, football yeah. didn't become popular because of the dancing in the end zone. You know what I mean? Like it became popular because it was a violent sport. Very violent. And people like watching grown men collision right. and and you know and and see the athleticism amongst that violence, right? So to take that away or try to enact that again, you can the if he if he tackled the running back like that, right? If he tackled the running back like that, totally fine. That's fine. But because sure, it's sure. a quarterback. So you're saying the quarterback's a bigger wuss than everybody else, right? You're saying, I mean, that's that's my point of it. It's it's absolutely stupid. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it it affects the outcome of a game. You're penalizing a guy for winning. You're penalizing a guy for tackling somebody how he's and he's already adjusted, right? He could have slammed him. He rolled him over. That right there is egregious. Like Tom Brady should try to kick him. Look at that. He should have thrown a flag on him for kicking him. They should test the air on the ball. <laughs> oh shit! Tom's taking strays. Yeah, I love it. That is hilarious. The, the if thing, you, if you pancake me, right? If you were to dump a defensive end, which happened in 2016? I don't have to watch the tape on that one. <laughs> Let's review that. Let's review that, please. 2016, it probably happened because I didn't play in 26. 2015. Yeah. Is it 2015? Um, can we throw the review flag on that? Yeah. I'm saying if if you get dumped right by an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman. They're not calling that. If I blow my shoulder out because right. what's happened to me, I, I I got landed on by somebody, blew my AC joint out in like 08, right? And I can't even remember what game it was. And that's not a it's not a penalty. So why is it that if a running back or a quarterback gets flung to the ground, all of a sudden it's 15 yards? Like and the statistics that show like if you get a, a you know penalty within a drive that continues to a first, like most of the time it leads to a touchdown. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're generally affecting the, the score, and that's what's ridiculous. Yeah, I was thinking about this last night when the Titans were playing uh, the Chiefs. There were so many flags thrown on both teams. I think it was equal at the end. But uh, it seems like every year when you sit in team meetings, they always have refs come in to practice, and they say, hey, these are the new rules. This is what the point of emphasis, emphasis is. And it's always like, it's their idea of trying to make the game better and safer, but it's like there's so much more to worry about. Now you're like thinking about too much shit yeah. when you're trying to play the game. Well, they want to also, make more scoring. They, they have these stupid Offense. ideas in the uniform too. Like who gives a shit how you wear your uniform? <laughs> the, the big thing this year was you have to have your knee pads all over your knees. It's like who fucking cares? I want to see the stat that says that little thin piece of foam. Yeah, good luck, Paul. Good luck. I'll, I'll tell you now. <laughs> I'll let you know. Hey, if you would have had your uh, knee pad properly. <laughs> yeah, it probably would have worked out just right, fine. Right. It definitely wasn't. It was definitely up here. But it's just, it's just frustrating because it seems like they do these ticky-tacky things to make it seem like safety is a priority 
when the, you can do other things for safety, the helmets have gotten a whole lot better from, from when you started playing to the end of your career, you could see the helmets getting better. I rocked the original Rydell the whole time. That I saw the one, I wore the same one and I, it was, it was a badass helmet, the but they helmet discontinued it in like, I think 16 or yeah, 17. The problem is they came out with a concussion proof helmet. And then you take these dudes that are running, like you got linebackers running, you know, sub four fours these days, right? Low, low four fours. And you're telling this guy he has a concussion proof helmet. And so he's going to lead with his head and just, Right. You know, he's going to destroy himself. Yeah, that's, it's just fucking, it, the whole thing is a little frustrating. It seems like some of the, the pageantry of the game is being taken away. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I, again, yeah, I think it just, and they don't, I don't think they realize that it, there's, there's strategical things about everything, right? It's the same way, you know, <laughs> you guys used to be able to motion a tight end, you know, from the outside. Oh, yeah. And then at the snap. And get ear holed as I'm in right. full pass rush mode. That happened like two, three times yesterday. And and guess what? They still allow that to happen. That's brutal. Was it Vanden Bosch? I think the Texans did it against you guys. Vanden Bosch gets flown across, takes out a D tackle's knee. And again, that's okay. But again, I'm like, all right, let it ride because that's a heck of a way to, you know, deter a defensive end from. <laughs> you, Coming you off, the guy in, I definitely got to, I got to recognize that. Right. Now. So, I mean, again, at what point is it like? Well, a chip block. I mean, think about it. If you haven't taken a chip block to the rib cage, it doesn't feel good. You're, you know, your liver. You're like, gee, many crickets. How am I not defense? I'm engaged with somebody else, and you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna attack that way. So, I mean, it's so you go down that road, and I think it's just, it's ridiculous. They need to. Everybody needs to assume the risk. Everybody's making a truckload of money. We all signed the dotted line on the contract. Nobody goes into the NFL or plays football with this idea that they're never going to get hurt. And if they do, they're full of it. They're liars. And every single one of them, Tua, you know what? That was the big, you know, thing. That was I a big. Guarantee that was you, if to you watch. told him before he signed a hundred million dollar contract, you're going to get your head snapped off the turf. You're going to miss a couple games with a concussion. You still want to do this? He would say yes every single time. You're not, I mean, you're not, you're not turning down that kind of money. You're not turning down that kind of passion. And, and again, he probably told the guys he was good to go back. I'm not saying you don't need to look out for people. You know, you got to remove people from themselves sometimes. You I absolutely that. have to do that. That's definitely so, a thing. But, but at the same time, the assumed risk is there. And you just, you're, you're, you diminish the product, in my opinion, the more you try to oversight it, oversight it, oversight Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they get to the point to where they neuter a little too much. Just because, again, you assume the risk going in. I understand taking out some of, like, the cut blocks, the knifing guys out, like, going low on quarterback. Like, you're trying to make it to save it, like, as safe as you can. But, again, it's, like, part of that that gladiator violence that you— Yes. You were, like— people pay for. You were, like, into. 100%. Like, growing up, you, like, love seeing that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, you love Will seeing— Will and I talk about this all the time. Like, when you're younger, you're in high school, in college, even your first couple of years in the league, like— you think to yourself, if I die out here today, what a way to go. What a way to go out. What a dream about it. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna like catch a one handed catch, get hit on the knee, crack my neck, and just be laying there. The but, the, but, but you caught. But, but you yeah, caught it. Got yeah. It. It's just fucking. You need a movie, Jerry Maguire. Yeah. I mean, come on. Right, 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 right. What do you say? He's like, just, just let me take it in. Take it in. <laughs> just take it in. Show me the it, money. It really is like uh, <laughs> this, this idea we have, like you get brainwashed in football. Like you legit. 100%. Go in there and you're like, I'm willing to die for the University of Michigan or Nebraska. Yeah, or I mean, Idaho State. College football. I mean, oh, I mean, not so much today with the transfer portal. Now, it is, that is yeah, way different. We missed that. Like, yeah, the transfer, when even when Will and I played, it's like, you'd have to miss a year, sit out a year. Like, there was a whole bunch of different hoops you'd have to jump through. Oh, yeah. And then you couldn't you couldn't go accept money if you didn't get your release. And then you had to, yeah, there's now, it's like, just the Ferris wheel of the... What was, what was your recruiting nightmare. process like in, in high school? Oh, it was good. I... <clears throat> I decided to uh, play a prank and, um, well, not me, but I, I, I was a part of it. The football team, the seniors on the football team, excuse me, uh, um, COVID. COVID. Yeah, can't, can't clear your throat no more. And now everybody, we just made fun of you laughing like at me. Your voice like, anyway, you sound the exact yeah, same. Like, you sound like you got to clear like, your throat the entire time. You got COVID for making fun of people. What a, what a jerk he is. Um, but no, it, it was, my recruiting process was strong until we decided to uh, steal all the yearbooks at the school. And by steal, borrow them because we thought it was funny. Um, the school did not think it was funny when, you know, a bunch of people that paid for their yearbooks didn't get their yearbooks. How'd you steal the yearbooks? Uh, we took them. Yeah. Where? Oh, was in a storage room? No, no, no. So, like, we knew everybody in the yearbook committee. So, the entire football team and, like, the senior pranks, we went and, uh, yeah, we took the boxes. And then, like, I had, like, three in my car. And, yeah. you know, I sold them to a couple people at a discounted price. 
Opportunity. I saw opportunity. You saw opportunity, man. <laughs> opportunity. Uh, uh, you were young. Listen. So my, they didn't really like me at that school. Anyways, I was on, I was on an, inter, an inter-district transfer, and um, I was a little bit of a hellion as a, as a kid. And so um, I, I took the fall because, you know, snitches get stitches. I refused to rat on anybody. What a guy. And uh, I took the fall. They kicked me out of school. <laughs> Perfect recruit for a Hell's Angel. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> and we're right back at the beginning. We're right back at the beginning. Um, and, and, now you, and now you know why I became a Christian, right? I got recruited one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. One way or the other. Then you, um, go to, you go to Idaho. Probably, at that time, I probably would have been open to Mormonism. Um, <laughs> so, were you getting recruited by like big? Were you getting recruited yeah, by big I, schools? I and then the University of Washington. I thought I was going to UW. I was like playing in the Pac-10. That's all I ever thought. Right? Yeah. Um, ended up at Idaho State, um, and they were beating down my door every day. Like Coach Ray was like, like every week was there. Um, so, but yeah, that's uh, that's how mine got. Then I went to Los Gatos, and then um, I'll never forget. Like I committed to ISU, went there. Um, and I came back one time and I went into my coach's office and I saw my box of like my all my senior film was still in his office. He never mm. sent it out. <laughs> I was like, no geez. shit. I got I got a call from Stanford. Um, they came to practice to view our tight end. He had like a four point eight GPA or something like that. Uh, I got a call from a random number. I was at a you know high school volleyball game or something on a Friday, so acting like a real idiot. And I was like, yeah, hello. The guy's like, this is a coach from Stanford. And he's like, you know, we watched your practice today. We'd love, we know you know Greg Schindler. We'd love you to come up and take a visit. This then there. He's like. What'd you get on your GP on your on your SATs? I was like, nine sixty. Yeah. And he was like, you plan on taking them again? I was like, he was like, nope. He was like, all right, well, talk to you later. No <laughs> doubt. Just, just, Stanford's uh, dude. So I had a two point seven GPA uh, at the end of my senior year. That's how I got. So, yeah. how I got in that motherfucker. But like when I was like going through that process, Stanford Jim Harbaugh came to my school. They were recruiting this kid, this DN Craig Rowe, and they're like, hey, we love your film. Like they looked at my transcript. They literally laughed. <laughs> Yeah. And they said, hey, there's no chance. No, yes. And they so just so left. Yeah, they just we left. Get, we get one, uh, we get one uh, scholarship a year like that, we get to, that we get to push through. Yeah. It's like, and we always use that on a skilled position. And yeah. I was like, okay. Well, I was like, look, if you stay, it wasn't done. on my yeah. list. Idaho State wasn't on my list either, but I ended up there. Idaho State, the Bengals, baby. The Bengals. Then I actually, so my sophomore year, I was going to transfer. Our coach, Uparessa, was our offensive coordinator, and he transferred. He went to uh, USC. And he called me. He's like, hey, we got a scholarship. Your name on it if you want it, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm in. So I go to get my release, and my coach was like, nope. And see, no transfer portal. Right. So he's like, you got to stick it out. I don't stay. Which I'm glad I did because I, you know, I hadn't accomplished all the goals I wanted to there anyways. But uh, What year was that for you? Goodness. So I graduated 2000. So it was 2002. Going to that 2002 season, I was trying to transfer to SC. And I was like... Like, no, sir. <laughs> like, dang, all right, coach. So you end up getting drafted by Kansas City in the fourth round? Fourth round, yeah. Fourth round. What? Uh, and obviously, it seems like things were going well in Kansas City. You get traded for a first and two third round picks. That's pretty incredible to Minnesota eventually. But before that, you had to go through like a tender year and a franchise year yeah. trying to get a deal. Yeah, so that's that was the frustrating part, right? So uh, when I played on my contract, you know, um, you know, I got in a bit of trouble my third my third year. So I told them, I was like, hey, let me prove to you guys like that it, I, I matured out. I got this handled. You know, I'm just acting like a dumb Were there kid. issues in the first couple of years? No, no, just third year. I mean, at some point, you know, you give, you give a young kid with nothing but time and too much money in his pocket. And at that time, you know, not, I mean, I don't know what it was. When you, what year did you come in? Uh, my first year was 2014. Oh, geez. Your league minimum was insane. Our league minimum was 225. Right? Yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. took half of that in taxes. I mean, I was so. 450. Yeah. yeah. I was still fighting. I was still <laughs> no, fighting the good fight. And so, uh, and and right, first round. Relax. I was fighting that good fight. After the signing bonus, it was going to hurt. After the signing bonus, that shit was hurting a little bit. Yeah. He said, yeah, we were still fighting a good fight. I got to buy, I got to buy, I got to buy a brand new used truck. That's what I got to buy. Um, and so, no, I don't know where I was going with that now, but, um, so you uh, you too, too much money. money. Yeah. yeah, so you know, I'm like, man, I'm making six figures. This is insane. So getting get in trouble a little bit my third year, and um, are you able to talk about the trouble? Oh yeah, I caught do yeah do I uh, caught I got two do uh, two DUIs. And, yeah. like, are you drunk right now? Man. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Absolutely not. In a five months, man. Like, yeah, it was uh, it was a bad 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 time for me. Um, it wasn't a bad time. It was just ignorant and dumb, and just you know. Actually, no responsibility, right? Living, yeah. living like you had no responsibility. You didn't understand what being a role model was, or being, or being a productive part of society. Because I was a complete meat stick, right? Mm-hmm. Like I play football, and drink beer. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, when you went on Jackass? No, no, I went on Jackass years, years later. My heroes. Um, and <laughs> so, so, anyways, 
I went through that. I was, I told them, I was like, Hey, let me, let me prove to you guys. I got this handled. Right. I, I mean, I, I went and did this, you know, outpatient, like alcohol classes, all this stuff. I was like, I got to figure if I got a problem, I got a problem, mm-hmm. you know, own it. Um, you know, literally talking to my grandfather, he called me. He was like, listen, I didn't bring this last name through three wars and multiple conflicts for you to F it up. He's like, figure it out. And I was no like, shit. Yes, sir. So I was yeah. like, well, let me figure this out. Um, and honestly, I mean, it was a maturity issue. I was like, I was a just a dumb kid, you know, hair on fire. Like I used to think like I played on the edge, so I had to live on the edge. Right. Um, oh, I love that. And so, so, cool. and yeah. so, you know, I went down, but so I went to them and told them like, Hey, like, let's just, let's pause this. I'll sign my tender. Right. But I told them, I was like, if you franchise me, I'm going to be pissed. Mm-hmm. So long story short, we get through the tender year, right? Go into, uh, you know, lead the league in sacks, all that stuff. Get ready to get my contract. Think I'm gonna get my you contract. led the league your tender year. Yeah, my fourth year. What a win, by the way. Yeah. Um, in 14 games, right? So I'm like, you know, we got this. And I'm thinking I'm getting into, you know, we gave them what we, at that time, which was going to be a great contract. Um, they turned it down. And I'll never forget, the, the breaking straw, we had, a, we had a phone call. We were supposed to be on with Carl at Peterson and Denny Thum. Me and my agent jump on the call. They set the call up, by the way. It wasn't like we were like, hey, can we call this time? This yeah. time. So we get on the call. We wait for 20 minutes on hold. Denny gets on the phone and goes, oh, we're going to have to reschedule. Carl had to leave the country. <laughs> like, oh, just on a whim, you had to leave the country? You guys scheduled this call. You had to leave the country. Yeah. I was like, you know what? That's the last draw. I called Clark and I was like, here's your guys' option. Do you either trade me? Or you rent me for two years, and I promise you, I pull a hamstring every time. Like when I come in, I'm coming in week six, and uh, pulling a hamstring. You know, what yeah. I mean? Or week ten, I think you have to play six games. So got them to trade. Asked, got them to give us permission to trade. Talk this to Tampa during the franchise year. Yeah, no, no, I didn't play the franchise year. You so didn't I, play. I never signed the franchise tender until we had the we had the sign and trade and deal with yeah. Minnesota. So I got them. What's the kit? What's the? Uh, I'll, I'll after six weeks. What do you have to do for six weeks? No, so you have to you have to play at least six weeks. I'm sorry, so I can show up week ten. You have to play at least six weeks to get accredited year. Got you at right? that time at because that now time. it's three games. Yeah, it's yeah, three games yeah. now. Now that time you had to, you had to be on the roster, you know, six weeks. So I could basically hold out for ten weeks, show up for six, and I told him I was like, I'll pull a hamstring. And <laughs> yeah, be good. Um, so you know, got them to allow me to trade, get the trade, um, and talked to Tampa, Minnesota, and they got the deal done with Minnesota. But during that time, it was like, God sent, dude, because Dwight Freeney comes out and breaks the bank, right? Mm-hmm. You know, back then, we I was trying to get seven a year APY, and because that was right around where Jason Taylor was getting. He was top five in the league at the time. And then Freeney comes in, gets 12 a year, and I'm like sitting here like, well, my numbers are better than Freeney's numbers. Yeah. I'm getting super paid, right? Yeah. Super duper paid. Um, and so... That ended up ended up working out, and uh, you know it, it was tough because I, you know Herm and I have a great relationship. He was my coach at the time there, um, and I have a great relationship with the Chiefs now. Like you know they've had me back multiple times, so no hard feelings. Um, but yeah, it was it was a tough time because I'd never I, I was still this meets like you said in college you're brainwashed like you run through brick walls because they say and I come in with Vermeil who's old school right like mm. he'll beat you into a pulp and then give you a hug and and, and tell you he loves you and you're like. Yep, you're yeah. going again. You're my dirt sticky like mud. I didn't even know I needed your approval like a father. I'm good relationship with my father, but I'm in. Yeah. You know, it's like you're that's like, you're, you're you. that's how they fucking loyalty, man. man. And, uh, and so then, you know, so I'm dealing with the business side of this thing now. And it was, dude, it was hectic. I'm not going to lie. But uh, like I said, it worked out great. Minnesota was phenomenal. Obviously, uh, my career path worked out okay. But um, yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. All my trades, I asked to be traded and ended up in the place I wanted to be and uh, never got cut. So it worked out all right. What was that situation like where you were literally with Kansas City saying, hey, I'm not playing for you guys anymore. You have to trade me. So oh, obviously it's, it's cold. It's stressful. And then you get Tampa Bay and Minnesota and they're both, you're, you're negotiating a contract while you're getting traded, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So you got to get, you got permission. At first, they were only giving us permission to talk to Tampa, right? Which was fine. I'm a Gruden fan. I grew up a Raiders fan. You yeah. Know, Gruden grinder. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, <laughs> I don't even know what that was, but it was awesome. He was a Gruden oh, grinder. Yeah. He was a Gruden oh, grinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got the t-shirt and everything. I love it. <laughs> really? and, uh, so cool. So, I'm like, I don't have one of those. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> so, but then there, I think, was it Bruce Allen? Was it Bruce Allen or... He was Tampa? the GM. Yeah, then he went, think, yeah, yeah. Then he Bruce went to, Allen at Tampa, then he went to, went to Washington. Yeah. So he starts talking the same nonsense. They were like, wanted to put restrictions on my contract because, you know, oh, he's at risk, this, that, and the other. And I was like, man, I'm not going from one organization that doesn't believe in me to the next. Right. Um, and then, you know, so we went visit Minnesota first and they just didn't let me leave. And, you know, so it worked out all right. So you actually went to Minnesota and was like checking it all out and everything. Yeah, yeah. So we got, we got permission to get to seek the trade. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went up there. 
is like you said, you got to hammer out the contract, right? So now we're, but not only that, we're trying to hammer out the contract. So I, we finally get the contract hammered out, but they're trying to hammer out compensation for the Chiefs, all right? So, I mean, they could have paid me whatever, but if the Chiefs didn't agree to the compensation, then it's... Yeah, it's so they're also they really, not only with you, but they're the negotiating with the Chiefs. Yeah, so, you know, for them, to, for them to give up at that time, you know, a first, two-thirds... And make me the highest paid defensive player that's in NFL history. It was, it was it was it was a nuts deal. That's and that's where you're dude, it was I'm not gonna lie, it was stressful. So not only like that, you're just like not only did they make me the highest paid, you know, they mortgaged the farm to make yeah. sure I'm not a bust. So luckily for me, I'm I'm a kind of, you know, I try not to ever rest on my laurels, right? I'm I I, I always try to outdo myself and very self motivated. So uh it worked out. But yeah, it was it was it's a stressful time when you're dealing. I was in the room for all the negotiations. You're sitting there like what the hell is going on here? Yeah, some fucking button-up collared shirt that you found in the back of your closet. I guess I'll wear this today. Yeah. You're sitting there. It's still got wrinkles all over it, and they're over there hammering out business calls, and you're just yeah. like, holy fuck. Yeah, dude, it's, it's gnarly. Was it a fresh start in Minnesota? Absolutely. Is that a thing where you're like, you know, you're about to go to a new team, and you're kind of like, fuck, like, I really oh, wanted fuck, to be dude, with... Here's, here's the deal, like, it's it's actually scary, right? Because now that's why I actually got I got respect for Brady on what he was able to do in Tampa his first year there, right? You go from being in somewhere your entire career, coaches, city, you know, routine, strength coach, everything, right? To figuring out something new. So I got like Minnesota was was awesome because like I had my trainers in Arizona that I worked with, right? I I'm coming off, you know, I, I you know, I got my weight where I wanted to be, just led the league in sacks, like. I have, I'm, I'm in a rhythm now and I'm like, all right, this is, I know how I need to train and I, I see what success is. And, but a lot of times you go somewhere new, like when I went to Chicago, like they went out, all of a sudden they want you in the weight room. Everybody wants to coach the new toy. Right. And you're like, so I got to give Minnesota credit. Like I told Brad, I'm like, listen, I'll come up here for, for a little bit of, you know, OTAs and kind of stuff like that, but you know, get settled in. But you know, I got to get back with my trainers. You guys, you guys want me at this level. This is the level I got to be at. Mm -hmm. And Tom Canavy, you know Canavy. Yeah, I know Canavy. He was my strength Big coach. Hey, Jared Allen yes. fan, by the way. And, um, and so, but like, he had no ego and wasn't like hammering me on like have to do his workouts and, mm -hmm. this and the other. Totally cool. Like, hey, what do you need from me? Type of guy. Yeah. And it was great. And so they they made it feel like home. And then I had Kevin and Pat, who I mean, our D line room was so crazy, crazy competitive. Like it didn't even matter. Like you didn't want to show up. You weren't worried about showing up on film on Sunday or I mean on Monday to like for the for the team meeting or defensive meeting to, to get ripped. Like if you had a bad game, you didn't want to be in that D line room. You were <laughs> really because all you, get all you guys were chirping each other. Tore apart. Like I got there, my my I think I had like fifty seven tackles and fourteen and a half sacks. Uh, sorry, fifteen and a half sacks in 07, Right. Uh, the year before that had like 65, almost seven. one year, I think I had like close to 70 tackles in, in Kansas city. And I got there and they're like, we play the run here, bro. I'm like, y'all better check my stuff. If you play the run, so I'm yeah. check the fuck stuff, is, yeah. Bro, you're from Marty ball. Hey, the OG JJ Watt over oh, here, yeah. I dude. Like, we, I was like, we come from Marty ball, dude. You know what I mean? I'm like back in, back in the day where, you know, we're playing, uh, was San Diego and they got a 300 pound tight. And Jason Dunn was a 300 pound tight in with us. Right. And, um, and so they're, they're, they're giving me a hard time. Like, you better, you earn the ride around here. And I'm like, first of all, I got more sacks than any of you guys got combined. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, but I love it. Came with it. Yeah. yeah. He came yeah. out with that. Yeah. He pulled that shit out, dude. dude. He was Kevin fucking my, there. Kevin and Pat became like, Kevin's one of my closest buddies, dude. And uh, I like, love those guys. Like brothers. Like, because we just pushed each other nonstop, dude. It was just like, I mean, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't slack because they were coming. I'll never forget. Oh, like Kevin jumped out. He had like five or six sacks early in 04. I was sitting at like one or two and I'm like, dude, they're going to like, they're paying me all this money. I'm getting beat by a three technique. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, this dude is on insane pace, but, um, the numbers up homie. Yeah, it was, it was, it was one of those deals where it couldn't have been better for my personality for that time in my life, my career to be in Minnesota because you know, that was saying iron sharpens iron, but I mean, it was, you know, more like you had bulldozers pushing you because you know, you didn't want to be that guy. Yeah. What were, uh, what are some, some teams or tackles now that you look back on your career, like what were games and players that you looked at? You're like, oh, I'm about to eat this dude up. Uh, whew, a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, you got, he, uh, I mean, he, his career, he, you averaged over 10. If you look at, you play what? Uh, 12. 12 years. Yeah, 11, 11 and some change. Yeah, like you're averaging 10 sacks so, a year. Like, it was, it was stylistic. You right? had to know, like, all right, I'm about to get a bump this week because I'm going against so and so. Yeah, well, it depends. It's stylistic too, right? So you hate to play a guy. No, you hate to what play a you? team. Like I said, I would I would rather play against Taylor, right? All pro guy, because they're going to leave him alone. They're not. He's not going to get all the help, right? So it's going to come down to who's better that day. Yeah. Right? Versus you're playing against, uh, you know, I don't know when Green Bay had like 
you know, they moved Darren College from guard out to tackle. They had TJ Lane. They're going to slide. Moldy. They're going to do this. Yeah. yeah. You're going to get chip. You're going to get this. They don't have a technique. Or if you're playing against a guy who just likes to float back and gather, like, you know, a lot of times you play against a guy, you're like, oh, this dude's a scrub. I'm going to I'm gonna smash him. But guess what? You're going to get tight end chip. You're going to get mm. this. You're going to get this. Where if I got a guy that's okay, he's rhythmic. He's got strong. He's He's got strong hands. Like, let's hand fight. Like, we're going to hand fight. I'm going to eventually win at some point, right? Um, and so guys like that, or, you know, even, you know, a quarterback, you play play a guy that's got a decent tackle and a good quarterback. You're, all right, they're going to, they they want people downfield. They don't want people inside, you know, to help it out. So that was more of the deal of what games I was going to get my my matchups I want, right? Gotcha. Versus games like, oh, crap. This dude, they got a bomb at quarterback, you know, mm-hmm. playing, playing the, you're like, oh, we're playing the backup quarterback. We're getting three-step all day long. Yeah. Uh, that's why I love playing Jason Peters. Right, our styles matched up against each other. Like for me, well, um, because he's he's a Pro Bowl tackle. They're yeah. not going to give him. They're he not give him help. He and doesn't want help. He has a similar set every single time. Similar set every time. I I I I know how to rhythm break him. Right, like yeah. you know the same thing. It's like you know even playing against you. Like I I would know your rhythm. Right, but that that, was, that, that screws that that goes against me if he rhythm breaks. Right, if he does something yeah. different, you're going to catch him. Um, but also and then, then that quarterback, so when they had Mariota, you get not, not only rushing against the tackle, you're rushing against now a mobile quarterback. So what well, might work so he can get away with, he could get away with probably being over the top more, for example. Um, because if I take an inside move, Mariota is just going to slide. He puts it in his vision right away. Yeah, and get around now it. I'm in his vision. He's going to sidestep over Walter Jones was that way. Walter Jones would cut you off then bail straight back. And you think you had this inside route and then Hasselback would step, you know, just slide over or wall sit like a wall right we roll out and you're just like i feel like i'm getting such a good rush yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? yes but i'm getting no results and sometimes that's how it is sometimes you might have a good rush game but you get no results some days it might be sloppy as all hell and you might take two you know take, take two home, home with, with you yeah. yeah it's one of those games it's but yeah there's there's certain guys and then you can see trends of offense right like so you know you never want to play a team right after they just gave up like eight you're like, oh, that's like yeah, you want to. You know they're getting murdered in the room. Play, you want to play a team that you're like, all right, dude, they they've been giving up consistently like two or three, four a game. You know what I mean? And then you're like, they're not gonna they're not gonna go overboard because they still need to score points. And then you yeah. just dump them. Um, so yeah, we we had to play Chicago. I had to play Chicago one time after I think uh, what was it. The dude from the Niners got like five on him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, great. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen. No, no, yeah, right. It's not going to be I'll a solid day. One. Yeah. Like, well, here goes Max Pro every freaking day. Yeah. So. Yeah. Seven man pro, H2, H3 type stuff. Yeah. That uh, that stuff's wild. I, uh, when you were at Minnesota, you guys were playing the, uh, you guys were playing Tampa Bay. Yep. Fourth quarter. They're, you guys are down, I think, 13 points, 30 to 17. And Donald Penn, I don't want to say big dogs you. But he kind of big dogs you for a second. Oh yeah, from from got right, the right helmet right. off. He had you bleeding down the nose. It looked very cool, by the way. Yes, you looked very cool. And then there was like a minute and a half of time stoppage, so you guys could talk shit to each other <laughs> forever. And obviously, the next play, you get a, a a big sack. And the fucking that old Minnesota stadium was going fucking wild. Yeah, that was that was a cool. What was that so, situation like for you? So Donald Pitt and I. Donald likes to chirp as much as I like to chirp. Right? Yeah, and so it. it so most of the time plays in my hand. I remind him, I'm like, bro, I've like never not gotten a sack on you. So that's a tough thing to tell somebody. Like, you know what I mean? So eventually it's happening. Like, yeah. This is gonna happen. Just lay well, down. So I take it inside. Hey, lay down, yeah, go yeah, and yeah. take so this. I take an inside move and you know he he's given a little extra, right? Like you, you pull that pull that up. clip up because it goes I pull, hard. I slide, you know, and I kinda like I'm already down, so he's trying to bury me into the ground. And I'm yeah. like, bro, like we already watched, but you stay over. on your feet too, yeah, which I'm is like, incredible. I'm like, all, I'm like, but I'm, I'm, like, so I'm like, block, block me. So I'm telling him I'm obviously talking trash because I know he's pushing me side right. So I'm like, I'm like, dude, you know, block me straight up. Why you hit me in the back? You know, you said some choice words, and in the process, you know, of exchanging, my helmet comes down, it busts my nose open, right? Helmet comes off. You know, I hold him. You know, like like my seven. You know, like your little brother or whatever. Yeah, I mean, see, I kind of for an inside move. See, that's the one right there. That's the one Wait, I was you're like, pushing you and trying to finish. It'll, it'll, it'll show, it'll show a replay in a second. Knees. I'm already on my knees. Like you're gonna try to now. You're trying to take a little extra, which yeah. again, I get it. I'm all for it. No helmet, mullet there, by the way. No, no mullet. No helmet comes off. He's in there throwing punches at me. He rips my helmet off. I have it by the face mask like this. All I do is hold my face mask and so. Oh, we got a we got a like a fight right Just here. Just wait dude. to oh, watch this. Watch so, this. 
So I go for an inside move. Hey, bad, I, that's a terrible, terrible rush by me right there. I trip. This is the one I had, this is the one I had caused it right there. And now you still want to go, right? That's when my nose gets bloodied when my helmet comes off. So I say you throw a little jab in there, little doggy. That's the best part right there. Dude, the whole oh, dude, you down. never want to be the guy, bro. Dude, you got long arms, arms too, bro. Day. That's a bitch of a move, dude. Yeah. I hate Those that. Those dudes who have the long arms and they're just fucking holding you at a distance. So is it is a volume on this thing? Because you can hear that the whole stadium's First going ball, fucking why, wild why right now. Why are they throwing the ball up 30, yeah. 17 to 30? 17 to 30. You can't. Oh, he's calling no, you no, a but, bitch. You see him? He's like, oh, yeah. Bitch. Oh, you can't, you can't hear it. Said, here's my address, bro. Like, here's, here's my address. We, we can. And, we, and we, while, this clip, while this clip is going on right now, Chris Collinsworth is just doing this. He's unzipping Allen's, but he's pulling that fucking thing out. <laughs> and he's about to go ham on him. Hey, I was watch this guy. I guarantee they're not exchanging phone numbers right now. They just start Classic. really getting into it. Like, Classic. we I need to. Did. I probably gave him a number. Like, you're lying. You you're lying. lying. Here's my address. Bro, he's a big ass here's dude. Here's my address. Here's my. Yo, you done the next play. This is the very next play. Here's my address here's my uh, phone number anytime any place is wrong oh, oh. slow little start oh <laughs> takes it like what a fucking deal that you couldn't have drawn that up better if they would have went on two i would have jumped just the best size. feeling yeah. bro if i would have went on two i would have jumped off sides you were going sure. you were fucking going losing your Man, fucking I, mind oh, right now that was a dope moment right there that was a good one. Uh, and you go, I get a sack on you all the time. Just let it happen. Yo, um, I know you're hype right there, hype bro. Is, is it a game? See, they try to chip me too. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, it wasn't a game. So ever, ever since it was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, just go. I'm running through this dude's neck, right? Like, that's yeah. all there is to it. It's it's all sad. Yeah, you know that. We were just we were going. But that, that actually worked to his disadvantage, right? Like, but that's my argument. Yeah, you got to pick and choose the times you talk shit because if you're argument, looking at a third and 17, you're probably going to wait to that first and 10 to go back. Hey, remember when I bitched you? <laughs> you remember point, that? At the same time, I'm trying to, I'm sitting over there and that's what I was trying to tell him. Like, bro, if you're that good, like, why are they chipping? Why are you chipping? You yeah, know like, yeah, 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 yeah. No. And, and, hey, Donald was a big man. I mean, he was, he was a big man. Not only that, but he'll go, he'll like, dude, what? he went after a troll in the parking lot yeah, when he was yeah, on the yeah, Raiders. Yeah, got out of the rolls. Like, oh, yeah. what's what. No, 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 I, dude, honestly, like, his personality, I, I love his personality. It's great. Um, and he was an undrafted guy, too, right? He like on he, Minnesota's practice squad. He came squad. through hell. Like, he always, he always, he came from Minnesota's practice squad. When so. you were there? No, no, before I was there. So he always had, had something to prove against Minnesota, right? And, um, he went on to have a great career at the Raiders. Um, and so him and I always mouth and jawed back and forth at each other. I actually, to me, those are the funnest games. If you want to actually get to me, don't say anything. Right? If you're quiet and don't talk, like that's not fun. Yeah. Like now it's like, okay, I got no one to, you know, yeah. no one to talk trash to. Um, but yeah, him and I had some battles and it always ended in people getting dog cussed and all that stuff. And, uh, but see, that's right there. Like, so this is what, this is what works right there. So he, he knows I'm coming for a bull rush, right? He's leaning, so he leaning heavy and leans. And actually he knew he had chip help. So he stopped short. Right. Yeah. So that allowed Everson to clear. So if he, he, he actually wouldn't have had chip help on that and he would just set, we never would have got to the quarterback, but you know, ball, just so he's talking, talking ball. ball right he now. knew. He knew. Yeah, he you knew, knew you have coming. chip help. That is a big. That is a big win when the coaches see uh, a fiery talk going on. Yeah. Like, hey, we're gonna throw him a chip real quick, just to yeah. make sure everything's smooth, <laughs> just to make sure everything <laughs> goes as planned. See, I was you like, can't look over the side like, "Oh, appreciate you, ball." Yeah, but so I. But the, like a lot more times than not, the chipper can can screw stuff up, right? Yeah. And now is that Everson Griffin you're talking to? Yeah. So every he was Arizona like, kid. He, he was like, he was like, "What do you want to do? What do you want to do?" And I'm like, "What do you mean? What do you want to do? Like, you need to just get out of my way." Yeah. Um. Yeah, they said they almost they almost got me off sides there. And yeah, I've, I've missed right there. Uh, yeah. we, were, we were high. We were all go. I told them like whoever gets there first. It doesn't we end up winning this game. Oh, they did. They uh, probably that score. <laughs> <laughs> probably that. Probably, probably that, that score. Anybody else and you I'll, have like uh, big rivals with like that? Hold on, before you go anywhere, that nothing says hard hard a white guy like that barbed wire tattoo you got oh, going on. Oh, the old Bill what Bill 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 not not barbed what wire. What we got going there, boss? It's tribal. Tribal. <laughs> Tribal. That's tribal barbed wire. That's back yeah, when yeah. Goldberg was hot, dude. Yeah, let's, him, and Brian, him and Brian Urlacher fell Look victim. At, no, Urlacher has to be barbed wire. I got, uh, yeah, this is tribal. Yeah, that's tribal. Yeah, that's tribal. Yeah, that's tribal. Yeah, that was a college. That was a freebie in college right there. That was a freebie. Yeah. But that's back when those were hot. That's what you get when you go to Idaho those State, hot, folks. Dude. You go to Idaho State, you get you a nice little tribal like that. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, um, that's one I wish I could I could probably take back. We will say like, oh, I have no regrets in life. Yeah, oh, no, tons of them. Tons of them. <laughs> tons of them. Yeah. I'm not saying it. I mean, it didn't make me who I am, but right. If I, I think could... Frank Sinatra said it best, dude. Regrets you have a few, but then again, too few to mention. Yeah. Right. Right. 
Uh, but yeah, yeah. No, tribal tattoo, and I'm, I'm not, there's nothing tribal about me. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, uh, you see this? I'm getting that removed right now. Yes, I'll love. tell you what, this place in Nashville gets a Pico laser. Get that thing done, you'll get that thing off in six to eight sessions, no really? problem. Yeah. Really? I'm I don't think you should. No, I just want to staple you. I'm already in. I, yeah, I, you I, I have a litany of bad tattoos, though. Like, it's I, not even. What's your least favorite one besides that one? Well, it was my favorite. Then I had, I told my, Mom and my yeah, wife. It was got, my favorite. No, it was it was dumb. So I, I do a lot of things off dumb bets or just because I say I'm gonna do something. I don't ever welch. Yeah. So I told I told my brother one time I was gonna get like a dollar bill tattooed. You know, like oh, you, you just graze your fingers across your lower yeah, stomach. What's going was, on? Some words. <laughs> And I uh, saw when you're pumping that tarp off, there was something down there. Yes. Yeah, so you got that, a butterfly coming no, off the crotch or something? No, it's a it's a deer with a gun underneath. Oh yeah, Fuck. dude. Um, that screams some broke back mountain stuff, yeah, right? There. Well, <laughs> the buck is a cover up. The buck is a cover. The, the gun, chest. the gun is a, <laughs> on my lower. The gun, the gun is a cover up because it used to be like a word puzzle. What? So it used to, it used to. <laughs> oh, what's the word uh, puzzle? Well, it used to like say, a Sudoku. Hey, his mouth? I, I know. You're like, I'm like, I got. How do I say this? I got, yeah, I got, yeah, I got yeah. girls. They're never gonna hear this, but so I, the tattoo, I can't hide from it, right? It used to say, "All you can eat." That is, let me, that <laughs> is fucking it, awesome, dude. Under, yeah, but, no, I get it. I know exactly what it's implying. So, you should have never got that covered up. Um, I tried to promise my mom cried I over I it. When my mom, my mom found out she cried. When uh, when I met my wife, she was absolutely disgusted with me for it, and I was just like, "Yeah, I was I was like 22 when I got it. I thought it was way cooler then." <laughs> um, so the, I told my told my mom I was like, "As soon as I get married, I will I will cover that up." I mean, I think we went from our wedding reception <laughs> to the tattoo parlor. No so shit. That cover, so I put a gun under it, and now it just looks like I like hunting so much. I put a freaking, you know, elk yeah. or a buck with a gun yeah. underneath my belly button, which is so, oh, dude, that's probably one I need to get removed because yeah. dudes shouldn't have lower belly button ink or low back ink. I don't, I disagree. And um, I disagree wholeheartedly. <laughs> I think you did it right. I think you did you it know, right. So, inspiring, inspiring some college kid with a mole like, oh yeah, oh, I need to get that. Yeah, all you guys going like this. All people, you can eat. Yeah. People yeah. say, I know we're crushing my ear. That's, that's, that's one uh, I don't think. I, 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 the story alone is just incredible. Are you done getting tattoos? I say yes, right? I, I think like if I, if something cool, like I don't know, like at one point, I was, like, going to sleeve my arm up with my kids and all that stuff. And I'm like, you know, at some point, you can only have so many names on you that, mm. you know, my kids know their names. I know my kids' names. Right. You know, um, I don't know. I like tattoos. I think they're cool. I'm more feeling like, well, I don't really work out like I used to. And, you know, tattoos and, like, dad bods, saggy kind of dad bods don't really vibe. So, I don't know. We'll yeah, I disagree with that too. <laughs> I think that shit goes hard, dude. I think that shit goes hard. People always say like, oh, wait, why would you get tattoos? Why would you put a bumper sticker on a Lamborghini? Buddy, we're not Lamborghinis. We're Honda Civics at best, dude. Let's pin my ride. True, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure, Let's get yeah. fucking wild with that thing. I, 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 I'm, I'm a fan of tattoos. I have no problem with them. Um, I feel like if you're going to do it though, you have to you have to understand. First of all, you have to be that guy, right? So like for an, um, uh, dude from... Uh, Oh, Rudolph, Kyle Rudolph, yeah. right, from Minnesota. Dude, love Kyle Rudolph, but he came from Notre Dame. He's yeah. just, the, you know, the big big old white glove hand. You know, he's like the Pillsbury guy, right? Yeah. Catches everything. Next thing you know, he's sleeved up. I'm like, I just don't know if, like, you've had enough struggles in your life to be sleeved up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, 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 I do, I think, like, I yeah. think tattoos, are, you got to be a little, you got to be, you got to have a couple edgy. stories that go, oh, okay, he's been yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah, especially when you have bad tattoos, like, yeah. me, right? Like, my life story, you're like, you would expect me to have some bad tattoos, 100%, right? You're like, yeah, I do probably have some really crappy tattoos. <laughs> right? I've outgrown them. But I'm growing though. But it is what it is. Yeah, but the thing you got going for you, dude, is you got a nice little. You have the you have the mullet going. You have the belt buckles. You've you've driven your path of what your style is. Yeah, yeah. And I think the tattoos play perfectly yeah, into that like hand. Kid goes out and gets a neck tattoo. And you're like, okay, now you have to be an athlete or in music, right? Yeah. Like you're limiting your life skills, right? You know what I mean. But if you're gonna get sleeved up, you know, you got you got to have a little edge to you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, I'm like, okay, yeah, go on. I don't, oh, I don't know. I don't know your history, but I'm like a tattoo guy. That's my yeah. point. Is I'm like, yeah, I, I, I see the tattoos. Like that makes Arizona. Sense. Like, yeah, how much harder sense. does it get? Dave Creek for sure. You, I mean, tattoos make sense. <laughs> how much harder does it get, Willie? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Grew up on a ranch. Come on. Hey, hard working. Right? Hard working, dude. Mucking stalls at 4 a.m. in the summertime. Yes, sir. What y'all do? 
Come but, on. But you're like a you're like a California Arizona guy. You're not like a Texas you're not like a Texas Arizona guy. I mean, I think what I'm wearing right now would definitely support what you're saying. But like where I grew up would be I guess more Texas Arizona. You've been up to Cave Creek, you yeah, know. I've been there. So you know. Yeah. But I've chosen my path. Yeah. Actually, I haven't chosen my path. I feel like I wear different shit all the time and like kind of contradicts itself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You 100% do. But it's because I'm still, I don't want to fucking draw my line too soon. I want to have multiple lines. Is that possible? <laughs> Gary goes, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Idaho State, Charlie Regal, my head coach at Chaparral High School, is now the head coach at Idaho State University. I'm telling you, big sky, we go full circle. Dude, it it's is. Like, it's like the seven degrees of uh, Kevin Bacon. That's what's happening right now. Yep. And I think that, what do you think Charlie Rayo is going to do for that university? Um, I don't know him personally. I've uh, only talked to him on the phone. He's a high energy guy. High energy guy. Um, at one in eight or one in seven. Mm -hmm. Where well, we're building. Don't know what his coaching style is or isn't. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't have an expectation uh, other than um, next year, obviously can't get much worse. So it's got to be better. There you go, baby. Expectations low. So you can only go up from That's there. The key to happiness. Yes. I had a fortune cookie one time. Tell me. If you never climb, you'll never fall. There we go. That's big brain thinking right there. That's big right there. brain thinking, dude. Keep I think you guys are going to be solid. I think Charlie, yeah, I think, as I think, a motivation guy, recruit. he's incredible. I think you'll be able to recruit, and I think guys will play for him. So I think, um, like I told you earlier, I think they're they're going to ask like 35 people to leave the program. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know you could rebuild in college, but I guess they're going to do they're it. They're going to rebuild. We yeah. talked about before, you need to go to the nearest juvenile detention center. Yeah. Get a baker's dozen there. And then you get a couple guys that are good leaders and let's just point this cart in the direction we want to go. Yeah, just... We need like old school Raiders. That's what I told, I said, I told, I told our, our ADS that we need, we need uh, an identity. So we need to figure out what that identity is. And in my personal opinion, if, unless you have a rock star quarterback, go get the best O-lineman you can possibly get and run the ball. I would, I would be, I would be in freaking wing T style. Just, I would be in heavy overload wing, right. right? Just power eye back football. What's the military school that runs that? Is that Navy? Is it Arm? No. Air Force. Air Force runs wing Air T. Force I would run wing T, but I would literally go back to straight power eye football because the thing about it, everybody's a specialist these days. No one wants to get hit in the face anymore. Yeah. So I would, just, I would just murk. I, I would put a freaking 250 pound fullback and just ISO. Just kill guys. Power every single time. Do you do that in JUCO? You eat all the JUCO kids up there, no problem. Because yeah. you're D1, right? Yeah, D1, uh, what is it? FCS now, D1 AA. No. You guys are D1 AA trying to compete with like the North Dakota states of the world? Yeah, it's hard. Is Idaho State, have they had success back in the day? Back when I was there, yeah, we did. We oh. uh, we just had our 20-year reunion for winning the Big Sky. Uh, but we, uh, we, were, we were some ruffians. Um, but that's what we did. We ran the ball. We, we literally ran the ball down people's faces. We just... <laughs> Just made it happen. Yeah, the ball. We had a couple of good quarterbacks, good wide receivers. We were all one A players that got in trouble, and so ended up at Idaho State. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. That's exactly what they need to do. That's what I'm saying. I'm, not, I'm saying, hey, it worked. I believe in, in Charlie Regal. I believe in Charlie well, Regal. I don't know him personally, so if you believe in him, I believe in you. Fuck yes, we're dude. In. I love. We're look in. at us. Look at us, dude. This has been incredible. Yeah, this has been an incredible podcast. Who's the most interesting player you've had, that you played with in your locker room? Yeah, where's that? I'm, I got to wrap this up at some point because I got to get to my daughter's karate class. But um, uh, interesting player. Oh, gosh, dude. Played against? Played against or played no, with? played with, like in your locker room that you've seen. Interesting. I know well, you've had dude. some cats in there. Like, like uh, well, I play with was it, uh, Griffin, like he was an interesting, like you, we would hear, I would hear from afar in the Washington locker so, room that he would like beat his own teammates up. No, I, I never saw him beat anybody up. He was like a violent up. teammate. He, Percy Harvin, you've heard stories. Love Percy. I was with, with Percy. Percy was actually a great teammate. Um, Everson got, Everson had a few issues, but when we were there, like Everson, he actually, he knew his role, like where he was at, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Ev was, Ev was actually very manageable, right? Always knew he had an incredible skill set, right? Yeah. Just if he could keep the mental side, you know. In check. In check and going, but not, not just, just focused, right? Yeah. He could focus on his task. The dude was, I mean, you, and you could see it. He's a monster. Didn't he run right? down on Gunner uh, yeah, like, in his yeah, career? Like he's a fucking gifted beyond measure. Monster. But I got to play with the likes of, I mean, Tony Gonzalez, right? Will Shields, Willie Rofe, um, you Randy know, Moss. Randy Moss. I played for a little bit, but even Kevin, like I said, Kevin and Pat Williams. Um, I got to play with Ty Law. Um, like, you know, so the list of guys just from a skill set that I got to play was insane. Um, and as far as 
characters. I mean, Eric Hicks, I mean, he was like, you know, Bonnie Holiday, all these guys were my big, like big brothers, you know? Um, man, I'm trying to think. Probably. I mean, you probably brought Tony far was, as well. You know, honestly, one of my favorite human beings was obviously John Browning, right? He was just a soft spoken dude. Um, but <laughs> his John Browning, Willie, so Willie, like, Willie Rose is probably one of my, my all time favorites. So Willie Rose, when he retired, well, the way I remember it was, uh, so we were at OTAs and we were, Herm had to get, we're getting after pretty good, right? <clears throat> Willie gets in his car after practice one day and, you know, leaves and no one thinks, oh, he doesn't show up at OTAs. No one's really thinking much of it. Yeah. Uh, training camp comes. Willie's not there. I remember Herm one day like, uh, hey, Shields, anybody? <laughs> Rope. I guess he decided one day during OTAs he was done. He just, he just left. And, and that's how he retired, but just like didn't. Just left. I'm sure I, Corey, I haven't asked him a story. I just remember one day he was at OTAs and then I never saw him again. <laughs> hey, that's that's iconic. A competitive football field. Yeah. That's an iconic way to go out. You, you also yeah. had an iconic way to go out riding the horse up into the sunset. That was my wife's idea. I got to give her all the credit in the world for that. Um, she she came up with that idea and it, it became legendary. It became yes, that was legendary. When did you know like I'm I'm done, I'm hanging it up after this? I knew I was done at year ten, right? Um, I was done at year ten, and then the Bears threw a contract at me. I couldn't say no to a two year. Uh, I was a four year, avoidable four three year, but I made all my money in two, um, so I took it. And then uh, when I asked them, to, you know, then I asked them, to, you know, they 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 had a whole regime shift. I asked them to trade me to Carolina. Right. So I get traded to Carolina and my agent calls me. He's like, he's like, Hey, we're good. Like, you know, what? you're going to have to pay any of that back. Cause I knew I was going to retire after two. Right. <laughs> so everybody was so worried about Cutler's, you know, $10 million roster bonus that they had to get. Yeah. They forgot about, they weren't even paid attention to mine. God, and, what a win. and then, like I said, so then I get traded. I mean, the bears are still paying the 80% of the salary. So why are, you know, why are the uh, Panthers going to convert anything over to signing bonus? So after, you know, X amount of games, your roster bonus is locked in, and I got to keep it all. <laughs> I got paid for four. You almost got a Super Bowl. Almost, man. That was close. That, I tell you what, it was more painful losing the NFC Championship game than it was the Super Bowl because you're there. You know, you're there. You're experiencing yeah. it. But, um, but yeah, it was a rough one. I mean, we played, we played well, too. It was, it was a heck of a game. And, it was um, an awesome game. And we just, we, we honestly, we got out, we, we just got outplayed on defense, right? If you think about it, if, I mean, and we played, we held Peyton 186 yards. They scored on defense. We didn't. And that's yeah. Vaughn Miller just went nuts. Yeah, nuts. he went nuts. He did. Dude, how, how legendary is Luke Keekley? Oh, dude, dude's a stud. I, I, that, that dude, that dude was balls to the walls. Like he was every bit, every bit of what you thought. That's, that's what he was. Smart as all can be. Love Keekley, huh? Yeah, fucking hard. Dude. Love him, he dude. Me hard, dude. <laughs> God, dude. When you're, a, when you're a backer, dude, Keekley was like, he's, I, Keekley said, I, I like, you wanted to be called a poor man's Luke Keekley. No, and that's the deal. Like, and, and, he was a blue collar dude. Just worked, worked, worked. Always a practice. The problem is, like, if he if, if he could have stayed healthy, he could arguably be one of the all time, all time. Yeah, man. Is he not? Yeah, he might be. He might be. Yeah, I think he still is. It's kind of like I the Patrick don't... Willis thing. Patrick yeah, I don't went know out from after nine years. Right? Yeah. You got to say 10, 12 years from a longevity standpoint. Patrick Willis, another one. Yeah, just, he was he because I mean, he only played nine and just studs. Bounce. Yeah, just studs. That's crazy. I know you got to get out of here, but um, Hall of Fame. Yeah, man. If it happens, it'll be one of the greatest treasures. Like I'm, I'm hoping it's it's a it's an odd process, right? Um, and you know, you kind of you know being a first ballot finalist with Peyton and them. Yeah, it was it, an incredible class. Like crap, that might be one of the, the greatest classes ever, right? So I don't get it on that class. I'm thinking, well, I'm a shoe in for the next class, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't get it on that I'm one. I'm, I'm kind of like I, I had no expectations first year. And then I'm kind of like sad faced for a few days. Uh, but I, I try I generally try to keep things in perspective, right? Yeah. Because I'm getting rejudged on things I already did. There's literally zero I can control do. one thing now. And if it's and if it's a popularity contest, then you know it is what it is. I'm not going into the pageant. I mean, you're pretty fucking popular. Yeah, you know, buddy, like, the, the, the know, popularity's there. Yeah, yeah. you're you're OG JJ Watt. Well, hopefully, you know, I was batting balls down way before that cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He had the mullet, he had the yeah. celebration. So, um, yeah, that little jackass. Like, you, you, you were on hand, jackass. Bro. That had to be one of your greatest accomplishments. Dude, that was great. Those dudes are tough. And they became friends. That, that's, that's a quality bunch of guys. Like, honestly, like, Knoxville and those guys were freaking phenomenal. Talk about not, you know, judging a, picture, a book by its cover. Yeah. Great dudes. So, yeah, I mean, the Hall of Fame to me, though, it's, it's this is why I tell people, it'll be one of the greatest honors bestowed upon me, right? 
but it's not going to change my life, you know, to have a gold jacket versus not a gold jacket. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the pomp, the circumstance will be phenomenal. It'll be great to represent the NFL. You know, my body will work and be a part of that fraternity. It'll be insane, but it's not going to make my wife love me anymore or less. My kids aren't going to love me anymore or less. And at the end of the day, I'm still going to be, you know, help mucking stalls if my dad is. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm still picking up dog crap. The law's got to get mowed. Um, so I try to keep it in, in a circum, like in perspective of that. I have no control over it. So do I want it to happen? Absolutely. Mm. When it happens, will I be elated if it happens? Absolutely. If for some reason it never does, I'm not going to look at it as a failure. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard to think that it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's, I think it's just a matter of time for you. And the perspective you have is incredible. To be able to know those things, your life's not going to love you more, your kids are going to love you more. But that is when you play football. That's what we all cooler. dream about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll make you cooler yeah. for sure. It'll oh, make you I get that gold jacket. After this podcast, I might need it, right? There's, there's yeah. going to be some people not thinking The Mormons cool are definitely oh, coming bro, after you. You're about to fucking elevate, brother. This yeah. is going to help. I really, I think you do a phenomenal job if you started a podcast, especially things you love, horses, all that stuff. I think you would do an incredible job. Oh, dude, that takes time and effort. Then I couldn't be on, you know, you know, I couldn't just be the, the guest saying dumb crap, you know? Fair. Then, yeah. Maybe we just, maybe we all do a show one day. Listen, I'm, I'm, we'll always, I'm always open for ideas. Like I said, I said, he lives eight minutes away. I mean, I'm just saying, AJ Hawk, love AJ. Does AJ's he, great. You want to do that? I'm just saying, I mean, I think I could be the AJ Hawk of... You watch enough ball? I can. Would you? Sure. What do you need from me? Or is it more like a macrodosing style show where we just talk like the first hour... Yeah, you guys. Hey, listen, I'm we open to all possibilities. About, I, I think kidding. the more this man's on the podcast, the better for us. I'm open to all, right. all possibilities. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. he's throwing out numbers like $100 million. <laughs> that McAfee, he'd be, he be cleaning them up, he's dude. just throwing out numbers like that? No, I said McAfee. He was, what, <laughs> McAfee was on when we first <laughs> walked on the bus. I do say crazy numbers to Will. <laughs> I'm like, bro, in three years, we're going to be here. I was like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, you know what I mean? Can I dream get, big, kid. Can I get, dream fucking big. Can I get, can I get is just a slice of that? You know, uh, yeah. You know, I got, you know, between curling. I mean, I could, I could make tough dude. Curling in itself, that's a... Dog, yeah. You How much longer is that? Bad? I know you got to go. I, this is the last question. Uh, I got this is the rollback roll roll question. Rollback question right here. I got Olympic. I have. I have this Olympic cycle to make to make good on the bet. And you oh. think you got a chance? Yes. I. I. Well, I'm all in. I am paying our my teammates to live here in Nashville and curl full time. Um, curly doesn't doesn't bring in the greatest amount of sponsors. So I actually had some some buddies that were going to help sponsor. They've just never paid their check. So if they're out there listening, dude. Write the check, bro. Um, also, Boston's always willing to sponsor an Olympic team. That's what I'm, I'm in. Like, come on, we can make it. Yeah, make we're not going to pay you nothing, but it will get. We'll buy the pennies. We could. Yeah. You never know. Perfect, dude. We could. Bags. Yeah. Bags. Dude, if you got, if, if Barstool needs content, like you know what I mean, just throw. <laughs> Buddy, we would. The next Olympics. Just telling you. Do you really think you can beat? Rowback question. Do you really think you can do Matt we gotta, Hamilton? If you're going to do rowback yes. question, you got to read the rowback thing. Do that. Can you pull that up, Jack? Pull the rowback question up real quick. Hey, you're going to see how good I am. I'm a pretty good reader. <laughs> I have to read in my daughter's he class tomorrow. He just goes, robot question. I have to read in my daughter's class tomorrow. Come on. Come and on, he's got to go. Question. This is the last question. Of the day. Okay, last question. The robot question. Use code BOYS on robot.com for 20% off your first purchase. That's R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Code BOYS. They work with the best college athletes from Will Anderson to the boy Michael Mayer to B. John Robinson. They also just drop new performance joggers. Trust us, you're going to want these. So use the code BOYS for 20% off. Everything was going so well to that last you line. Were I was it. crushing it, dude. You Literally, I'm actually it. really proud of that. This is the robot question Do you think you can truly beat the legend, Matt Hamilton, into getting 100%. into the Olympics? Explain yourself. 100%. Well, first of all, I think I have ultimate faith in myself. Um, sound like Liver King when he said that. And I think, I don't know who that is, but hey, if he sounded like that, it's probably a cool dude. <laughs> um, that, yeah, and I just think in a matter of time, like we're we're all in. I mean, we curl every single day. All but we have nothing to do. My team is what we do. We curl. I mean, I got other things with the kids, but every morning we're at the, we're at the, we're, at the, we're at T line right here in Nashville, just throwing you like stones. that lean that bend that stones. Yeah, do you do that or do you swisher? Swisher, uh, well, everybody sweeps, everybody throws. So I play second. So I actually play Hamilton's position. And I'll be playing him this weekend. No, where? In Minnesota. In Minnesota. Yeah, he's in, our, he's in, the, in, the, in the opposing pool. If he's, well, I don't know if he's going to be there. Um, he's kind of no, a star. Schuster's going to be there. So he, Matt Hamilton rotates with uh, Colin Hoffman every once in a while. But uh, 
But we're going to find out. I might, have you played against them yet? Yeah, my very first curling match was against uh, Schuster and Hamilton, right? Ever. My very first one. I played the gold medalist. That's how ridiculous curling is that a schlub like me came off the street, paid my entry fee of $400, and they're like, go curl against the gold medalist. How'd you do? Oh, we lost misery, misery but uh, miserably. But me and Matt had a bet, side bet. So in curling, if you're losing bad enough, you just give up, right? Right. And my coach at the time, who was filling in for our other teammates, was mad that he wanted us to give up. He threw, I actually played really well. He threw a piss poor shot. We gave up like five points, like the third end when it was close. Games on, but I had like a six point cushion with uh, the bus is falling apart up here. Uh, it's cool. That's how we roll, keep brother. It authentic, so bro. We, that's all right. And, what a dangle. Um, but so, yeah, me and Ham's curl had a freaking, uh, had a side bet. He gave me like X amount of points and we already knew we were going to play through. So I lost. I had to give him a jersey. He's a Packer fan. He wanted a Carolina jersey, so I sent him a uh, Minnesota jersey. And uh, yeah, that's my guy. I like, I like, we, we like to talk trash to each other. But uh, yeah, if I didn't think I could beat him, then, you know, got to beat him at some point. Otherwise, I'm going to welch on my bet. Yeah. I love that. When do we find out about that? Uh, I'll let you know with the bet. Yeah. Olympic trials in about three years. Love how you looked at your watch that wasn't there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, about about three, three years. years too. We got three years. Busting with the boys. I'm man. betting on. I'm betting on you, Jared Allen, brother. I'm betting on you. I love I'm you right now. I love I Matt will Hamilton. Bear no expense to make it happen. Oh, really? I will. You'll yeah. get on PEDs. No, gosh, I get tested. I can't you cheat. You literally just said you do cheat. whatever it takes. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not a cheater. Yeah, just on PEDs, you. you're a cheater. Got to keep okay, you. Well, in I don't know how PEDs is going to help me in curling, anyways. You never know. Blood doping, I guess. Why not? Hey, you blood doped to blood dope. Yeah. Well, we appreciate uh, having you on, man. It's, no, been, it's pleasure, been incredible. And that's 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 the goal. Yeah. Dude, this is the best. This is I, I, I love Jared this Allen, podcast. Jared Allen on Bustin' with the Boys. Subscribe, rate five stars. Please buy our merch. It's incredible. <laughs>